Hey, Mills, you're on the air. Howard. Hey, bro. Hey, man, dude, you need to apologize to Richard Christie, man. All you guys need to apologize. Why? Richard is the god of the drum. Oh, we were busting chops. I'm not. Why would I apologize? I didn't insult him. Yeah. No, no, you you did not give him a quarter of the credit you need to give him. This man, this man, when when you hear him on his record, he does it doesn't even sound real. When you watch him play, it doesn't even look real, man. Yeah, but why would I apologize? I didn't, I didn't insult. I don't even know him as a drummer. I know him as a guy who works for me. Well, okay, yeah, but still, you you need to give him credit at least. You need. Right. You need to, you right, need to see you. this guy bust out on the drums, man. Listen, that, that, that listen to some of his Fred, older records when he was playing with Van Death. That song the Fred was playing. Was, that song Fred was playing as we went into the. Uh, that that was pretty good drum. Yeah, but, uh, that that wasn't nothing compared to what this man can do. This this man is unreal. You, that's it yeah. right there. That's the dad. That's pretty good. Yeah, that that's all right, dude. He's, that's all right. It's good. It, no, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Don't get me wrong. But this man is just unreal. Totally unreal. Do you think that's good, Fred? I think he's an excellent drummer. I, you know, even though Thanks, he was, Fred. even though he was dropping sticks and the drum was falling over you, so you could just, <laughs> you could tell by his hand position that he was a guy that knew his way around. Well, he's got I a mean, little bit of a gut now, Rich. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, hard I'm, to get past that. Yeah. <laughs> there are people called ghost musicians. That might not have been Richard Christie on the album. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Sal, with a lot of venom. Sal with a zinger. When Millie Vanilli was asked to sing live, what happened? <laughs> when up. Richard Christie was asked to play drums live, <clears throat> what happened? He All dropped right. the sticks. He, it was horrible. Well, when, when I go on tour with the Losers, you'll play drums. You'll yeah, prove I'll prove you're myself. Good. And I don't expect an apology either. I, I wasn't offended at all. I, I did suck yesterday. You Is this did. you too? Uh-huh. This is King Howard. A lot of nonsense to me. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of mayhem. Yeah, maybe it's just that the music is bad. I don't yeah. know. You want to know something? <laughs> When you get out of that business, it's depressing. <laughs> it's tough. It is. It sounds like the last thing a 12-year-old kid hears before he's killed. <laughs> Walk into the woods with me. I want to play you some music. Come here. Yeah. I think the Trinco Mafia listens to this. Yeah, before they wipe out Columbine. Meanwhile, as good a drummer as this dude is, he's got a hard drive filled with porn, yep. and he's pleasured himself five times a night. <laughs> There's no God. He I has got, Saturday night dates with himself. I got cut from the lacrosse team. Wow. <laughs> no, hey, I Jane, yeah. you're on the air. Hello? Hi, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Hey, now. I'm calling from Zero Cues. Ah, uh, Syracuse. When uh, when you just went to break, um, the general manager, 95X, they have a tape thing, and they played it again, saying how unfortunate it is <gasps> that you're leaving the ra radio and asking your fans to pay hundreds of dollars for equipment. And well, uh, how much does this listen. home? How much does home radios cost? Co hundreds of dollars? No kidding. It, what was he talking about? Yeah, your radio doesn't come to you free. Yeah, I, boy, oh boy, they're really on a vindictive slide over and there. And they're playing that in the body of the as show. As soon as you cut the break, they played it again. Yeah, I don't know that I'm really into them playing negative announcements about me during my show. And, and no what kidding. they're doing Isn't is that against the contract. Well, also they're forcing me to respond uh, about satellite and my move to satellite. Because, quite frankly, I'm not asking anybody to pay for anything. This is a campaign now. Satellite well, radio. Uh, now, now, now I'm forced to respond. And, and here we go. And, so uh, good. so and at the so, end, they said thank you to our listeners for 27 years and thank you to our sponsors. Well, uh, the sponsors have got to be pissed, too. How about thank you to Howard Stern for giving you an audience, dude? Absolutely. Yeah, it's well, you know, and by the way, as far as me, um, the implied reference there is that I'm making you pay for something. Uh, they're making you buy radios. They're making you pay for a show that they're editing the hell out of. Uh, what, what I mean, uh, the, the the sponsors are paying for the show, and you have to sit through the commercials. Well, it's been bad enough because so the you, so why don't they offer the here. show? Why don't they offer the show for free since they don't want to uh, see anybody pay for anything? 
the rival radio station here is K-Rock. They bleep K-Rock every time somebody says it there. All right, that I understand. And then, and now they bleep the word satellite. The show is just cut to pieces. Well, I don't even mind them bleeping the word satellite if that's what they want to do. But you got to, here's my point of view, and now I'm forced to say it again. Number one, I'm going to satellite. The reason our show now has record high ratings, we've always had high ratings. We've been number one in Syracuse for 12 years. But the reason we have record high ratings throughout the country is this is one of the biggest news stories around. My defection from terrestrial radio to satellite radio. People are tuning in to hear about it. People are tuning in, quite frankly, to see if I'm still here. Right. There's a tremendous debate in the industry whether or not I should still be on this radio station. Well, we love you, Howard. Thank you. So it's an interesting story. It's something I'm doing when I leave. By the way, all of 95X's and all of Citadel's sponsors all ask our audience to pay money for their products. Uh, asking people to pay money for radios or anything else is what the industry is based on. But it's wrong if you do it. Yeah, oh, it's always wrong if I they ask for something. They can ask for money. The sponsors can ask for money. I have prided myself on an entire career of not asking people to pay for bumper stickers, coffee mugs, uh, frivolous crap, any of this stuff. But I've been... they have to buy a radio. Yeah, yeah. If they're going to get you. Yeah, and yeah, it's a pay service, and it's not just for me. It's a tremendous, now I'm forced to defend it. I think it's a tremendous service. Anybody who has it knows what I'm talking about. It's great. It is great. And, and the fact of the matter is, if you're going to sit and put me down for honoring my contract and then leaving in a year to go to a whole different universe and to start something brand new, a new enterprise, why do I have to be bashed over the friggin' head on my own radio station? Well, I've had, uh, I make signs for a living, and I have had a F to FCC bumper sticker on the back of my car for the last six months. I, I I agree totally with what you're doing and where you're going, and I can't wait. Yeah, and by the way, running those spots again doesn't hurt me. It hurts my audience. It, hurts, it hurts our them. It, it hurts, hurts the, yeah. And by the way, it's just a, it, that's a commercial for me. Absolutely, they are helping you and hurting themselves. It's getting to be goddamn ridiculous. Right. Thank you. Bye. I love and by you, the way, I am going to for, since they're punishing me by not letting you hear the show after 10 a.m. All of those markets, I'm setting up trucks. I can't wait. Can I get one? There's going to be big trucks with loudspeakers so you can hear the show, and then we're going to airlift tapes of my show that for after 10 a.m. so you can we're going to drop them so that you can get the tapes. I haven't heard the news all week. It's been killing me. Yeah, well, you're they're punishing me. Terrible. I hate it. Thank you. Bye. Finally. Hey, he's leaving anyhow, so why be nice? The four Citadel radio stations, which air, air Howard Stern's morning show, have been cutting him off at 10 a.m. whether he's done or not. Now, as fans know, Stern often runs past the end of his show. Radio and Records reporting that the Citadel stations in Syracuse, Harrisburg, Grand Rapids, and Providence are tired of Stern talking so much about his impending departure from broadcast to satellite radio. So I guess they're shutting him up. Stern responding that Citadel can do what it wants. But it's only hurting listeners. It is. I, I want someone from Citadel to explain to me why cutting my show off hurts me. I don't get it. I'm sorry. And it's real funny, too, because uh, my agent had a, a conversation with Fareed the other day, and Fareed said he's going to stop all the bashing. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, I was really kind of shocked. But uh, I guess they're running hog wild up there. They've How's got, this stopping? I don't know what I did to them, except deliver a big audience to them. And, and anyone who wants to come over and join me on satellite will pay. And those who don't, don't. Why, why, why the put down? Why the pimp? Why the put down? Why, if they don't want you to talk about it, why are they reminding people? I don't know. It's Makes weird. No sense. In a way, it's sort of bringing more attention to it. You know, everyone's talking about it, but I shouldn't. Listen to the Today Show. This is from the Today Show yesterday. Okay. Satellite radio. Very hot right now because of uh, Howard Stern, That's Sirius right. Radios. Everybody's freaking out about it. Uh, $99 for this unit, $99 for this unit. This is a Sportster version, so you can get your favorite sports team on there. It'll alert you when they're playing and such. Mm -hmm. Uh, twelve ninety nine a month for the service and commercial for it. Howard Stern is hot with the ladies. Yes, he is. <laughs> wow. Yeah, was, uh, Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, they're, they're talking, everyone's talking about it. But how does that threaten regular radio? I don't even understand it. 
regular radio is always going to be free and it's always going to have that advantage. Yeah, first of all, they already, people already have those sets in their homes. Right. And they had to pay for them. But, you, you know, here I'm doing my show, I'm minding my own business, and then I got four of my own stations bad-mouthing me during my commercial breaks, saying that I'm ripping people off, asking them for money for radios, as if these radios you're listening to are free. Wow, what an argument. But I'm not going to sit here and not respond to it. I'm not going to be accused of being a rip-off artist. Not if they take the, the fight onto the airway. Yeah, I mean, come on. I'm going to defend myself. And don't forget you guys charge for radios, too. What do you, what do you, what, when's the last time you got a free radio? Insane. What kind of, what kind of nonsense is this? But I love it. Let's keep, let, you want to keep having a dialogue about it? Fine, let's do it. Tom, you're on the air. Howard. Yep. Hey, buddy, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I subscribe to, uh, going to be your competition for satellite. And uh, I tell you, once you listen to that, you'll never go back. Well, there you go. Radio. Well, there you go. Some people will agree with that. Some wouldn't. But uh, I don't know why they're attacking me over it. Because well, I, well, you know, when I made my movie, it didn't. Howard's making a movie. What a scumbag! He's charging people for a movie. Oh come on! Nine to nine to twelve bucks a month is nothing. No, thank I you. Tell you it, it's, uh, it's outrageous. Thank you. You cannot. You cannot describe. Yeah, I, I don't know. Again. I don't know why they're attacking me, and it's leading to this kind of conversation. I Luckily, got I don't live in a market where uh, you sleep 24, you know, yeah. every second. But uh, so I don't have to worry about that that much. But yeah, so. you only live in a market where you get where we get bleeped 27 times per show. <laughs> right, exactly. No, I get it. Thank you. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Love you. Hey, Bill, you're on. Excuse me, uh, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Hey. What's up? Oh, I'm sorry. I just jumped in my car. Hey, uh, please do not ever play that Nicole Bass tape again. My stuff went inside me like a turtle. Man. It's yeah, that's pretty wild, yeah, huh? It, that tape is like the ring. We're all going to die or go gay, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone who's heard that is going to go die or get gay. That's good. I like that. Oh, I'm in gay. charge. Coach, are, are your feet big? My feet? Are, you can't tell through my size. Twelve and a half shoes. If my feet are big or not, what are you blind and stupid at the same time? Oh, coach. Of course I have big feet. Oh, buddy. Oh, oh give me more. Love it. Give me you more, man. Cheating. Tell me I'm your bitch. Oh, you are my bitch. You do exactly. You're my towel boy. Take your out, sir. Yeah, Take it out. You want it out? No, I want it out. You sir. want it out? You I want, want to it on my. Oh, God, your, your yeah. is purple, sir. Yeah, you like the size of my don't you? Smack my face with your tea bags. Oh, I would take my tea bags and just smack them across your face. Coach, were you born with that huge Oh, you wish I was. Let what a weird world, huh? Oh, wow. What did I tell you that, Gray? <laughs> See how big it is? By the way, I'm a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> It's just unbelievable. He switches to being a guy. Okay. Right. Nicole switches to being a guy, and it's no big deal. I, I didn't know she would do that. Yeah, oh, she'll do anything for that 30 bucks. <laughs> you're my pal boy. Let's sword fight, sir. No, Let's you're sword 10 fight. minutes is up. Oh. No sword fighting. Oh, you. sir. You're 10 minutes. Time up already? Yeah, your time is up. No, already. no, no. I called before. I paid my money. Yeah, you paid your money? No, listen, I haven't, I haven't yet. Coach, well, coach, you got to put me back in. Back to me when you pay me more. No, this is unfair. Coach. Oh, mm. oh that bitch. Ah, oh, she just hangs up. Yeah. <laughs> that manly bitch. Ah, oh, that's Business funny. is business. <laughs> Later on, I'll play a phony phone call. Um, we had our David Lee Roth impersonator call, uh, you know, you know, Billy Mirror. Yeah. We had him call up his David Lee Roth. He called up a she-male sex phone line. Oh, really? That's yeah, pretty funny. All right. <laughs> There's all kinds of phone lines out there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're all good. They're all good for phony phone calls. Oh, man. Hey, Beetle's stopping by. Beetlejuice. And then we're going to do the porn star evaluation. Hey. So much going on. Me? 
Yeah, this is Alice God. And when it comes to getting those retarded freaks to call in, call people niggers. That snagger too, retarded Gary. He wish he was had pretty good looking as a, a, a nigger broad since you were using the word nigger. And when it comes to how he looks like a big faggot nigger with straight, nappy, wavy hair. And, and when it comes to uh, Robin, she, she's, she's a self hated person just like me and Hitler. She just put up, she put up with that. But that's her problem, so take care of yourself. And I'll read with that, she. Hey, fat Adi, we got something in common. We both Indian and, and mixed with Italian. Capiche? Don't be such a fugazi. You know what that is, Adi. We speak the, uh, Italian sometimes. Arrivederci. This is Alice Rose Gotti speaking. Bye-bye. What is wow. she carrying on about? Man. I you, don't know. You can't beat her. She's the best. I never know what she's angry about, though. Hey, Jay, you're on the air. Howard. Hey, 94, no. 94.1 in Rochester, one of your new stations you went back on, is also cutting you out 10, 15 minutes early. Really? Wonder yep. what that, yeah, are they a Citadel station? Uh, no, but you got knocked off of, uh, I think it was 95.1 out there. Yeah, Clear uh, Channel threw us off the air. Right. And now you're on 94.1 out there, the right. zone, and they started doing the same thing Syracuse is doing. Well, that would be an infinity station. I believe so. Yep. It started happening two or three weeks ago. Hmm. Two or three weeks ago? Well, I guess this is some new move afoot to punish us. Move on the field. Well, it must be, but it stinks. But, yeah, I don't know how it punishes us. Well, I got to go. I just want to let you know. All right, later. Thanks. Mm. Well, how does that bother me? Bothers I don't know what they're trying to do. Bothers the fan, the one who enjoys the show. Hey, you know what's getting a lot of news, too? We had on the um, pitcher's wife the other day. Anna Benson. Benson. Oh, yeah, Chris that's Benson's been the, wife. That and Giambi's uh, steroid problems is the talk of sports. I can't believe everyone's so outraged that Giambi's using steroids. They put him on the front page of the Post like he was a criminal. They're giving him a, they're giving him a rough, rough time. I Boot mean, the bum. Why the Yankees must fire ugly drug cheat Jason Giambi today. The big editorials. You, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I brought this up yesterday, and I knew it was going to be a big thing with Yankee fans, and there it is. They want him off the team now. People are calling for his head, though. I mean, it's really They want to take away his money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the players' union because, in baseball. Because, I mean, there's tons of guys doing oh, drugs. Come on, everybody! It's so, it's been so people are such hypocrites. But well, today the news was that Barry Bonds, in his testimony, also said that he was uh, rubbed with some of these same creams, but he didn't know they were steroids. Oh, come on! That, <laughs> that that's that's ridiculous. But the players' union in baseball will get Giambi paid. That's the strongest union in the country. Yeah. Well, anyway, everyone's discussing this uh, Anna Benson who came on our show who said that if her husband ever cheats on her, she's going to do every dude on the Mets. <laughs> right, we end with a very interesting discussion. This is cold pizza. Okay. The Howard Stern Show Tuesday, the wife of New York Mets pitcher Chris Benson is Anna Benson. She's in the December edition of FHM Magazine. She was named baseball's hottest wife. She was asked by Stern what would happen if Benson ever cheated on her. And here's what she said, quote, I told him, cheat on me all you want. If you get caught, I'm going to sleep with every one of your teammates, every one of your coaches, your trainers, players. There was more that she said, but we're a family show, and honestly, we can't get into that here. Uh, What's that big sound effect? Yeah, I was going to ask you, is that a regular part of that show? It might be. That's annoying. Maybe we need that. <laughs> and now, here's the news. Boom! <laughs> and even in the middle of your talking, boom! There's a sex phone call I want to play for you. Boom! <laughs> I'm skipping, Woody. I don't know that there's a uh, question here. I just would like to see you discuss this. I, I, I want to take this first. <laughs> <laughs> the action I've taken this morning. I've called the Mets. I called my sources at the you Mets. I'm not. going to be a I bad boy. Sources. I'm going to be a bat boy for the Mets. <laughs> and I'm changing my name to Age, A-I-G-E, because I want her to start in alphabetical order. So <laughs> I'm going to be with the Mets. I'm going to be first on the list. That's 
all I have to say. So you're going to be Woody A. I'm hoping he cheats. <laughs> Can we just have one voice of reason here? Yeah, go She's ahead. just pulling up Pam Anderson. She goes on Howard Stern. She says something completely outrageous, and her website today gets more hits than Pete Rose ever dreamed of getting. And you were first. Mm. Yeah, I'm on <laughs> Mr. Well, Multitasker. <laughs> <laughs> actually, when I walked by Woody's computer upstairs, I did happen to see Anna Benson's picture on there. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So, I doing mean, research. <laughs> I'll Cats have music going no, behind them and everything. Singer, she, creates, music. she creates a little... Some show. That's like waking up hungover down the shore and there's five annoying people in the kitchen having a conversation. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, could you idiots stop discussing the Anna Benson appearance and yeah, let on, me sleep? That's on in the morning. What do they do? The yelling? The <laughs> sound effects? Guess who's here? Beetlejuice. No, you can't stop talking. That was playing while he was talking. They don't even care. Just like that. And then you come back. It's like you have five guys still coked up from the night before in the kitchen. I've been calling for Beetlejuice for like the last 15 minutes. What's wrong? Uh, my staff. Susan, you're on the air. Howard, I just want to tell you, you're a phenomena. And when you're a phenomena, people are going to be jealous of you. And this thing with the freedom of speech is, is so important to people, they just don't realize it. <laughs> right, thank you. I call it the religious right-wing green-eyed monster syndrome. Yeah, I know. It's sad. It is sad. It is sad. It's it. really ugly and sad. What? It's ugly and sad. It's like a yeah, bitter a lot divorce. Of people are insanely jealous of you. Yeah. Oh, don't yeah, I know. Right. Don't I know? Hey, Kyle, you're on the air. Hey, Beat. What's up? What's up, Kyle? Morning, Howard. This is uh, your son from Cleveland. Yes. Yeah, yesterday you were talking about divorce and everything. Hello? Yeah, it's just hard to understand you. Your phone connection sucks. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're talking about all the person and everything. No, I, I, yeah, it's, I, it's too work. bad. <laughs> Who the hell knows what the hell he's saying? Hey, hey Beetle, what are you doing, brother? How are you? No, good. Yeah, anybody hear uh, the new Beetlejuice song? No, I haven't. He's working on some music. He's got some tracks going. I like it. This is Beetle. Is as bad as can. He knows he's the best. This is Beetle. Is as bad as can. He knows he's the best. He's big and he's strong. When did you write this? Oh, oh, two years ago. It was terrific. terrific. Just decided to record it? Yeah. Wow. Good for you. Bad as kid. He knows he's the best. <laughs> Is as bad as Is that you two playing behind you? It sounds like them. Yeah. It is? Yeah. That's what I thought. Wow. <laughs> this is Beetle. Is as bad as Ken. What do you call that? Uh, something different. Yeah. Nice job. I didn't even know you were in the music business. <laughs> and good for you. Thank you. Yeah. Song's already number one, someone told I was going to say, is it a hit? Are you with a record company or are you just working? Yeah, no, nah, I'm with the record company. What yeah. company are you with? You... Uh, a couple of them. Are you allowed to say which one? Uh, I don't know yet. All right. But okay. it you... probably happened. Can you get this in the stores? <laughs> probably. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be the biggest thing out there. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, it will. You going to go on tour? Probably. <laughs> I heard you made $2 million on that already. Yeah, I is that Is that true? Probably. Yeah. Well, do you have dance step to go with this? Is this a video? You're going to do a video? Probably, like, another two years. Another two years for the video. All right. Yeah. Oh, this guy's a perfectionist. Wow. That's some marketing plan. Hey, someone told me you and uh, Jeff the Drunk were smoking weed out in front of the station before. Is that true? Uh, probably him, but I don't, I don't do it that much. You don't? You didn't nah. smoke any weed with him? Nah. Because I know when you smoke weed, you become sort of like a different person. Right. You know what I mean? You withdraw a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Is that true? I didn't know that. Yeah, I was going to yell at Jeff for giving him weed. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want you smoking weed. <laughs> he seems okay. He's all right. He's he all right. don't even bother me. No? Nah. Well, Beat, it's great seeing you. I understand uh, you're here because um, they made a head cast of your head. Right. Which we use here on the show, as a matter of fact. Right. And now you're selling them. Right. Along with your 2005 calendar. Right. At jollydwarf.com. Right. Right. Now, this Beetlejuice head, was it scary making it? Because they have to put your whole head in like a, almost like a cement, right? Yeah. And were you afraid when you did it? Me? Nah. No. But it's a lot to do. Well, it takes, it takes like about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And did they have to put straws in your nose so that you could breathe while they did that? Oh, I could breathe without it. Really? You really? could breathe with cement on your face yeah. and no straws. Huh. No straws. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Now, how much is it going to cost for a Beetlejuice head, an exact replica of your head? Well, at least whatever you want to do. Oh, well, really? It's up to the customer? Yeah, it's up to the customer. So uh -huh. if I want to pay a dollar for it, I can get one. Right. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that's the most. It's a genius. <laughs> it really is. I, I have a feeling there might be a price on jollydwarf.com, right? Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. How's everything else going? Getting laid? Uh, everything is going. Yeah. Everything going, yeah. Getting laid? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, nice. Do you have a girlfriend now, or are you just hanging out? Oh, I got a couple more to say. Yeah? Hey, Pete, there's a guy who claims on the phone that says you're not Beetlejuice, that he's Beetlejuice. You want to talk to him? Who's Beetle? My name is Beetle. I don't know. This guy says he's Beetlejuice. Nah. Let's I talk to him. So. Hi, Beetlejuice. You're on the air. Hello? Yes. I'm, I'm Beetlejuice. Oh, you're the real Beetlejuice. I'm Beetlejuice. Well, who's... You're the real Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, who, here in the studio, who are you then? I'm the real Beetle. I don't care what your name is. My I'm name is Real Beetle. Beetle. This guy does sound like the real Beetlejuice, does, though. Yeah. Oh, he's faking it. I don't care if my name is Beetlejuice. I want you to say your name, too. <laughs> yeah, that's the fake name, yeah. yeah. Be careful, Beetlejuice. Man. Who is this guy? He's faking it. Doesn't he sound like Beetlejuice, though? Nah. No? Is there any change? Are, are, are you faking it? Me? Someone's, somebody's lying. Somebody's lying here. Say it like a man. Ooh. That sounds like Beetlejuice to me. Nah, he's, nah he's, I'm the real man. You know that. Well, if you're going to say my name, I say my name. Uh -huh. Yeah, whatever. Can huh? you can you prove your Beetlejuice? I'm, yeah, I can prove my name is real Beetle. How? Beetlejuice. My name is real Beetle. I'm, I'm Beetlejuice. Yeah, right. You think that I'm a goddamn joke? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sorry, you've been like, yeah, now, they're called, all fake. This guy's calling you a joke. Joke? Yeah. Who's you? You ain't no joke, man. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. Oh, Hell yeah. not a pussy, not a faggot. I'm telling you like a man, straight up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nobody sound like a little chump. Right. This is big as yours. You're going to let this guy get away with this kind of stuff? He's so stupid. He doesn't know what he's talking about. What did you do that say to me? Oh, man. He's calling you out, Beetle. Yeah. You're calling me out. Yeah. I hit you in the back of the head, man. You want to talk to me? You talk to me serious. Oh, wow. You sound like a little girl. Right. <laughs> Nobody don't go cross me. You sound like a little girl. He does you think that I'm a goddamn joke? <laughs> Everybody can laugh at that. <laughs> what a joke. Wow. I wrecked the f up. Oh, what a joke. He really, he, this guy on the phone is brutal to you. <laughs> yeah. Brutal to him, to himself. Right. I was about one of the days I hit you. <laughs> hit yourself. Right. Boy, Beetle. Oh, yeah, nothing. Uh, Ooh. Clear the sandwich. He says you're not nothing. Nothing? Yeah. Hey, I made more what you made, buddy. We want to tell you something in front of your friends. Uh, <laughs> what are you going to say? You going to talk to yourself? I don't care what your name is. Well, listen, so this, is, so this like is getting ugly. Bit. This is getting ugly. I'm not, I'm not a punk, not a pussy. <laughs> oh, you sound like a little hey, child. Like, go on and go to bed. All right, Beetle, you told him off. Good for you. So I guess you're the real Beetle. You yeah. are. I'm the real Beetle. You are the real Beetle. You look good. I look good. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do for Christmas? I don't know yet. You going down to you going down to the islands? Oh, uh, we might. Yeah. All he wants for Christmas is his two front teeth. <laughs> what are you talking about? I already lost my front tooth, buddy. It's still good though. What happened to your front tooth? It's gone. Huh? Yeah. Been gone. Oh, yeah. Long time ago. Do you miss it? Huh? Do you miss it? Oh, uh, I still have it. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Huh? Where oh, is I got it? it in the little box. Oh. Oh, 
that's nice. Your fairy godmother didn't come to get it? No, <laughs> I saved it. I guess who's on the phone? Double A. Double A, you're on the air. Hey, how, how's it going? What's going on? Yeah. Beetlejuice. He loves, he loves it. always hear you in the studio, but... Double A loves my I girlfriend. I hear that, brother. Bethel Double A is calling because you are so sweet. I have 300 pounds of gold on me. That was terrible singing. That's a terrible. Hey, he's so terrible. Yes, double A. What's up? Not now. I was glad to hear Beetlejuice back in the studio after the last night's E show. I got a little worried, you know. Yes. Oof. Yeah, I remember you were upset at one point, but now you're fine, right, Beat? I'm fine. Yeah. We cleared everything up. Well, he's clear. Sort of we did. What's the matter? Is it okay if uh, Sean comes in for a second? What's the problem now? He just, you know, he said he wanted to help Beetle promote. I said, you know, usually we like to have Beetle alone. He's like, well, you know, you let everyone else come in with the clients. And, oh, uh, what, what, is talk, what is he talking what, it's about? All good, it's all good. It's all good. Sean's getting nuts out there. I know, I know. Beetle, I love having you here. Do you need Sean in here? If he wants to come in, he comes in. But you don't need him. No, if he wants to come in, I'll let him. All right, let Sean promote for a second. Uh, if you want to purchase, i got to take a break anyway. To purchase a head cast of Beetlejuice or his 2005 calendar, go to jollydwarf.com. Beats Uncensored DVD is available in stores now. And you can uh, and you can get that, get all that stuff. Right, Beat? Sure, why not? Yeah, right. Good Beetlejuice, Christmas. you're the man. Everybody have a great weekend. All right, thank have you. Have a great day. But they would be good Christmas gifts, right, Beat? Oh, probably, yeah. 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 Well, where's Sean? <laughs> I got to take a break. Right, you're ready to go, and Sean should be here. <laughs> He's here. Sean is a Beatles manager. He's here. All right. What happened to Sean? <laughs> Sean? Sean don't want to come in no more. Oh, oh geez. Right. Sean, Sean, so Sean's insulted. He should have been in, in the first place. Oh. Ah, what is he? What, are you scared to come in there now? Yeah, I guess he's scared to go. Wow. B, tell him to come in. So, uh, Come now, on in, Sean. The last person left that he wasn't mad at here, which would be me, he's mad at. Oh, oh. dear. All right, hey, listen. I got to take a break. Beetle, I love having you in here. I saw the new Beetlejuice head. You look great. Thank you. It is an exact replica of Beetle's head. I love it. It's great. Everybody should have one. What do people do with this? Do they display it? What do they do? Yeah, they just put it on your... Just put it in your room. Like, look at it. Look at it. It's a great it's like, stocking. It's like a statue. Yeah. Why do people want to have your head as opposed to, let's say, Robin's head or Fred's head or my head? Why you? Why Beetlejuice? Because he's the best. He's the best. Uh, All right. He's you the heard best. The song. Yeah. It is great. I have one. In th I have it on my mantle. Yeah, you're the only one who's got one so far. Right, it's no. great. It's fabulous. We were actually using it as the FME. You I sure? wanted to find out how much it costs, but I can't. I, I would have Sean tell you if he'd come in. I'm actually thinking of buying about like 300 of these and sending them to people. Oh, my God. For Christmas. Sure you I'm not kidding. You want to. I'm making a major purchase. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All I right. hope they got the production up. <laughs> oh, I do it by myself. If oh, I really? Have to. Yeah. I, have to, I do it all the time. Don't you think people would love that? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm doing it. It's hysterical. I, I'm I love doing that it. Head. I'm going to buy 300 of them. Okay. Thank you. Make sure you get them out. All right, I will. Order early. Beetlejuice head. How much for your actual head, if I want to buy that? <laughs> oh, it's pretty much. Yeah? What would you charge for that if I just took the chop off your head and uh, take it with me? I don't know. You wouldn't do it. $200? $200. Chop my head off. Chop your head off, and I, <laughs> and I own your real head. I stuff you, and I put you around oh, my mouth. How do you stuff my head in there, Howard? All right, what do you, do you want? You, you want $1,000? That ain't right. No? <laughs> you can't even chuck Beetle into that. <laughs> Try to trick me, huh? How about a million dollars? I chop your head off. And then stick your... my head. I probably still need my head. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it. Yeah. If you want to know how much the beetle head is, go ahead. Go to jollydwarf.com. I'm going. That, let me say that again. Jollydwarf.com. How much for the real Beetlejuice head? That, that way, there's no figure on that. What you mean, no figure on that? <laughs> on your head. How do you know? You've been there? Yeah. How do you know? How much, Beetle? How much for your head? Uh, I don't know, but you want to know? Beetle, I want the real head. I want to, I want your head. My head? I got a big head. You got a beautiful head. I but do. how much? But I want to own it. <laughs> you want to own it? I want to chop your head off and own it. 
can't chop my head off. I need my head. No, you don't. Why? For what? What do you need your head for? What are you for? using it for? You ain't using it for anything. Oh, you use it for art. What else? No, I want to use it like I want you to live on my, my desk. Yeah, but it only doesn't use it. Your head. My head, yeah. Yeah, your but real head. But you don't want to chop my head. I want to use my head. <laughs> I'm not a con artist. I signed a new satellite deal. I can afford your head. Name your price. Oh, you can name the price. $200? Hey. All right. Done deal. It's a done deal, but it's a... Done deal. 200 Where's my wallet? When do you get it? Yeah. Got the Sean chopping his head off in the back. I need a new hat rack. Need no new hat rack here. <laughs> Gary, bring in my axe. I want to collect my head right now. You got Christian. it. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got You know, tree. I collect skulls. Yes. And I don't have any... I only have one human skull. It's a Chinese woman, actually. Uh, yeah. But I could imagine, seriously, after you die, which I hope it never happens in my lifetime. Well, but I wouldn't die there. After you die, I, I would want to. I would want to own his skull. <laughs> I How much would there. you pay for that? For his skull? Yeah. Ten grand. All right. I'm serious. Ten grand? Okay. I'll after give, you die. Give me ten grand, you then you. No, I'll give you ten grand once you're dead. <laughs> when I'm done, I ain't died yet. <laughs> All right. Well, well you just keep that in mind. You got something to look forward to. All right. Anyway, everyone, go to JollyDwarf.com for Beetlejuice's head. <laughs> That's right. If you want some Beetlejuice head, you got to go to JollyDwarf.com. All right. Thank you, Beetle. I'm honored by your presence. And we'll take a break. And when we come back, porn star evaluations with Judge Paul Fishbein. All right. And uh, porn stars Tegan and Sithiera. Sithiera. <laughs> it sounds like a disease. Sithiera. Yeah, I think I had that. Sithera. I got rid of it. All right, we'll be back oh, right after oh, these words. Will. Thank and you, Beat. A message from Kirk Douglas's speech coach. On behalf of Howard, many people are stopping in Russia, and all you do is do Cypress. Why we talk about people crash on the airplane, and all you think you can do is to drink and make men. men. I condemn you. How I condemn you. Good evening. This is our great. Okay, a couple of quick announcements here. If you want a chance to win $20,000, $20,000, and you can make yourself available four days, December 13th through the 16th, call us at 1-800-44-STERN, and I want to thank the WWE for giving us the 20 Gs. All right. To do what I think is going to be incredible radio coming up uh, very soon. The more details in the days to come. Has anybody called up and said they have that time? Yes. Oh, good. Don't miss the $1 million Tough Enough on WWE SmackDown every Thursday at 8 p.m. Get it on UPN. Yes, uh, Beth, you're on the air. Hi. What can uh, I do for you? Oh, um, I just, I live in Syracuse, and I just wanted to let you know. I don't know if you already know or not, but um, the day after Thanksgiving, that Friday, um, they never played the best of. Yes, I am now. I am now aware of everything that's going on in Syracuse, Providence, and all the Citadel stations. They're cutting the show off at ten o'clock, and they're and uh, last week during the Thanksgiving break, they didn't play best of. It's fine. Do whatever you want. Uh, I think it's wrong to do that to the listeners. I think it's wrong to play uh, a negative uh, editorial about me during my own show. I think it shows low class. I think it's also wrong and false statements are being made about me, but uh, I'm not there to defend myself. And then when I do defend myself, they edit me out. Well, so, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, if you're doing this to antagonize me uh, and make me uh, angry, uh, it's not working. What no, it is I'm, doing, what it is, not you, what oh, it is, okay. I'm talking to the owners of Citadel. What it is doing, though, is turning listeners off. They're saying, why is my radio station cutting off the show we like? Exactly. And that's exactly what's going on. With the, my coworkers, because as soon as you go off the air, we change the station. Now, it is a big tactical error to go up against me, especially someone who is loyal to your station. Exactly. I'm here. I'm working for you. It's a big tactical error. Ask Clear Channel. Clear Channel blew me off. Most of their stations, all of their stations, haven't recovered since they threw me off the air. Also, uh, I just got the ratings in Orlando. We moved our show to another station in Orlando, and guess who's number one in the morning? You. Me. Exactly. And that's the way it goes. Did you also know that Rhino signs off at the end of the day, Rhino out? All right, whatever. Listen, I don't know Rhino from a hole in the wall. I don't know anything that's going on other than the fact that the show's cut off and the only person it hurts is the listener. It well, doesn't we all hurt love me. you. I love you, too, and I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of controversy. 
There's a lot of there's articles written every day about this move I'm making a satellite. It's very controversial, evidently. I'm the most important person on the planet. Yep. Because that's what they're turning me into. Exactly. Thank you. Have a great day. Right. Sitting here on my couch, Robin, is a man who we've known for many years. His name is Paul Fishbein. He's got the greatest job in the world. <laughs> he watches porno movies. Then he writes a magazine reviewing the porno movies <gasps> and makes a... How much you make... Look at that. AVN Magazine. How much money are you making now a year? You're a millionaire, aren't you? I'm doing fine. Yeah, you ask me that question every year. Are you a millionaire? Of course. You are? Of course. Of course. Is it, he going to wind up like uh, Al... Um, Goldstein? Goldstein. Al's doing yes. better. <laughs> Al's doing better. Why is the porno industry not helping Al Goldstein? We are, we are helping him. You are him. helping him. He, he has a job and he has an apartment in oh, Staten he Island. He's oh, doing better. Oh, really? All right, yeah. there you go. Uh, now, you, you are sitting here with two beautiful women. These are porno stars. Yes, they're two, the two of the nominees. Cytheria. Two of the nominees for Best New Starlet. Cytheria, what are you uh, nominated for at the AVN Awards? Um, I'm nominated for numerous things that I can't think of right now, but Best New Starlet. Best um, New Starlet. Yes. Who, are you, who are you up against, the by the way? Female Performer of the Year. Um, and oh, you win. can't say oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How many people are you up I'm against? Sorry. That's okay. How many people are you up against? A lot. A lot. You're a very beautiful woman. Thank you. How old are you? I'm 23. 23. How many pornos have you done? Over 100. Is she like the hot new star? These are the two hottest new stars in the business. Cytheria and Tegan. Yes. Tegan, you look like Britney Spears, but you know that, right? <laughs> I hear that a lot. Yeah. How old are you? 19. 19. How many pornos have you done? Uh, I think 55. 55? 55. When did you start? Uh, I started in January. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 55 films already. Yes. Since January. Impressive. You know, uh, Cytheria, Julia Roberts never forgets what she's nominated for. No. And neither should you. Should always, I never, never. I'm you should so remember what, uh, what and, and, and you, Tegan, what are you nominated for? I'm nominated for Best New Starlet along with Cytheria, and I'm... Do you uh, hope you win, or do you hope Cytheria wins? Um, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. I'll be happy for her if she wins, because she's also nominated for Female Performer of the Year. Will you make a speech if you win? Um, not really a speech. I just think, like, my girlfriend and... You have a girlfriend? Go. Yes, I you, do. You lesbian? Um, I'm bi. But more into girls? Yeah. In your private life? Yes. No kidding. You live with a woman? Um, I lived with her for a while, and her boyfriend slept on the couch, and oh. I laid and slept in bed with her. Oh, you're super hot. <laughs> I can imagine that. Is she hot? Yeah, she's very hot. She a porno star? No, she works for, um, she's a PM for a director in the business. A production manager. Manager. Yes. And when, what age did you start having lesbo sex? Uh, 18. 18 years old. Oh, this is very new. Yes. Oh, you're, you're fresh as a daisy. <laughs> yes, I am. Was it hot the first time you were with a woman? Yes, it was very hot. She actually turned me on to girls. She was the first one. Really? Yes. How did it happen? You, you were a naive high school student at the time, <laughs> weren't you? No, I had just gotten out of high school. I had moved myself up to L.A. to do porn, so... You knew right away you wanted to be in porn. Yeah. Yeah. And you went to L.A., and there you are ready to do porn. And where do you meet this hot chick? She was an assistant for Vince Voyeur, and I shot for him, and she was like, hey, do you want to come spend the night at my house? And I was like, okay, and then I just never left. You didn't know you were attracted to her at the time. You thought we were just going to hang out with this chick. Yeah. You didn't even know she was into you. <clears throat> no. You, but you liked the way she looked. Yeah. And you went to her house, and how did the seduction begin? Um, it didn't start off right away. Um, she had said she always liked girls, and I had just kind of gotten into it. And then eventually, I just got really comfortable with did her. Did she and... serve you alcohol? Was that it? Was that part of the seduction? <laughs> were you drinking? No, no. You were sober. Well, like, we were drinking, but it wasn't drinking that made me do it so. i see so you're having what a couple of glasses of wine mm -hmm. and what was she wearing that day that she seduced you um i think we put her in booty shorts me and her got dressed up well you were barely out of high school you had just graduated and you i have to point out this drinking was illegal absolutely that's what's making it so <laughs> it was <wrong>. right <laughs> so you go over to this girl's house is she the same age as you or a little bit older she is i think she's 21 21 mm -hmm. And uh, there you are, naive, alone in the big city. Yeah. Someone takes you in. Yeah, she's what were you wearing that day when you went over to her house? Oh, I was wearing this. I was all hookered out. I just got done shooting. I had the short little jean skirt and the huge clear hooker heels and the little tank top. Wow. <laughs> that must have been hot. <laughs> hooker yeah. heels. And did she keep complimenting you, telling you how good you looked? Yeah, she was very sweet about that. She's like, you're so cute. And now she's like, you're all grown up. Right. So she thought you were really cute that day with your little hooker outfit yeah. on and 
she was wearing what? She decided to go in the room and change, I guess, while you no, were drinking? Well, um, we thought it would be cute because she's very shy and so am I kind of. So we thought, okay, well, let's just go get in booty shorts. And right. we were all you like, didn't know anything was going on yet. Yeah. You just figured, hey, we'll get in booty let's shorts. Let's just go. And her boyfriend's like taking pictures of us. What are booty shorts? I mean, I know what they are, but of course everyone um, else doesn't. It's covers half your butt. It's like little underwear, but it doesn't cover the whole thing. Some people call them buttock shorts, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Yes, booty shorts. The booty shorts. So, so the bottom of your ass cheeks hangs out of the yes. booty shorts. Yes. yes. Ass cleavage. <laughs> ass cleavage. Ass cleavage. Thank you, Cytheria. I didn't know it was called that. Now you, I didn't so, know there was such a thing. So some drinking was going on. The boyfriend's taking pictures. You're in booty shorts and what, little tops? Yeah, and we were just taking pictures. Did she watch you change into the booty shorts? Were you naked in front of her? Yeah, me, me and her changed. We're Did very she, comfortable. But you hadn't touched each other or kissed or anything at that uh, point. Well, like, we had pecked on the lips, but, like, nothing major. So. When you changed in the booty shorts? Mm-hmm. So you were looking at her naked, she was looking at you naked, and did she say? Did she start to compliment you on your body? Yeah, she, she's very sweet. She always has complimented me. So. Did she tell you you look like Britney Spears a little bit? Yeah, she, she told did. Me that. She did. <laughs> yes. And when she saw you naked the first time, did she say something like, I have to have you, or she just kept cool about it? She just kept cool about it. I see. And then, so you go in the room and you begin to take pictures. Yeah, we were just having fun. Like, so, so the end of the night was kind of a blur, because... We, like, woke up, and the next morning we were just naked and bit of the sheet over well, us. Well, wait, but. you jumped ahead here. Now, something something big happened here. Yeah. You, you, you're you doing pictures in the booty shorts. I mean, uh, does the boyfriend just... suggest you hold each other? Um, He was just sitting down watching and kind of let us do our own thing. Um, Did you start kissing when you posed for the pictures? Yeah, we were kissing, oh. and then she was It was, like, like all a big joke me. at first. Yeah. No, it wasn't a joke. Like, we were just experimenting, and then eventually... Um, she laid on top of you. Yeah, and then... Yeah, in her yeah. booty shorts. Yeah. Yes. And did you yeah, begin yeah. to put your hands all over her, or were you nervous? I was nervous. She she likes to take control. So I mean, this is someone of, you had just met that day. Yeah, well, I mean, like, this was, like, a few days after, but I mean, like... It just kind of eventually eased into it, and then wow. So that day in the in the uh, in the when you were taking the picture, she was on top of you. Was that the how to be with a woman? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't even think you can say he yeah, buzz. I don't think any of that got really? Yeah. Oh, nothing gets on anymore. Seacrest. Oh. The the finisher, so to speak, never gets on. A year from now, you come back and visit me. We'll get everything on. <laughs> and you, Cytheria, you into chicks too? I am very much into chicks. Well, everyone into porn is into chicks. Yeah, I mean, I go figure. Is porn a good career? Seriously. Is it really good? Is, should a girl go into porn? We have two girls here who want to audition today to get into porn. Is it a good career? Um, I think it's a wonderful career if it's something you're open-minded to. You definitely have to have the mindset for it. If you don't have the mindset for it, no, don't. Don't get in it. In other words, when you say the mindset, you have to have a free and open attitude towards... Gosh darn it, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you guys can't do an interview. I can't do this. I'm so sorry. All right, the F word we can't, obviously. We yeah. apologize to everybody, I'm right. sorry. You're not wearing panties, are you? I, I'm actually, I'm because I, I have this, like, cute little bow. Yeah, can you get up and model that dress? That, that, let's do that. Because it's a hot yeah. dress. It is a hot dress. By the way, let me say, Cytheria yeah. looks like Natalie Portman a bit. She does yeah, look like does. Natalie yeah. Portman. Turn around, Cytheria. You got some, look at that outfit. Yeah. Your whole ass is sticking out. Yeah, Come on yeah. on. Fishbein, you haven't, yes? I, I was going to tell you that um, some interesting things about Cytheria. Mm -hmm. um, she, she... Uh, had sex with the governor of a state and a prime minister of a country, but she's unsure of wh what they governed. Yeah. You've I, had sex with celebrities, haven't I, you? Yes, I have. Wow. Where do you meet celebrities? You know, I did, I've I've never really had sex with, like, a celebrity, like, type, but... Someone tells me you will before you leave. You just here. kind of run into them. But you, 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 were, you were the prime minister, Yes, correct? I was. You were with the prime minister of uh, a country? A country? <laughs> no. The, and the governor... And a governor of a state here in the United States? Not here. Yeah, so yeah, somewhere in here, yeah. Somewhere here in the United States. <laughs> yeah, somewhere here. How did you get make love to the governor? Where did you meet him? Um, it was at a party. At a party, and someone said, this is the governor of the state? No, I actually didn't find out till later on. Did this governor have a German accent? Or no, he did not. Accent? No? <laughs> Hello, my darling. Cytheria. Cytheria. Cytheria is an unusual name. Is that a name you gave yourself? Um, I found it on the internet. It's actually Greek mythology. Um, it's a Greek goddess for love, All beauty, right. and music. I see. And when you met this uh, governor, yes, you were at a party. Yes. Did he tell you he was the governor? No. He did not. No. And you, uh, why did you go with him? What was, what attracted you to him? I was it was the power? A horny, you horny, were horny, horny girl. And he said to you, "I have to have you." No, he didn't say have to. I just kind of did it on my own. I guess I don't. I don't know. It was a really long, long time ago. It was only like eighteen. 
But were there a lot of, go- you know, because usually a governor would have a lot of body. Yeah, it was, it was, it was at a really upper class type of party. Um, a lot of older type of guys. Were you? Were you was the governor married? Mm, probably. Okay. How did you get to this party? <laughs> yeah, why were you at the party? Yeah. I think it's see. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, thank you. It's all right. Please, I'm Please sit down. Yeah, no, I, it was great, though. I, I'm only 5'3". Five, 5'3"? Three. Five, three? What do you weigh? Um, 105? Yeah, girls, you should weigh 105 if you're 5'3". Five, five, three. Three. Same with Tegan. Everybody's perfect. You wearing underwear? Yes. Why are you wearing underwear? I don't know. You just like to wear underwear? Yeah, sometimes. No bra, though. Well, because then if I go out in public, I don't have to worry about if I'm at a restaurant, if people yeah. can see up my skirt or not. <laughs> Neither of you are wearing a bra, obviously. No. Yeah, you never... Oh, very nice, Ithuria. Mm-hmm. And real breasts, both of you, I think. No. Nope. You're not? No. Those are fake? Yes. But nope. you didn't go too big, which no, is nice. No, I didn't go pornified. I got them right. normal. Have you two ever made love on film? No, and I really want to. You yeah. guys want to get together? Yes. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Now, Tegan, you just left high school and knew you were going into porn. Yes. Wow, that's uh, what made you think uh, that's the career I want. Did career the day. Um, <laughs> did they bring? Suggest that? How do you know? At, at, in high school, um, he told me I should get into it when I get older, and so when I turned eighteen. Did you discuss I, this move with your parents at all? Were no. You a conservative family. No. See, this is the thing. I got into actually the business despite my ex-boyfriend. Uh, uh, your boyfriend had cheated on you. No, we had broken up and we were fighting and all my money was gone. I was like, well, I need some money so I should strip. And he was like, cool. Like, I could tell, you know, he didn't think I had the guts to strip. And then when we broke up, I was like, screw this. I'm going to go do porn. So Wow. I'll show you who's got guts. You're really getting them back. (laughs) Can I ask a question? Yes. I always wonder, because you're so close to high school and stuff. When are you one of those girls who was really loose in high school, and this is an obvious jump, or no? No, no, I was a prude in high school. Really? And then you just decide one day to not be. Yeah, well, I ha- I got a boyfriend, and he gave me my first orgasm. So since then, it's been like. What about the money in porn? Can you retire? If like you girls have to do this while you're young, that's if, where the big money is. If you're smart, if you're smart and you manage your money right, and you, yeah, you you could. Can you make uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year? Yeah. Why is it a secret? Why are they looking at Paul? Why, uh, Paul, what are you? Let, let, let me tell you about both these girls. <laughs> yeah. Tegan just signed a contract with Digital Playground. Go ahead. So as a contract girl for that company, she will work less and make a lot more money. Like, what's a lot of money important? Like, I know Jenna Jameson tells me she has $10 million. Well, Jenna's Jenna. Jenna's, Jenna's Jenna. Though. Jenna's Jenna. Jenna's a whole nother league. But these girls can make a couple hundred thousand a year. Cytheria started her own company called right. Cytheria Productions, so she's going to now own her own movies. Yes. Nice. And that's where the money is. Tegan, why don't you do that? Because I'm still new and I just started, so right. if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the right way. All right. Now, uh... It takes some time to build yourself up. Hook nose, Mike. You're on the air. Go ahead. Morning, oh, no. Go ahead. Listen, uh, Howard, I want to know if you can get these broads to reenact that story she just told, and maybe you could take the pictures. Yeah, we'll have some good pictures up on the web of the girls. We'll, we'll definitely do a little photo shoot so you can see what we're talking about. Um, you, got, you girls are on the web Howard, also? Howard. Yes. Where can guys see you on the web? Um, Clubcytheria.com. Yes. And digitalplayground.com. Okay. Yes, what is it, Hook Nose Mike? Howard, why don't you get these broads to take some clothes off, brother? They just did. They just showed, well, well Cytheria showed me her boobs. And uh, Tegan's showing them to me now, too. Very nice. Let's meet some girls who want to get into porn. First of all, um, what we're going to do today... Howard, have a good day. Go. Thank you. This is going to be good. The winner is going to get a... Tr- There's two women who want to audition. We've written some scenes for them. They're going to work with uh, actor Jeff Caro. Oh, dear. And actor High Pacharic. The girls will do a short porno scene with these guys. Okay. And you guys will tell us who is the better porno star. Okay. The winner will get a trip for two to the 2005 AVN Awards in Las Vegas. The trip includes four days and three nights in Vegas, plus VIP passes to the award show and AVN's Adult Entertainment Expo. And there they can really get introduced to the porno community, and before you know it, they can be having sex on film. Yes. Mm. Right? Correct. Correct. Right. All right, so let's, um, let's meet Jeff Caro. He's our first actor. I think they wanted to bring in high pitch first. That's what they I said. said. What did I say I, I want? That's what I told them. I get it. We're now, when I say I want Jeff Caro, I mean Jeff Caro. <laughs> I mean, what is this? There's a mutiny outside. I tell you, everyone's mutinizing. He wants me. 
they they uh, they're crazy around here lately. <laughs> I got the stations, the Citadel stations, mutinizing. I got mutiny going on in here. Thank you, Doodle Do. Jeff is very drunk, by the way. Oh, is that right? So we better get him in first. He's already quit the show once. He's been uh, complaining he's... about the show. Yeah, he want, He says this might be his last uh, show. Really? Yeah. He's all pissed. Because we didn't put him in the right green room. Uh, no, just because of that, bitch. I heard oh, you're a real dear. pain in the ass Maybe. today. Hi. Gary told me you're the worst you've ever been. Oh, yeah. You're, you're quitting the show. but You could do what you want. Hey. Why are you quitting? At, at one point, you know, he was angry. He was yelling at everybody. And when I got in there, he was a little bit more docile. And then at the end, he goes, it's me. It's me. It's and I go, you're being so... But he's, uh, he, he's upset that, he, you know, we give him money to get down here and cover all his transportation, his Come hotel and everything. Now. But I guess we're not leaving enough money for booze. Right. Oh, he has to pay for his own drinks? I, I, I could never yeah. afford that. <laughs> hey, look, he shaved. I know. I was going to say, I don't even recognize him. So so oh, what Jeff. was he doing? He says we put him in the wrong green room. So he feels that he was put in the uh, the subpar green room, the B <laughs> green room, and he felt that Beetle just was put in the A green room, and he didn't understand. Dude, are you a mental case or what? And what are you now going to be quiet on the air? I am. Nobody wants you here quiet. You can leave now if that's the case. I'll have oh, high pitch stop. filling. What's your problem? Come on. What's wrong with the green room? Let's go. What was wrong with the green room? What difference is it? What green smoke. room? Why do was being a douchebag to me? He took my cigarette. Ronnie was being a, a, a jerk to him because he said you can't smoke. But that's the Are rule. Are you such a baby man that you can't deny yourself no, a cigarette? I that. Yes. <laughs> You're a baby. You know that? You can't deny yourself a cigarette. You can't deny yourself a drink. He took my food. Oh, this is going to happen. No, really. I mean, you were out there complaining no, all morning. I should have said nothing. You should have said nothing. That's right. He fell asleep in the middle of a sentence before, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He's so loaded that now he can't even act. Right. I can. Now you're loaded. You're not even funny. I can you're act. I'm a professional. Good. After what? all that expense, Give you're worthless. Give me the cue cards, bitch. What? Give me the cue cards, bitch. All right. Whoa. Do you understand what we're going to do? You're going to be in this scene. Yeah, you're... I'm going to be a school principal. You're going to be a school principal. <laughs> you, you read your nice. lines. You read your lines and let the girl act. She's acting for. She's trying to win something here. Okay. She's got to act. Right. You work with her. I will. All right. What's one? All right. Sit down a and be blondie? a principal. Uh, Jeff, neither of these girls will be acting with you. They're going to be evaluating. Sit down in your chair. <laughs> You're the judges, Fruity. <laughs> you know what? The guy's so loaded now, you don't know what was going on out in the hall. Really? He yeah. was screaming. He was yelling that he's not being treated right. I'm not, dude. Do we have that on tape? What's the right treatment? Oh, yeah, that's all on tape. You're not being treated oh, right. Bitch. All right. All right. Oh, it's going to be a tough acting job for sure. All right. Let's bring in our first contestant. I don't know her name even. I think it's hard. Karma, right? Is this Karma? Karma says she wants to be in porn. She wants to win the porn trip. That's a good name, Karma. Karma. C A R. This is Julie Howard. Oh, this is Julie. Oh, this is Julie. Okay. <laughs> right for Julie me. wrote us a note. She Which wants to be in okay. porn. Oh, what do you say? Hell? What is that? What Jeff. did you just do? We put him in the wrong desk. But that's okay. It's Why are you in the wrong desk? You crack staff at work as always. Well, why are you in the wrong uh, desk? Because my freaking arm, okay, Oh, well, you know something, Jeff? You're a real complainer. What's wrong with your arm? Your arm is resting on the desk. It's fine. Oh, it's dumb. Well, we're supposed to create a special desk for you because of the arm? Well, sit on top of the desk then. No, I mean, he'll I'm fall okay. over. I'm okay. He's fine. Stop being a baby. I'm not fine. You know, it's funny. I said to him, he said... Rod, he, he took my cigarette. <laughs> he said he couldn't smoke here. And I said, you know, that bar that you were at till 4 in the morning, you couldn't smoke there either. It's the law. And he goes, ah. I smoked there, okay? You <laughs> smoked in a bar? <laughs> I right. said let me the say, name Let me it. say hi to Julie. Julie, how are you? Good, how are you? All right, you sent us a note. You want mm -hmm. to be in porno. Are you, uh, what, how, how old are you, Julie? I'm 26. 26? Mm -hmm. Are you a married woman? Are you single. Single. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had sex in front of a lot of people? Have you been on film before yes. having sex? Where do you do this? Um, 
basically I'm just starting out. You're just starting out yes. in the porno industry. Yes. And this would be a big break for you if these girls would evaluate you. Right. If you win, you'll go to the AVN Awards in Vegas. Right. Maybe Correct. you could network in and get to meet some people, right? Okay. Yes. That's right. how it is. Does she have a speech impediment? <laughs> do you have a speech impediment? <laughs> no. You do not. She does not, Rob. Uh, you well, have a speech I hear imp- something. No, you're the one with the speech impediment. <laughs> now, you say you lost your virginity when you were 13 years old yes. to a 37-year-old man. Yes. Was that gross? No. Did he I'm molest 37. you? I loved him. You loved him. <laughs> you were in love with a 37-year-old man when you were 13 years old. Yes. And how did he make love to you? How did he seduce you? Where did he meet you? I met him at a truck stop. Um, <laughs> that was our first guest. What were you doing, at a, doing at a truck stop? I was hitchhiking. You, you were hitchhiking? Yes. Did, did your parents give you any supervision? Did they give no. you any love? Did they give you any kind of home life? No. They did not. What, what was wrong? I was torn. What? I you sure you were... It's whoring. <laughs> you saw you were a hits whoring? Are you a hits whore? You bitch. Why you gotta be angry? You little... My arm hurt. You guys are taking care of me. What's the matter, Jeff? We're not paying attention to you for three seconds? I can't smoke. I'm okay, dude. I'm All the right. assistant principal. So you at 13, where were your parents? Where were your parents? Uh, well, I decided I wanted to go in the exotic dancing business. At 13? Yes. Wow. Yes. And, 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 and did you fight with your mother over this? Or yes. Did, and was your, mother, was your mother mean to you? No, uh, they just didn't want nothing to do with me when right. I exotic. got into career. All exotic right. dancing business. <laughs> My mom wanted me to go in the exotic dancing business. My did, did you 84 t- year old boyfriend said go to the exotic dancing Now, did you, did you drop out of school? You st- dropped out of yes. school, right? In mm-hmm. 10th grade? Yes. yes. All right. So you've had little education. You were 13 years old, hitchhiking. Yes. And you were hitchhiking because you wanted to be in the exotic dancing business. Yes. Did you get in? Yes. At 13? Yes. They hired you? Yes. Were you a Where? mature looking 13 year old? No. They they didn't care. Weren't they, they knew. Weren't they afraid they'd go to jail for hiring a 13-year-old to dance nude? No. Well, they these were people, not. These people were unsavory. <laughs> were they unsavory? No. No. <laughs> yeah, clearly they were nice guys. Weren't they afraid? I mean, isn't that like kiddie porn if, if someone's 13? Yeah, a little bit. Right, right. But you didn't care. <laughs> yeah, but they made a lot of money. <laughs> they made a lot of money with that kiddie porn. <laughs> what did you make? <laughs> a little bit. Not as much they as they did. They didn't make that much. Well, I made about thirty dollars. <laughs> so, so this is some story. Now, you got into the truck with the truck driver, mm-hmm. and you instantly were attracted to him. Yes. And you made love to him in the truck that day. Yes. You did. I'm attracted to older men. <laughs> Where's your dad? <laughs> Clearly ignoring her. Did your dad ignore you? Is He's that a truck driver? Oh. oh my. <laughs> you never made love to your own father. No. no. What are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what do I look like? Wrong. Some sort of lunatic? Girls, you're in porn. A lot of times you do meet girls who have very sordid pasts in porn. Isn't that true? Yes, very true. Right. So this is not unusual to hear something like this. No. Did you girls make love to anyone at 13? No. 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 All right. Well, you don't have as hardcore a story. So you got in the truck and the guy said, hey, you're a pretty little 13-year-old, huh? Yes. And he said, I'm going to make love to you. Yes. And you said, by all means, do that. Did he undress you? Yes, he did. He did. He took your clothes off. Yes. Were you nervous that he was doing this at 13? No, I was already stripping by then. Yes. Yeah. You were way ahead of the game, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, way ahead of the curve. I'll make love to you, but it's going to cost you a Milky Way. Yeah. <laughs> so this truck driver pulled over to the side of the road mm-hmm. and undressed you. Yes. And you stood there, well, sat there nude in front of him. Yes. And you began to have sex. Mm-hmm. And then he took you down to the strip club and watched you strip. Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> You ruined it. Jeff, what are you he doing? He said, did he chew on your mouth? Oh, did he chew on your mouth? Oh. No. He always sounds so dirty when he talks. I talking. know. <laughs> did he chew on your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I ate a Marlboro before I came in. So how does she make a living now? I mean, what's she doing? Oh, I'm a exotic broker. Exotic dancing still. Exotic dancing yes. still. Well, you're uh, an attractive woman. Well, thank you. Uh, you haven't been able to get into porno, though. Not, Not for really. my view. I mean, it's difficult because I live in Michigan. Michigan. Would mm-hmm. you be willing yeah. to relocate to get into the porno? The girls, she yes. would have to relocate. Yes, yeah, she does. Mm-hmm. The porno right. world is down in LA. Right. She'd have to relocate. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> what else would she have to do, Jeff? Everything, dude. <laughs>
All right, let's find out if you have the goods. Obviously, we can't get... I'm willing to relocate. <laughs> Seriously, uh, now this is a, an audition of the sense. You're going to be acting with Principal Curro. In this scene... <laughs> That's the this... gentleman with cirrhosis to your immediate Julie, right? Julie I mean. will direct. Okay. okay. Mean, okay. Jeff will uh, be your uh, fellow actor. You are a student who has been very, very bad, very and you're bad. in the schoolroom to see Principal Curro. Let me tell okay. people that you're wearing a thong and a bra in Principal Curro's office. Now, do me a favor. When Jeff Curro... If and he, a lot of stretch marks. And if Jeff Curro asks you to... Hello, Principal. Not yet. Well, I'm your director. Principal. Are when, you going to say something like action when you think they should start? Yes, I'll say action when you should start. And uh, when you... First. Listen to me, Jeff, please. I'm going to throw you out of here. first. Okay. I just, you know, clear in the air. All right. Well, with the stench coming out of you, we're not going to be able to clear the air anytime soon. All right. Listen to me. <laughs> Julie. Yes. If he should ask you for pleasure, this is the sound we should be hearing you make. Mm. All right. That's what we need you to do. <laughs> Something like that. All right. Jeff, please. And action. Hello, Principal Curl. I'm Candy Juggs. You wanted to see me? Yes. Come on, Mr. Juggs. First off, you don't realize there's a very stiff penalty for horseplay in the girls' locker room, bitch. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Principal Curl, but I caught that black janitor in the Venus peeking at me while I was taking a soapy, hot, wet shower. I couldn't, didn't think that throwing a used feminine hygiene product would, at him would put his eye out. Well, you thought wrong, you dumb bitch. Do you realize how hard it is going to be for Mr. Furnace to pick out watermelon seeds? When he can only see out of one eye. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Principal Curro. Listen to you, you iron horny slut. <laughs> sorry is he going to cut it. You're going to be severely spanked, groped, and impregnated. <laughs> that is understood. Yes, sir. Can I have? Can I also ask? Have you been drinking? <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> and in case you didn't know, booze makes me horny. You dumb bitch. <laughs> now turn around and receive your firm and justified spanking. All right. I see that Julie is walking over to Jeff to get get her spanking. <laughs> Easy, easy, wow. easy. It's acting, Jeff. All Jeff, right, Jeff. okay. All right. Hold it, cut. Okay. Julie, when he's spanking you, does that hurt? No. You're supposed to make noise like it does. Oh, okay. All right. You're acting. And oh, action. Oh, principal, I've been a naughty girl. That's good. Oh, show me how to Why use that? that stick. All right, okay, cut. All right, let's move along in the scene, please. Thank you, principal curl. May I have another? You sure can, bitch. <laughs> uh, you're supposed to moan oh, when he does principal. it. principal. Well, hold it. Cut. Oh, cut, bitch. cut. When, when he hits you, moan like you're sexually moan aroused, like please. Enjoy. And action. Enjoy, bitch. And action. Oh, principal. Julie. Yeah. Julie, look at me. Cut. <laughs> cut. Cut. You want to win this contest? Julie. Are you, oh, is that hurt? Baby. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. Jeff, easier on that. And Julie, moan like you're sexually turned oh, on. Right. Okay. And action. Moan like I'm so uh, oh, that's, uh, Yes, that's good. Oh, uh, yeah. That's good. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. All right, cut. Ooh, and let's right. move on in the scene, please. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> is uh, Julie enjoying herself? Julie, how are you doing? Call me right. Uncle Dirty Fingers. Don't give me pleasure. No. <laughs> no, give me pleasure, bitch. All right, and that noise that we're looking for, Please let's go. Please punish me, my young. Where's your noise? 
You're, you're giving him pleasure. Quack. Quack. No. Quack. Quack. Let me hear it, Julie, please. And Quack. action. Quack, please. Please punish my young tan wrongdoing cut by and Uncle Dirty Fingers. Cut, 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 cut. All right. Cut. Please punish. Cut. Quack. 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 That's a Quack. Please punish my dirty fingers, quack. Quack. <laughs> Uncle Julie, principal. All right, we've seen your audition. Okay. You're now going to, we're going to take a break. We're going to strike Good this luck, set. Johnny. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I hope you won. Jeff, thank you for acting in this. No problem, Howard. And she when says, we come back. Wait a minute. She says she's interested in older men. Is Jeff hey, attracted Howard. to her? Jeff, uh, Julie, would you ever be attracted to this uh, gentleman, uh, Jeff Currow? Yes. You would. Well, I like older men. Yes. <laughs> I'm a little demented. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't mind girl-on-girl uh, uh, girl sex either? No, I All love right. it. Do you okay. imagine girl, do you like girl-on-thing sex? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> we'll take a break. When we come back, your competition will hey, enter. Howard, the... Okay. Yes. I have a song for Robin, and I brought my CD. Well, maybe during the news. You know? All right. Let's, let's, why don't you go back and, and relax now? I'll be out there. Julie, we'll have the results okay. of this contest after these commercial words. I want to thank Paul Fishbein for being an evaluator. We have the beautiful Cytheria and Tegan here who are professional porn stars. I know. Girls, what did you think of that audition? Um, I thought it was horrible. You thought it was horrible. <laughs> yes. what, did, what did she do wrong? What, what was Jeff, it? be quiet. Uh, for one, you, when you're in a, a, a set, there's a lot of going on. You need to realize you need to multitask. You need to uh, listen to everybody who's around you. And you, most of all, you never listen to anybody around you. You listen to the director. Right. If I was spanking you in a scene, what would you sound like? What are the moans that you would do? Don't spank me again. No, um, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Tegan, what about you? What did you think of her uh, performance? Oop, up, eep, eep, up, up. Tegan, what about her performance? What about it the performance? It needed perform to be a little bit more believable. It didn't, I didn't really get sexually aroused. So right, yeah. W during the spanking scene, wouldn't you make noises? Yeah, you need to make noises and you need to, like, get into it. What more. kind of noises? Show her what you would have done. Um. I'm spanking you. Uh, yes, please spank me harder. Uh. What? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Anyway, Julie, mm -hmm. that's good. That's good criticism. Okay. When you're being spanked, to act like you're getting turned on. Okay. All right. Julie, you are 30 sit-ups away from a porn career. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Julie, let's see if you win. You still, your competition could do worse. Okay. All right, we'll be back right after these words the for the ashes of this disaster. That is the FCC and the... The incredible pressure from the religious right. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they've got me switching to uh, Sirius from XM. You uh, have it's to... Just, just you have to wait know, too it, long. It's just driving me mad. Uh, I was told during the break that uh, we were almost shut off and, and they almost went to music during the last bit. I cannot for the life of me figure out how that was dirty. I mean, a couple of people slipped and said the F word and stuff, but uh, there was absolutely nothing. But that's why we have a delay. Yeah. I didn't they, get they, to hear anything. Evidently, they almost ran out of delay, so they almost went to music. And in Miami, they just went to music. They said, how are they almost went to music in New York? Right. Here? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, yeah. They almost went to music here. Here, man. Oh. Let me tell you, this is, this is out of control. And if that would have happened, that would have meant the whole rest of the country wouldn't have gotten the feed. Sad day. Well, mm -hmm. now you know why... The industry is not fighting. I'm the only one fighting. I'm the only one fighting. <laughs> the rest are just sucking up their contracts or what? I don't know what they're doing, but I know what I'm doing. They're all going to thank me one day for recreating this industry once again. I'm good. And then you girls come back. Yes. Yes, yes most definitely. We'll do a real show without the... A real show. You yeah, girls come back in seven years when you're allowed to drink. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have hey, you so now. drunk you don't even know what's going to go on. I'm, I'm having a bar built into my new studio. As long as you're involved. I am involved. Good. Uh, forget about it. Wait till you see <laughs> Just forget about it. Thank you, girls. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to try and forge ahead. Julie, you're competing for a great trip. Mm -hmm. Compliments of the 2005 AVN Awards. Yes. They're going to take place in Las Vegas. The trip includes four days and three nights in Las Vegas, plus VIP passes to the award show and AVN's Adult Entertainment Expo. Julie... You did a, a, a scene with Jeff Currow. Mm hmm The scene was cut in Miami. 
Uh, it was almost taken off the air here. God only knows what got on the air. How did you feel you did, though? I think I did well. I was just a little nervous. Yes. Well, it's your mm. first time on camera. It's your yeah. first time in front of a studio mm -hmm. totally audience. Totally understandable. Yeah, you did Has the best you Has he ever seen porn? Have you seen porn? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm. Well, she seems like a freak. Robin, she has seen porn. Okay. Are you I a freak, as the check. girls say? Yes. You are a freak. I'm You're... a bit of a freak. Yes. <laughs> you know who you sound like a little bit? <laughs> Holly Hunter, the actress. Has anyone ever told you that? Yes. They have. Mm -hmm. nice. As a matter of fact, they have. Yes. I was going to say Ann Landers. <laughs> Ann Landers? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, can hear yes. That. I have a lot of star quality. <laughs> well, okay. We heard from Julie, and now I want you to meet an actor known as High Pitch Eric. High Pitch will be playing Kelly Clarkson in a lesbian scene. Mm. Wait, wait, hold it. Who's What's squealing? That? I don't know. All right. Ah, there's Kelly Clarkson. Ah! Is that oh, maybe is Julie's that? headphones? Julie, yeah, I think it's Julie's headphones. Julie, you need to turn your head. Hey, why don't you take off Julie's headphones? There you go. Whoa. Oh, boy. All right, Julie. <laughs> we have crappy equipment here. It's my magnetic personality. High Pitch, you understand what's going to happen today? You, oh, why am I not hearing high pitch? Please, guys, work with me. Come on. Somebody wake up over there. Hi, hi, high pitch. Hi, Howard. How are you? All right. No, you don't have to put on your Kelly Clarkson voice yet. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Oh, all right. There you go. <laughs> You're going to help a young lady try to win a porn trip. You're going to act with her. Okay. I want you to treat it seriously. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's meet this young lady. Her name is Karma. Karma came a long way. She wants to win the trip. She wants to get into porno. Karma is coming to uh, be evaluated. She has danced as a stripper for more than 10 years. Oh, wow. There you go. How are you, Karma? Hi, Howard. How are you doing? Good to see you. Me I understand too. you've danced for 10 years as a stripper. Yes. You appear to be something like a black woman, but not, uh, I wouldn't say you're very dark skinned. You're light skinned black woman, right? Um, multiracial. Multiracial. Yes. What are you exactly? What am I looking at here? Spanish, Hawaiian, black, white. Everything. Ooh, everything. Hawaiian. Everybody had a... How many people were in that bag? How many people were in that mix? <laughs> well, good for you. You're wearing a sexy, what would you call that, negligee? Yes. Yes, uh, like a leopard. You look almost part leopard. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. That's the outfit. <laughs> I think you actually had spot. You say uh, you want to get into porn to piss off the father of your children. No, to piss off my father. To piss off well, your father. Yeah, and one of, one of my children's father, yes. Yes. Why do you want to make Why do you want to piss everyone off? Because they've pissed me off. Well, how so? What have they done to you? Well, that's a long story. Mm -hmm. long We've story. got time. We've got all the time <laughs> in the world to hear your story. Uh, well, it's a social services issue, custody thing. Do you have custody stuff. of your kids? No, he has custody, but I he doesn't see. have full custody. Now, do you so, think uh, it'll hurt your chances yeah, to get custody if you go into no, porno? No. No. You don't care. I now, is that no. the ex-boyfriend or the husband or the father? It's my father and my youngest child's father. I see. Yeah. Well, it sounds uh, like a lot of fathers are involved. Hey, Howard. Yes, uh, a high pitch. You think she has a higher pitch voice than I do? <laughs> You're a moron. Oh God. <laughs> now, in this scene, we're going to ask you to act out a scene. Did you happen to hear Julie's scene who I you're did. competing with? How do you think she did? She did pretty good. You think you can do better than her? I'm not going to say that. She did good. All right. Now, let me give Aww. you... As your, <laughs> That's good. As your director, good. here's what I'm going to suggest to you. Okay. When uh, High Pitch, as Kelly Clarkson, asks for pleasure, you might want to make this sound. <laughs> that will be the sound of pleasure. Okay, that's what I'm looking for in this scene. All right? Play that one more time. I'm sorry, what is that? I have to have something in my throat to make that sound. No, that's easy. <laughs> He'll give you something. That, that's the quack sound. Right. Yeah, okay. Show her how to do it. Okay, look. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, gotcha. All gotcha. right, okay. Ah. All right, that's very good. All right, now, in this scene, you, of course, are a woman... High Pitch is going to play Kelly Clarkson. You're going to be Fantasia Barino. You're backstage at American Idol. And the two of you start to get it on and fall in love. That's what we're going to be looking at here. Okay. Any moaning sounds you can make, anything to turn us on, will help in the scene, okay? okay. Take a seat and act. All right, here she is. This is Karma. Nice. Beautiful Thank Karma. You. She's wearing a negligee. All right, let's see how this goes. And action. Oh, my, oh, my. What a great American Idol show. I love to celebrate. I can't believe how much I drank tonight in the green room. How do you feel, Fantasia? 
Yeah, me too. I'm feeling tipsy, Kelly. Oh, yeah! Hello, hello! Everyone thing just feels so good. And I, not only am I tipsy, but I am also a little tingly, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Too bad your boyfriend's out of town. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean we can't do something about it. Yeah, I guess we can call Clay, Aiken, and Reuben Stuttered for some fun. <laughs> Eric. Cut, 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 cut. Eric. Eric. Cut. Now, we're at the part of the scene where Fantasia and Kelly Clarkson have suggested they could have some fun with Clay Aiken and Reuben Stuttered, but they're not available. Right. No, action. Fantasia. Action. No, Fantasia. That's not what I mean. Kelly... What, cut, cut, cut. What's going on, High Pitch? It's something Kelly Kelly. It's direction. All right, it's direction. Oh. All right, and action. Are you going, Kelly, again? No, you go. And cut. Okay, and Kelly, high, and Kelly yeah, Clarkson, Kelly. action. Oh. But, make noise. Oh, Is this me? Oh, yeah. Kelly, you are touching my leg and it feels so good. <laughs> Kelly moans. Oh no. It has an orgasm. Oh yeah! Cut, 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 cut. C guys, you're going to have to do better than this. All right. High pitch, you ask Kelly Clarkson are touching Fantasia Barino's leg. Right. And then you start to moan. Wow. Oh. And and you Fantasia, you don't read his stage direction. Right. Okay. Well, All right, here we go. Stage direction. All right, I'm here we go. Them. And Action! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, Fantasia! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, Kelly, you are so right. I can't keep this secret anymore. I find you extremely attractive. I want to kiss you right now. I want to give you a special pleasure. And cut! Now, <laughs> you're about... Kelly? Now, now, who is supposed to be giving special pleasure? Fantasia, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, this is where the quack quack comes in, right? Is anybody with me? You got to do the quack quack. All right, you ready? And let's pick Show it up. Show that again. Okay. Quack, 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 quack. Okay. All right, are you ready? And <laughs> action. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, and what? cut, and cut, and cut. All right, look. This is not sexy. Now, remember, <laughs> Kelly, you take it from your line. I mean, rather, Fantasia, you take it from your line and then go into your quacking sound, and you're really turned on. You ready? And... And... Oh. Action! Oh, my God, Kelly. Your skin is so soft, and your lips are so juicy. Can I put my hand somewhere special? Yes, Fantasia. Take me. Do whatever you want with me. I'm Kelly Clarkson. I want you to make me your little slut. <laughs> Now, what is going on here? <laughs> Fantasia is getting up off the couch. And, and leaving the room. And sitting on Kelly Clarkson's <laughs> lap. Might be good for the quack quack sound right here. Throw something in. Oh, dear. And start moaning. Oh, you are driving me crazy. I need to get naked. I want you to put your fingers in my mouth and treat them like lollipops. <laughs> oh, boy, you must hate your father. And cut. All right, cut, 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 cut. This is a disaster. Well. Take off your clothes and take my fingers. <laughs> Are we still in the scene? Cut, cut. Where's the quack quack sound now? Give me the quack sound. I showed you. I'm doing it. Quack, 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 quack. All right, cut, 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 cut. This is a disaster. <laughs> Well, I'm going to turn. How do you think you did there, uh, 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 Karma? Well, I mean, this to me is not sexy, Howard. Right. I mean, I'm seductive. This is a joke. What's not sexy about it, uh, I mean, uh, Eric? Quack, quack, quack. I mean, you know. Well, I'm, I'm trying. How to do it. That's not sexy. I can't get into that. I'm trying to get into porn, not a joke. <laughs> well, wow. if you want to get into porn, you have to act out, you know, the scene. Yeah, but it's, yeah. It's, it's a joke. Teach her how to act. Teach her how to act. Show her sexy. Sure. Yeah. Do something. Do something. Uh, just teach me how to do sex. I can do that just fine. High pitch show her. Hey, I've been a porn before. I mean, here, come here. <laughs> no, don't, don't leave her alone. Leave her out of it. <laughs>
Teach you how to act there, ugly Strasburg. <laughs> no, I, I don't point her. It's easy. Like, a woman lies on top of me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have to talk out, you know, with the scene when they're doing the sex. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm the director, and I'm saying it's over. Now, someone has to be chosen as a winner. Either it's Julie or Karma. 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 <laughs> this is like the actor's studio. We've seen two porno scenes, but only one person can go on the trip. I'm going to first turn to this beautiful starlet, this beautiful porn star, Tegan. Yes. Tegan, what do you think? Who should go to the 2005 AVN Awards? Julie um, or Karma? Who did you like better? I liked Karma. You liked I, Karma better? Yes, because when she was talking, like, when she, like, when the acting was real, it, she sounded like she really, like, enjoyed it. She sounded She's like... to get into it. I see. All right. That's one vote Karma. Zero votes for Julie. All right, let's go to the very beautiful Cytheria. Hi. Hi, Cytheria. <laughs> um, well, I choose Karma, but, I mean, I hope that you're going to get in reasons for the right reasons, not only just to get back to your father's or your father's, because you won't make it anywhere. You won't go anywhere. And you, 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 pretty much you'll be thrown to the... They'll use you, and they'll throw you to the curb. What are you saying? You're saying because um, Karma wants to get into porn to get back. Baby, you're killing Cytheria. me. Okay, wow. <laughs> All right, let's go to Paul Fishbein. <laughs> Paul? Cytheria, yeah, that's not I'm, allowed. I'm, I know, I know it's not. I apologize. All right. You start talking about porn and you start getting... All the right, porn. let's you know what? let's cut that out. You just knocked us off in Florida again. I know. And I I'm don't sorry. think we're back on in Florida know, during I'm this. Teasing. I'll tell you the truth <laughs> anyway. We just lost Green Bay. <laughs> Cytheria, I, I make you this promise. Come back and see me in a year I'm when I'm at, where I'm somewhere else where you can speak that way. But not no, right I just here. Need to watch my mouth, and I All apologize. Right. Paul Fishbein, you are the editor in chief and the owner of the AVN magazine, and also the uh, head muckety muck of the AVN awards. Right. Who deserves to go to the AVN convention? Well, I think I think Karma does because I, th I think that she's a much more convincing performer. Yes. Even though both of them, I thought, were up against you know incredible against odds. It. Incredible <laughs> odds. Right. But I also. I also agree with Cytheria. Don't do it for the wrong reasons, because it's it's a, a and choice. And someone remind me, what are the right reasons I was again? Say, are there any right? Reasons? Because you love sex. Because you, you love, love sex. sex. Do it yes. for a love of crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> like an insane love of that drug. Well, Julie, you didn't uh, beat out Karma. Karma was tough to beat. And she's very pretty. Yeah, but Karma. You know what I'll, yeah, I'll say and Julie's both very nice. In Julie's girls. defense, the person who goes second has an advantage. That's true too. I that is true. That is many times. Karma, how do you feel? You're going to the AVN Awards, possibly to hook up, who knows, and, and get into the porn industry. It sounds like you're one step closer. That sounds like a fun trip anyway, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. Uh, high pitch, thank you for that acting. Thank you, Howard. All right, you can drop your Kelly Clarkson voice now. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> hey, Howard. Yes. Did, uh, did, did you get my plug? No. What is your plug? I thought Will gave you the plug. What is your plug? I'm doing an appearance tomorrow night. At Kahunaville, in Wilmington, Delaware. and What will you do there, for God's sake? I do a comedy. I'm headliner. You do jokes? Yeah, I do my impressions. Now, is it high pitch or uh, Kelly Clarkson? Both. Oh. And <laughs> if people want tickets, they can go to Ticketmaster.com. What do they cost? I'm not sure of him. And you're going to get up and do stand-up? I'm going to do stand-up. And what are some of the voices you'll be doing? <laughs> you give us an example. I'm going to say... Who's high pitch? This is Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, and what do you say after I'm that? I'm going to say, fire! All right. All right. And, you know, it's a whole thing. How long does the show last? I'm on stage for about a good 10, 11 minutes. Don't say that, Eric. <laughs> a good 10, 11 minutes? I'm yeah. there too tomorrow night, Eric. You're not doing all that stuff. I'm, I'm headliner. No, no, I'm headliner. Is he, uh, I'm headliner. Is he working with you? Yeah, I just I just found this out this morning that he's been booked with me tomorrow night. Oh, are you here. upset about In it? In Wilmington, Delaware. Well, uh, I, he could come out at the end. He could come out at the end, Eric. All right, but you know, I can't drink because I'm on medication. Yeah, well, I can drink, and I'll be doing lots of it. I'm, <laughs> because I went to, I was at the hospital on Saturday. What's wrong with you? Well, I was a field toilet at the Thanksgiving, and what happened was, uh, I was a field toilet last Friday, 
and I was maybe because you're intensely obese. No, I had very, very high blood pressure. Is that what you you're called? Obese. You called and asked me for money, Eric? Yeah, and I didn't have money last week. But Howard's right. Do you understand that the reason why you have high blood pressure is because you're so fat? Right. And I went to the doctor uh, this past week, and my blood pressure went down. All right. Okay. Good for you. All right. Now let's say that. Um, <laughs> Let me give Julie a prize. <laughs> Julie, you didn't win. Are you feeling bad? No. You're I'm all right. just fine. Yeah. Well, I feel bad you didn't win because at 13 you were having sex. I feel sad about that. Oh, that's all right. I mean, but a 37-year-old truck driver. I mean, that that's sad, isn't it, in a way? No. no. I find really, it erotic. That's what I wanted to do. That's what you wanted. Mm. All right. Okay. How old is she, uh, Mel? How old are you now? 26. 26. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. And that trucker is what? 50 now? At like, least. Yeah. Are you still seeing the trucker? No, I'm single. <laughs> wow. Well, you've won a Samsung Napster MP3 unit with one ah, year's worth of service okay. courtesy of Napster. Discover and download over a million tracks for one low price. Try it for free at Napster.com. And you, uh, Karma, are going to Vegas for a fun trip at the Adult Video Awards. And uh, we wish you lots of luck, too. Thank you. And you, Paul Fishbein? Hopefully you're going to jail very soon. I why? I'm just I'm kidding. Perfectly you get a sense of humor. I have. A and the beautiful <laughs> Tegan, you'll be at digitalplayground.com. We can see you there. Yes, you can. Cytheria.com if you want to check out Cytheria. Yes. Club Cytheria. Club, Club Cytheria. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks to Dial Mattress for providing mattresses for this wonderful. Uh, yeah, really? Did they? They did. And to order a mattress, call 1-800-MATTRESS. And uh, high pitch tomorrow night. At Kahunaville in Wilmington, Delaware. With me. With Artie Lang. Yeah. Right. Ticketmaster.com. I want to give my boys a shout out to Luca Brazis to Jeff. All right. In Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> now I remember why I hate you. How would I love you? All right. Oh, thank you. Good. And we'll be back with the news and a song from Jeff Caro right after these right. words. <laughs> and Rich, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. We're going to be talking to Dom Herrera in a minute, one of the funniest comics around. Yeah. Right, Dom's sitting right here now. But... Hey, Dom. Hey, Howard. Hey, now. Can I save that script? Yes. Okay. A porno script? Yeah, just yeah. to <laughs> practice acting. Yeah. Get a check up to your place. and Mr. Caro, candy jugs, I like it. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> That's what we spend our day doing. Look how beautiful Robin looks. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You take responsibility. <laughs> I do, I really thank do. Thank you, Howard, for dressing her up like that. <laughs> Can you do the quacking sound? The quack, 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 quack. Well, I have to get into character. It'll take me a while. Yes, you're on the air. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Rich. Hey, how you doing, Howard? What's happening, brother? Hey, uh, I called you about a month ago. I got a wash my legs and... Uh, all that, you remember? Yes. And uh, they cut, <clears throat> they're cutting you off in Providence, like ten o'clock. Yes, I know. We we've yes. been talking about it. Uh, evidently, I'm being punished. Ah, oh, Jesus! There's one of the few comforts I got is listening to you. I got a friend in New York that leaves the rest of the show on my answer machine. So. Well, I am going to go to Syracuse with trucks and put up big megaphones so people can hear the show after ten o'clock, <laughs> and I'm going to airlift my tapes into uh, Syracuse. I'm not kidding. There you go. Yeah, I told you my old lady left me and. Uh, <clears throat> she came back on Thanksgiving. Yeah, black so, eyes. The guy beat the, beat the crap out of her. She ran off with a black eye and he beat the hell out of her? Yeah, she came back on Thanksgiving. I don't know. This is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> this is got, what happens. Is he an athlete? Did you Probably take her back? Play a game, Howard. You, you ever gonna come I don't it? have a game right now. But did you, he take her back? Did no, you? I, I got her a hotel room. Oh. <laughs> you got her a hotel room? Yeah. <laughs> All right, very I, good. Lee, you're on the air. What's that? Real quick, go ahead, Lee, because we got the Oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah, I was calling them from Syracuse. I was talking about how the news up here, we have a local news channel, and they're talking about the headlines were Stern, Shock Jock Stern smashes Syracuse or slams Syracuse or something. And that was, like, the headline, they say, coming up this hour. And then, like, the actual broadcast was, like, kind of unbiased, but they, they're calling, like, Rhino a Shock Jock, and they're saying that when you got news of uh, us getting cut off at 10 o'clock, you're going to have a contest, and they're making a big deal about that, like, as a punishment, and... It's just crazy here right now. It's well, all the news in Syracuse. Well, it's all the news in Syracuse, and that can only be good for the radio station that charges for advertising. But Yeah, uh, not in a year, though. Uh, no, I don't think it's a good thing to do to your listeners, punish your not listeners, because I'm leaving. I, I don't get it. But uh, uh, I'm like not, now, uh, by the way, uh, just to clear up any news reports, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying anything bad about Syracuse. I'm very oh, I know. pleased with my audience in Syracuse. I, if anything, I'm not punishing them. And uh, now, I guess, my buddy just called me because I have the radio off because of the delay, but he said that right after you went to the break last time uh, that the station here, is, uh, they have an advertisement saying, thank you for 20-some-odd years of listening and kind of like alluding to stay with us after Howard leaves and all that. 
Well, I haven't heard any of these announcements. I'm going to have to monitor that. I am on top of that situation. I'm here in Command Central. <laughs> there you go. And I am, uh, I am fighting the good fight. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Gerald. Yes, Howard. I'm in Hollywood, Florida, and you know, I was listening to the um, story about the 13-year-old. Yes. That had the um, 37-year-old. Yes. And they cut everything out, and I wanted to hear that so badly. Well, because uh, there's a guy who complains to the FCC about the show in Miami, so uh, they cut everything out. It's unfortunate. The Miami station is trying under uh, insurmountable odds to keep this show on the air. This is what's happened as a result of no one fighting the government and the FCC. Therefore, one person can determine what all of uh, Miami hears. Right. You enjoy the show. You would have liked to heard the story. The story was outrageous. It was great and also kind of uh, touching, actually, heartwarming. But, uh, no, it had something to do with sex and they immediately had to cut it. I don't blame the Miami station at all. I do blame all my fellow broadcasters who never once stand up and fight and join in the fight against the FCC. Yes, and one more thing. I would like sheep. to come on your show. I'm a black guy. I'm blind. You know, and black, I would like to come you know and black see people you and... aren't allowed on this show, sir. You know Especially that. Especially not the black and blind. The blind the... and black people are not the welcome here. That's right. Grow up. I can bleach my skin. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding with you, sir. Yeah, we're not having you on because you're boring. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, in fact, uh, Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles were always on this show, and we uh, we love the black and blind population. Don Herrera is a comic who uh, has broken all attendance records at all of his concerts. Unbelievable. Number 79 in the all-time 100. <laughs> right, He's right. Right behind Cedric the Entertainer. He's going to be at the Brokerage <laughs> Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow night in Belmore, Long Island. And if you uh, want to laugh, you should go see him. Did you see that thing, Howard, about uh, the... The woman, uh, the teacher who was arrested for having sex with the 14-year-old boy. And she was hot. She was hot. She's way hot. And oh, my God. there's a double standard. There shouldn't be a double standard. thing. There is a double standard. Of course, of course there is. Yeah. Of course. Well, I, this, this girl looks like the hottest stripper on the planet. Yeah. She was teaching kids. She seduced a 14-year-old, went as far as to have sex with him in the back of a car while the boy's friend drove around. Right. Whatever. And, I mean... Whatever. I would uh, <laughs> She did his math homework. I, I, I mean, uh, what what guy wouldn't want that? Nothing wrong with that at all. And this woman's being persecuted. Persecuted. Let me ask you something, though. Yes. It's your 14-year-old boy. Go ahead. How do you feel? Still proud of him. Right. Uh, me too. I'm jealous uh, of him. I, I, in fact, I want to smack him for not, for not letting me in on it. Right. I, I had a joke in my act about child molestation is a horrible, hideous thing, but there's a flip side to everything. What about the kids like me who wonder... Right. Long Very ago. difficult. But uh, her crime will probably be the greatest moment in his life. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it that way. Right, exactly. Uh, she's a hot piece of it. They got pictures of her in uh, standing next to a motorcycle in a bikini. Fuel many fantasies. Yeah, right? and I got to tell you, man, at 14, I could have handled that. <laughs> I mean, if I had a few lessons, I could have handled it. Sure. Uh, a young Howard Stern never got laid. Young um, Howard Stern never got touched. I still think your parents would have objected. Well, you know what? That's that's typical of them. To screw me every step of the way. You know how they say, like, a 14-year-old girl, like, sometimes a rapist will say she was asking for it. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Like, boys at 14 actually verbally ask for it. They are asking for it. Yeah, we go, please, <laughs> molest hey, Mike. us. Mike Walker's here with us. Hey, hey, Mike. hey by the way, Dom right. was, uh, you were a, a close friend of uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Worked yeah. with him many times. And uh, I, I'm glad to have you here because I... Uh, Put together this song about Rodney. Oh, yeah. I love that guy. Me that, too. He did the nicest thing ever to me. What was that? He touched me in a place <laughs> that... No, he, he uh, called me after a Tonight Show appearance and uh, complimented me on it and said that whenever he did the Tonight Show, no one ever called him and said uh -huh. a nice word except for one guy. And he always remembered the guy. He said, so I want to do that for you. He says, what you did up there was great. I get what you're doing, and I think you're terrific. And that made my year. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I know. It's... It, he was such a selfless guy. He was the only one. He could care less if somebody like Jim Carrey and Roseanne, even though they end, you know, made more money than him at the time, he always wanted to help people. Yeah. I never seen anybody like him. Did you? You went to his funeral? Yeah, I, was, I did the eulogy. I was one of the guys that did the eulogy. And, uh, oh. most, it was very, you know, very touching and funny and uh, 
Saget was Bob Saget was the uh, of course Leno slammed Saget at the, even Leno treated it like a roast. He goes, Geez, "Hey, it's good to see you working again, Bob." You know, it's oh, like, "Come man. on, man!" Wow. We're all, it's like, "Wow, Jay." So uh, but, the tone of the Rodney thing was reverential, and yeah. people got up there. We and told said nice stories, things, yeah. right? Told stories about Rodney. Well, Leno got up and uh, just started ripping. Well, uh, no, he. But I mean, he ripped Saget, and then he, you know, he, he just. Uh, well, you know, wait. you know, even though it's a funeral, I still want to, uh, you know, I still want to come off looking good. Was, Even though it's a funeral, I still have to do a roast. Tim Allen actually asked to get on, which I thought was funny. It's like asking, like bumping for a spot at the improv. <laughs> you know? and, All the uh, comics <laughs> fighting at the Rodney Dangerfield. Right, right. And uh, were you offended that Leno uh, did that? No, I think Saget was hurt. It, it didn't offend me. It's just uh, like Saget's there to say something genuine well, about Sag, Rodney. We, we were actually crying. I mean, it wasn't like yeah. it wasn't like even though even though he's eighty three, we still miss him. Right. I mean, at his eightieth birthday, he said to me, "Hey, kid, you want to get effed up?" I said, uh, I said, Ronnie, I don't smoke pot. He goes, all right, I'll see you in 10 minutes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the, I mean, he was like, to the end, he was like that. I said, well, you put something on, Ronnie? I got to eat tomorrow. I don't want this <laughs> image in my head for a couple of days. I know a guy who took a business meeting with Rodney. And uh, Rodney came in to pitch a movie. Uh -huh. Like, basically, uh, Rodney had written a movie or something like that. He says, Rodney walked in in his robe, didn't even get dressed for the meeting. And his balls were hanging out oh, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he didn't care. It's the ultimate F.U. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But it was Rodney looking for the gig. He, I yeah, I know, but I just it's good a guy has an attitude like that after years of struggling. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm staying in my robe. Yeah, hey, look at gets, my balls. It gets <laughs> awkward, though, when you're alone with him. I was at his apartment <laughs> after they had the 100 greatest comedians. Remember that? Yeah. And he's going, who are these who are these best as a judge? I was 100 great. Who, who could dictate 100 comedians? After he gets, goes off into this whole thing, and he goes, where'd I come in, kid? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Would you play the gossip game with us? You seem to know people in show business. Yes, definitely. All right. There are going to be four stories from the great Mike Walker, who is, uh, of course, at nationalenquirer.com. And uh, Mike will give us four stories, and then it's our job to figure out the fake one. All right, here we go. Mike, are you ready? I am ready, Howard. That's and good. here is the first story. I like you. <clears throat> what was that? Well, I was a little clearing of the throat. Right. Try not to do that, please. All right. All right. Uh, be a pro. Be a pro, please. <laughs> okay, first item. In their first post-honeymoon fight, Bridezilla Star Jones started dreaming of a white Christmas and got her bells jingled by new hubby Al Reynolds. It's time to put up my tree. I mean, our tree, honey, she cooed. Oh, no, said Al. We're not using that scraggly white plastic thing you had last year. We're getting a real tree, as in green. Horrified Star huffed, I love that tree. You never said you didn't like it. Anyway, I want white, just like our wedding. Snapped Al, I didn't say I hated it because we were dating then. Now we're married, that tree is tacky, and it's history, baby. Star wept and wailed, but Super Hubby stood his ground, and she finally gave in like a good little wife. She wow. wept and wailed. She wept like a whale. <laughs> Did you notice that, that Mike was doing both Star and Al? Yeah. And Al has a rather thick black accent, I think. Mm, look at your hair, Star. <laughs> You's got to get a new tree. <laughs> oh, thank this. you, Master. I, I don't know this. nothing about birthing no baby. <laughs> All right, story number two. Let's help the more impression. Go ahead. Here's an urgent message for Matt LeBlanc. Stop eating. Calming his nerves as his Joey series battles lower than expected ratings, the ever gustatory Matt keeps munching m comfy food, baked penny pasta, smothered mozzarella, double chocolate dipped biscotti, etc. So wardrobe got him a tummy cinching man girdle that makes him look lighter in the lens. Man girdle. And number three. Number three, fat actress Kirstie Alley. And, of course, that's fat actress, quote-unquote, the name of her show. Kirstie Alley, tipping, tripping the light fantastic with her pooches at an L.A. park, recoiled in horror when several 20-ish guys started catcalling stuff like, Hey, you're the chick from Cheers. Man, you really packed on the pound since then. Kirstie turned beet red, trying to ignore the creeps as she packed her dogs into her SUV. But the bullying mouth breathers kept hurling fat cracks until a muscular dude walked up to them and growled, You boys have a problem? Slackjawed, the punk shrank back as action hero Vin Diesel stepped up in their faces and said <laughs> evenly, I think you boys owe this lady an apology. The wannabe tough guys instantly wimped, apologized to Kirsty, and split. Holding back tears, Kirsty thanked Diesel profusely for his fast and furious gallantry. And number four. Talk about a playboy hoisted by his own petard, ex-wild thing Charlie Sheen, sorry he ever <laughs> okayed hottie wife Denise Richards posing nude for Playboy Mag. At first, Charlie bragged that the pics were beautiful, but he started freaking when crew members on his Two and a Half Men series kept sauntering up with Playboys in hand, asking if he could get Denise to autograph the mags. Charlie suddenly exploded and yelled, enough is enough. No, she will not sign. 
He later confided to a pal, this may not have been such a good idea after all. All right, here's the four stories. Star Jones and Al Reynolds fighting over a plastic Christmas tree. Matt LeBlanc is eating himself silly. Kirstie Alley was defended because she was called fat. And Charlie Sheen is sorry his wife posed in Playboy. She was defended by Vin Diesel. I think that's important to the story. It is. It Kirstie is Alley, uh, it's Wrong. either, the, the fake story is either Kirstie Alley or Charlie Sheen. I'm going to have to pick one. The Kirstie Alley story is not true. I'll say that's fake. I don't buy that because of the Vin Diesel thing. Dom Herrera agrees with me. Robin? See, I got to figure that's such a crazy story. It's got to be true. Uh, Man Girdle has got to be true. Man Girdle. Yeah, they, they didn't, he didn't make that up. Man Girdle. I was going to say it's Man the Star Zero. Jones and Al story. All right, Robin says Star Jones. And Artie, what do you say? Well, I tell you, a, a plastic Christmas tree is gay, and Star Jones doesn't want anything gay in her house. gay. Well, so I believe that. I guess I'll go with the Vin Diesel thing, too, I guess. All right, you don't believe that, Artie. Yeah, no. All right, you're going to come over with me and Dom. And Fred, you seem to be a genius of some kind. What do you say? Until I heard the Vin Diesel, Kirstie Alley, fat actress story. Yeah. All, right. all right. Three. Uh, oh, did we get Dom? Dom? Yeah, yeah, Howard, Dom, Artie, and Fred all say Kirstie mm -hmm. Alley. Robin says Star Jones and Al Reynolds couldn't possibly be true. Who is right this week? Well, once again, uh, if, if Robin would only remember, it's always the decisive move. Okay? Remember when Robin used to win all the time? Mm -hmm. And she hasn't won so often lately. I haven't had a good run, yes. But this time you went right for it. That's didn't right. hesitate. <laughs> Star Jones, you are the winner. Star Jones is the phony item. That's true. Who would be around to hear that argument? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there you go. To play the gossip game with Mike Walker online, go to nationalenquirer.com. Listen to the Mike Walker Show Sunday afternoons from 1 to 3 on KLSX 97, 1 FM in Los Angeles. The Inquirer continues to be one of my favorite newspapers, as long as I'm not in it. <laughs> and you're uh, not. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. The great yes. Mike Walker, everybody. Dom Herrera is with us. Going to take a break. Then we're going to do the news. Uh, Dom, I hope you can stay with us. I got to go, Howard. Thanks for having me. All right. You have a very busy <laughs> schedule. Run. I got a very run. busy I a lot to do at 10 in the morning. We'll be back right after these words. <laughs> show a little bit. Robert, show a little bit of that love to me. Show me. Your uh, opening to your news. Oh wow! How exciting! Show a little bit. Congratulations! Robert, show a little bit of that love to me. All right, enough. Thank you. I got that tape of what they play in Syracuse during our show. It's unbelievable. Oh, let me hear this. It's unbelievable when I play this for you. Dom doesn't know that much about it. He was like, "Well, that's what they play." And then they go, now back to Howard? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe I was show. on the air. Don, by the way, will be at the Brokerage Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow night in Belmore, Long Island. Got a great show there. And Dom's going to be at the Laugh Factory in Manhattan on New Year's Eve. Oh. Oh, there's a lion in here today. <laughs> Did you have bacon? Is that bacon? Is no bacon. Oh. Just turkey. Okay. So is this the general manager making the announcement? Yeah, yeah. It's wild. It's really insane. Oh, and then I got to, okay, then we got to do something else. But listen to this. 95. X. This is 95X General Manager Darren Smith. For eight years, we have aired the Howard Stern Show on 95X. As you have heard, Howard is soon leaving broadcast radio. When that happens, you would have to buy new equipment and pay a monthly fee to continue hearing Stern. It's unfortunate that Howard has chosen to make that move, which costs his fans hundreds of dollars to get what they've had for free. Our pledge is many more years of the best quality radio at no charge to you. Thanks for 27 years of support for 95X and our sponsors. It's at Rockstar 95X, this report. Report is brought to you by Wegman's Greeting Cards. The reason, A, they have their sponsors is because of me. Yeah. Number two, they're charging their sponsors more money during my show. So as far as being money hungry, I wonder. Also, yeah, th you would have to buy a radio to hear me on satellite. But guess what? You have to buy a radio to hear their free station. And their free station doesn't come free. And, uh, I, you know, it's almost like if Letterman announced his last year... And during the Letterman show, they started playing antagon antagonistic spots about him leaving. Antagonistic? I'm having trouble. I'm a little worked up. Sorry. But I, I really am. I mean, that's just outrageous. And now, back to Howard. 
Gee, I'm sorry Howard decided to leave uh, radio and do something where they don't chop the crap out of his show. They take best of and annihilate it. Sorry Howard's taking a show where you can actually hear what he has to say. Yeah, I, I, I'm really sorry. I, I mean, you know, that's kind of an unfair thing to be playing that during my show, number one, to my audience. Like, that all developed. you're doing is leaping for money. Yeah. No, it's not the case. I make enough money. I was leaving broadcast radio because of what they do to my show. It's ridiculous. I'm in a meeting yesterday with Tom, and they're taking best of, and they chop the crap out of everything I say. And I don't know too many guys who would put up with that. And I'm not putting up with it. I don't think Chris Rock would let HBO sit there and edit his shows. Definitely not. That's why he's his own producer. He <clears throat> wants to be in control of what he puts out. Yeah. If it was just for the money, I could have stayed here. Believe me. Yeah, this is comfortable. It's safe. And if I'm in it for the money, I could be selling you all kinds of crap. Like the Bill O'Reilly welcome mat. Or the Rush Limbaugh tie and the Rush Limbaugh EIB chair. I mean, that's an outrageously um, one-sided view and awfully self-serving. Mm -hmm. And I hope the listeners in Syracuse don't fall for it. Of course, they can't hear me right now. I'll, I'll play this again on Monday. How yeah. about Howard Stern cool lots? Yeah, well, that I would sell. It's like a skirt, but you can't look up it. <laughs> All right, that I would sell. But they are acting as if nothing was happening to you on broadcast radio. Everything yeah. was great. Yeah. Can you believe Howard decided to just pick up and leave <laughs> and screw everyone over and not offer his show for free? No, it wasn't exactly that. Dude, I'm getting fined every day by the United States government. The show that I do, we just did a segment, a harmless segment where some people are auditioned to be in a porn movie with, with the most innocuous script that we could have written. And the thing was obliterated and trashed. A girl told a story about the fact that she was 13 year olds and a truck driver took her virginity and they bleeped it. They, they cut the show off in Miami because they're afraid of the government. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm leaving. The other thing they forget so quickly is we, we got taken off in six cities less than a year ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, and I didn't see anyone jumping to my defense. And their only defense is what we had, John. Well, oh, great. With, a, with an edited show. And we don't care how much you have to, we have to cut you, we'll keep you on. Yeah, why would I stay? <laughs> and I'm going to a medium that has 700,000 subscribers right now. Uh, I'm taking a huge risk. And yeah, you have to pay for the radio, just like you have to buy a radio here. I mean, really attacking me endlessly. I hope the people of Syracuse, Providence, and wherever the hell else I'm cut off early don't I fall for it. I think it was it. Harrisburg and... It's an outrage. Grand Rapids, Michigan. That it's an, was it. It's an absolute outrage. Yes, Matt, you're on the air. Excuse me, uh, Matt, here you are. Yes, hi, Matt. Oh, go ahead. I'm one of the lost tribes of Howard here. I'm in Syracuse, and you're already off the air. This DJ Rhino character needs to shut his mouth about this stuff. I'll tell you, this is going to shoot them in the foot. I'm already banning every single sponsor that's on 95X. Well, that's sad. You know, I mean, I mean, I understand your anger. I mean, they're, 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 I'm their morning guy. I'm still working for them for the next year, and they're bashing me on during my show. Right. They're acting as if you're holding them hostage. And I know whose idea this is. It's a woman. Uh, I always forget her name. Judy. Judy something. Something around. Ellis. Judy Ellis. And she I'll thinks you, she's doing the right thing. But let me tell you something. I have worked with every one of these general manager types. They all think they know the right move at the, right, at the time, and they're all wrong. This is the worst move. This DJ Rhino guy, he calls himself the working man's DJ. Okay, pig he's virus. A meat puppet. Let me tell you something. Pig virus, who treated me worse than any person on the planet at this ra at the radio station NBC, now says I was I look like a fool. Mm -hmm. I was wrong, and uh, they will all eat their words because all of these people are going to need work in the future. It always happens that in the aftermath, with their 2020 hindsight, they realize, oh, that was a stupid thing I did. What I'm doing before I retire for good is taking an industry in its infancy and speeding it along so that there's work for people like Rhino and Judy Ellis and everyone else. Yeah, this is uh, just like when uh, this stinks on ice. Cable. This is this stinks on ice, but that's all right. You can't bring me down. Others have tried better than you. Yeah, we are. We are the lost tribe of Howard Stern right now. I mean, we're, we're, we're totally left out in the cold. They're not I, helping I, out the audience. I don't know what to say. I'm outraged. That's Thank you. That's a great thing you're doing for your audience. Yeah, that's a yeah. way to pay. Um, what a nice thing. Stay with us after he leaves because look how good we're treating you now. Screw that. That station sucks. Thank you.
Thank you, Alex. I'm shocked. I mean, I, 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 in fact, we had a conversation with the owner, one of the, you know, one of the owners of the of the company, uh -huh. and they said they weren't going to get into this kind of thing. And uh, I don't know. This is an outrage. Wow. Well. Yes, Ralph. I, I, I'm, that's ridiculous. I'm. It, it's insulting. It's shocking. I mean. It's not like you decided, you just up and said, okay, I'm just going to leave radio. I mean, you were pretty much forced to leave by this FCC, just not letting you talk and finding you. It's, yeah, I it's mean. It's not your fault. I, I didn't. I, Why I, attack I, you? I, because this is what happens in a divorce. I'm leaving, and I'm leaving in a respectful way. I'm yeah. honoring my contract. Yep, uh, women I'm, in a divorce get all up the And they think I'm going to uh, ruin their careers by going to satellite radio. Well, once again, going on with the analogy, uh, the wife knew that there were problems. Yep, but none of the but the wife never stood up for her man. <laughs> Didn't bother to do anything about it. And you know it's ridiculous too. They're so short short sighted about this. I mean, because who who knows? Maybe you can come. You'll do other things in, in terms of radio. Of course, I've even tried to bring them in. But uh, hey, listen, what, what can I tell you? Yes, uh, Veronica, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. Hi. I'm, I'm a big fan, and let me tell you, I am beyond pissed. I'm livid. With what's happening ever since Clear Channel knocked you off, this 560 Wolves, Neil Rogers talks bad about you. They cut you off. And I heard you say earlier that no one's fighting for you. I wrote a letter to the Colin Powell, whatever. Yeah, by the way, I don't feel it's that you're not fighting for me. No, I, I'm, but I I'm, I'm talking about people in my industry, and it's all a joke. All of them have uh, careers. Thanks to my style of broadcasting. But, uh, you know, this really shows you what these people are. I mean, they were mm. behind you when you were making money and having the ratings and everybody was happy. Yeah. Now they're dumping you like the uh, mistress. Oh, yeah. uh, please. It, it, it's outrageous. You're still making money and have the ratings. Of course. I know. Yeah. That's what's crazy. <laughs> of course. And, you know, I sent an email to Powell, and I complained about him doing this, and I wanted a response to He my doesn't complaint. care. He of doesn't care. Not. And neither does the industry. No one cares. And now everyone's upset that I'm leaving because, you see, I was the lightning rod. I took all the heat. Now that I'm leaving, now you're going to see all of them getting fined. It's going to be... It's, I'm going to be sitting back and laughing over at Satellite. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Nicole Bass, get your plug in, please. I, I, I didn't plug your website. What is the name of that website? NicoleBass.com. NicoleBass.com. <laughs> That's where she <laughs> make it for 30 hey, bucks. not just not just sex calls that I do, and that's the only call that I did like that. I knew right away that it was you guys. Yeah, by the way, you need practice making those sex calls. <laughs> I That's because I don't do those kind of calls. Why do people Most pay the you? the calls that I do are nutrition or, you know, people that are interested in speaking with me. Like, <laughs> Conversation often, calls. How often does that happen? <laughs> how, many, how many times a day do you get 30 bucks for a, a, a not 10 minute that, call? Not that often. Nicole, I'd like to discuss politics <laughs> <laughs> if I could. First, I have to spank you. <laughs> right, anybody wants to speak to Nicole, it's going to cost you 30 bucks for 10 minutes, and it's at NicoleBass.com. Yes, and my phone number is 718 326. Five four nine one. All right, thank you, Nicole. <laughs> thank you. All right, it's time. Freaky operators are standing by. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah, Brian, go ahead. We got to get the news, but uh, I know everyone's anxious to get on. Howard. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. This is Brian. What's happening? Okay. Listen, I'm I'm so upset with this guy saying about um, it's going to cost me money to listen to you on the radio. Well, let me tell you, I hate commercials. As soon as you're off the radio. I turn off the radio, I turn on my CD player that I pay $200 for that holds 100 CDs, which how much does that cost me? $1,500, $2,000, so I can have commercial-free radio. That's what Sirius is offering me, commercial-free well, radio, $13 I mean, a month is I nothing. mean, for him to make the argument that uh, they're giving you something for free is, is a freakish argument. I mean, uh, you know, it's not free. You do have to buy a radio, and you do have to... Uh, you know, sit through commercials. And sponsors are 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 be, sponsors are paying, which is fine. It's it's a fine system, but it's a system that I I grew up with. But, and nothing is free. You're right. But I have a radio free. in every room. I know. I live in a one bedroom apartment. I you know I got one in the bathroom, in the bedroom, in the kitchen. I don't want to miss a word. Thank you. So uh, for him to say it's going to cost me uh, money, I'm saving money. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. See you in serious. Thank you. I mean, really, I mean, I'm under attack here by everyone. What's the big deal? What's the beef, sir? Well, yeah. you're still trying to make money for them. 
I'm ju- have you watched real, the beef, sir? This is an awkward time for me to bring this up, but uh, Ari and I have been asked to replace you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to take it. You, you do what you want, Art, but I'm not turning it down. Tom Herrera show. I'd listen to that. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't be surprised if they asked you to replace No, me. I'm kidding. You. No, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm you're talented. See? You're ready. I, w- I couldn't replace you. You got to, you know, it's. You couldn't get up this early. <laughs> no, it's just. I mean, I do stand up. You. I don't think it's easy what you do to fill in all that time. It's amazing. Well, you, know, you just get a couple of strippers in here and you ask them when they <laughs> yeah. lost their virginity. Trust me, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the I'll give you the manual. Well, you on can't how to do, do it. that anymore, though. That's the problem. I'm even up the creek. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, go to Rob and let's talk about the news. Dom, you read the paper, so this will probably be good. I don't read the paper, so I'll keep quiet. First thing I noticed in page six today is Mike Tyson is uh, busted, and they say he's living off friends after his last fight, which he lost uh, in four rounds. It said that he's depressed, abusing cocaine, running up debts with shady associates, and living with his girlfriend, who is the mother of his two-year-old son. They say over the course of his career, he has squandered an estimated $400 million Unbelievable. fortune. <laughs> I'm not saying he's indulgent. Does, does anybody need two tigers? <laughs> Isn't one enough? <laughs> I'm, you know, a, I'm abusing cocaine. <laughs> not only did he lose $400 million, he's $38 million in debt. Oh, my God. Ran up debts. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a funny thing with me. I, I don't know why, but I would still pay money to watch Mike Tyson fight. I just think they've got to change the guys he fights. Who's he going to fight now? I, I mean, he should uh, fight like... Middleweights. Yeah. Like, yeah. He should fight like <laughs> little guy. like guys he can beat. <laughs> That's what it was always about for Mike Tyson. You're just giving him too tough an opponent. No, no, no. He used to beat the, everybody. Like, I'd go watch him fight like guys off the street. Okay, street fighting Mike. Yeah. I would watch that. I would think he might end up in that, the ultimate brawling. Why not? Guy. Yeah. Well, that that well remember that fight in the hotel that night? That was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just think they've given him too hard a person to fight. <laughs> yeah, those guys know how to fight, too. <laughs> right. I'd watch him beat up a giraffe. I don't care. <laughs> It'd be funny. I'm going to beat up a llama. <laughs> <laughs> an alpaca. I'm beating up an alpaca farm. <laughs> <laughs> also, Mike Tyson. Also in the news, they, in uh, page six today, they say Les Moonves um, wants out of his marriage now to his ex-wife. Apparently, they have been trying to work through the whole settlement thing. But apparently, after that Julie Chen show at Gucci, he has filed papers saying, I need to leave my marriage now. Les even, Moonves. Even though he hasn't worked out the child support, the alimony, or any of that stuff. Les Moonves who is the head of our company, Viacom, has a girlfriend who is so hot, I don't even know what to say. Well, shouldn't he, though, if he's the head of Viacom? That's hot. Well, let me tell you, absolutely. I went shopping (laughs) at Gucci. I was at Gucci. That's right. And those aren't cheap clothes. No. I walked in. yourself. I didn't have to buy a thing, though, thank God. (laughs) Because there's no point in putting this in Gucci. No, I was looking at the different stores. I was with my girlfriend. I walk into Gucci, and there I see Les. And it was awkward because, you know, Les and I have had words. But right. standing next to him is his girlfriend, who is Oriental, if you know what I mean. And you she, mean Oriental? I've, right? never been, I've, I've never been with an Oriental girl. I mean, for free. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. And um, I don't think Les has either. <laughs> yeah, no different for Les. But let me tell you something. Perfect body, big boobs, speaks well. You know, she's an anchor woman. Articulate. She's an anchor woman? Yeah. A gorgeous face. No, no accent. Connie Chung? Uh, hotter than Connie Chung ever was. Yeah. I mean, one of the best looking people I've ever seen. You have been raving about her like I've never heard you rave I about it. I was flabbergasted. My girlfriend goes, that's like the best looking woman I ever saw. So wow, then, really? I go over to Les and I said, listen, that's some girlfriend. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> say that. Yeah. Oh, my. I said, congratulations. <laughs> what a nice breaker that is. I mean, I said, Maron. That's what I said. <laughs> Maron a mi. Maron a mi. Gonna go hasta vida. So I, <laughs> and then I said, listen, I even forget what we're arguing about. <laughs> Let's I'm not be friends. Anymore. I want to see you. I want to see your girlfriend. <laughs> so then I sit down. You're my, both in Gucci with hot chicks. Yeah, Who my cares about anything? My girlfriend goes off shopping. I'm sitting there. Les comes over. We're talking. He even says to me, I know why you're leaving radio. That FCC's clobbering you. And you got some good money over at the other place. He got in the stands. I said, yeah. I said, I'm getting killed. I can't do my show anymore. He goes, I know. 
And we both looked at each other and we just said, okay, let's look at our chicks. <laughs> His chick comes out. She's trying on, now let me describe this article of clothing, a black, tight, like a dance skin shirt. Yeah. She's wearing tight, stretch black pants like you would wear on the ski slopes. They look like a second skin, yeah. right? Like her ass has no <laughs> panties on for sure. She starts to model this thing for Les, and she goes, Les, do you think it fits, or is it too tight? I'm sitting there, I'm like, it is not too tight. What kept Could, you from shouting out the answer? I wanted to blurt out, and I'm I'm ready, like, like I'm sitting there reading my paper, pretending not to watch this, and he's like, yeah, it looks good, you know. <laughs> she came out in a low-cut sweater, cleavage sticking out, and he says to her, eh, it's not so good. Meanwhile, it was perfect. I wanted to scream at him. Let her have this. <laughs> if this was Jeopardy, there would have been like, and sir, this article of clothing is not too tight. <laughs> and I know he's getting a divorce, and like, even he said, I got to be single. Well, that's what he's saying. He needs to move on with his life. Oh, he does. Emotionally. Honestly, he does. Personally. Personally. Yeah, he does. My, my heart goes out to him. Yeah. I got to tell you something. <laughs> this man does need to move on with his life. <laughs> if you were hanging around with this chick, you would need to move on, too. You know he's going to marry her. Oh, that's what they think this yeah. is all about, yes. that he needs to, you know, get free so he can, you know, pop the question oh. and they can move on. She's backing up the truck. Yeah, his, his, the wife is saying, look, hold on. We got to work out a settlement. Go, I, I don't care. Make me single now. <laughs> I don't. I, you got to understand, I got to be single. He's in a poontang haze. Yeah, I got to be single to get... <laughs> that's exactly what it is. I need to move on, like, tomorrow. To, like, like, the guy's 55 years old. I know yeah, he's what's feeling, the rush? No, he's feeling pressure. Like, I got to be single. I could drop dead tomorrow. <laughs> I need to be single. Oh, dear. They say Nancy, his ex-wife, is so upset with his shenanigans with uh, Chen. She won't let her children watch CBS or eat Chinese food. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Get out of here. That's what it says. Or eat Chinese food? Yes. <laughs> I, can agree. I can see that. Mom, we love Chinese food. <laughs> you like her better. <laughs> Listen, I, I got news for her. The kids are going to like her better. I know. You got to see her. Um, They're going to like New Mommy better? Oh, my God. Magnificent. No yeah. contest. New Mommy no. lets us eat Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do? Don't mm. even bother to mount a fight. Kiss the days goodbye when you can watch Everybody Loves Raymond over some low mane. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I mean, in most cases, I would say, listen, slow down. But this guy, he, he's got to move fast. He's got to move fast. I would move fast on this. <laughs> he could lose her? <laughs> he could. I'm telling you. He could lose her to you and your girlfriend. You're not kidding. Said. We would have uh, we would have brought her home. <laughs> you wrap that up. <laughs> oh man, sushi to go. <laughs> My whole wang. Yes. <laughs> My whole wang hurt. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Tom Herrera is with us at the Brokerage Comedy Club tonight, tomorrow night in Belmore, Long Island. Robin, what else is in the news? Um, Bob Dylan is going to be interviewed on 60 Minutes. He's writing several volumes about his life. You know that whole deal. Uh, Chronicles Volume One is already in bookstores. It's his memoir. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, watch that and I uh, have a couple of clips. He's interviewed, I guess, by Ed Bradley on 60 Minutes this Sunday. Ed Bradley gets to do the rock and roll interviews because he has an earring. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. And yeah. of all those old codgers, they figure he's closer to rock and roll than any of them. Yeah, he's only 80, <laughs> and he's got an earring. Here, Dylan comes clean about the man he is and who he's not. C3. It was like being in an Edgar Allan Poe story. Yeah, you're just not that person everybody thinks you are, although they call you that all the time. You're the prophet, you're the uh, savior. I'm not calling him that. Wah, wah. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Poor My guy. life is so hard. <laughs> wah, I'm not the savior. Wah. <laughs> um, he's again complaining about his uh, alter ego, C4. I never wanted me a prophet or, or, or... No one thinks you are, dude. They know you're a musician who sings a little too fast now. Or savior. I, 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 he mumbles all the lyrics. All this, maybe. Well, I could easily see myself becoming him, but private, no. He just went into a country and western accent for some reason. He's a weird cat. He seems to become a him. <laughs> yeah, he does that, yeah. He slips into that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, he'll be on 60 Minutes this Sunday night. You he don't look too there. good. How old is that cat? He's in his 60s, right? Yeah, he has to be. Probably yeah. early 60s, but he hasn't looked good in a while. Well, Highway 61 Revisited was... Uh, 1912. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah with uh, the invention of the phonograph, I think. Anyway. I wish they'd invent a photograph so I phonograph so I could have my music out there. <laughs>
Uh, Jason Giambi in the paper today. Uh, the Yankee fans are terribly upset, and Yankee management right. is upset with the news that he admitted to taking steroids and performance-enhancing drugs after telling everyone he did not. That's Whoa! shocking. <laughs> that is so shocking, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> to see, and Barry Bonds. <laughs> Barry Bonds' head changed shape. Yes. So I mean, he literally, when, when he came into the league... He weighed 40 pounds. Really? I mean, yeah. Right. He, he was as, as thin as possible. McGuire, too. Oh, yeah. McGuire, This yeah, guy yeah, was yeah. a... Jambi was a... Singles. He used to hit singles. Then well, he took, then he suddenly expanded to the size of a house. What? No one knew. Well, these guys. A lot of these guys take steroids. This is how they make a living. They've got to be stronger, bigger, and better. Well, there's Don't the question so of unfair competition. Well, what can I tell you? If some guys are willing to do that and other guys aren't, should they all be playing on the same team? Well, no. Well, I'm I mean, a I steroid take, league. I take them when I do stand up, and it's not fair. <laughs> I, nobody could kill like I kill just without enhancements. <laughs> well, here's Tom Verducci of Sports Illustrated. He says Giambi's days of being an impact MVP player may be over. D3. He physically has to get himself in shape, ready to play baseball again. That's number one. And then he'll have to have the mental strength to deal with the really unprecedented sort of attention he's going to get. You knew <laughs> what you were doing. I love how Barry Bonds said, well, the guy rubbed something on me. I didn't right, know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I gained 60 I just, pounds over yes, the weekend. <laughs> I just got bigger and stronger. The Yankees could possibly try to void Jason Giambi's contract, D4. Really? Yeah. He still is due more than $80 million over the next four years. I think, though, it's a very uphill climb for them, an uphill climb the size of Mount Everest, because I don't see the union giving into this at all. No, yeah, that no way. Yeah. Pretty strong, so they don't think they'll be able to do it, but the Yankees may try. Bud Selig, who is the commissioner of baseball, says this is too important an issue to neglect any further. D5. This is no longer an issue that we are going to... I don't think there's any question Whoa. about uh, what the hell there. was that? His credentials or his ability. Some chick this is no longer an issue. That Some chick interrupted Bud Selling. Oh, wow. This is no longer an issue that we are going to debate about. Anymore. I mean, this is something for everybody's sake. The sport, the players, the clubs, the fans, everybody. And so we will do something. So All anyway, right. Jason Jami, Bill, uh, uh, taking a whole bunch of hits for uh, taking steroids. <laughs> An internet tax bill is sitting on uh, the president's desk and will be signed into law today. Internet tax? What is that? Senator George Allen explains the core reason for this legislation. He won. The measure will prevent... We want to make sure that the inter your inter monthly internet bill, particularly for broadband, doesn't look like your telephone bill. What? I don't understand exactly what he's talking about, but here he explains how the legislation works. E2. The measure will prohibit any state or local or federal taxation of Internet access anywhere in this country uh, for the next four years or actually uh, until 2007, October 31st. Oh, then it's a good thing. Yeah. I was worried. Are they going to keep you from getting taxed? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That's okay. We'll go along with that. And, of course, the big news for New Yorkers is that uh, Bernie Carrick, our uh, former police commissioner, has been tapped to be the Homeland Security chief. Well, that's good. He's a great guy. He is now a member of President Yay! Bush's cabinet. Yeah, Rudy Giuliani, uh, this is a uh, payback since he went out and campaigned so hard for Bush. Well, not only did Rudy, but Bernard Carrick yeah. uh, campaigned as well. I understand. I didn't realize this, but he was Rudolph Giuliani's bodyguard during his first campaign and then was uh, appointed police commissioner and uh, later was tapped by uh, George Bush to go over to Iraq and uh, start uh, training people to police themselves over there. So, well, you know what I wonder? What? If Julie Chen is fully shaved. Oh. That's right. what I wonder. <laughs> You're reading my mind. Yeah. Right. yeah. Forget <laughs> Giuliani. Yeah. What about Julie Chen? <laughs> Giuliani, Julie Chen. <laughs> Somebody. Les Moonves' girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Here's yeah. Senator Chuck Schumer, who says that uh, he's putting his faith in Bernard Carrick. E4. In area after area after area, we have to do a better job. I pledge to uh, Bernie Carrick that I would work side by side with him as long as he made the fight strongly and toughly. 
And President Bush was busy, too, for the uh, tree lighting ceremony. He had to do that whole countdown, you know. Oh, did he? Did he the nation's right? capital has officially kicked off the start of the holiday season. Now will you join me in the countdown? Five, three, four, <laughs> two, one. Okay. Better than last with year. The National Christmas tree in Washington. You had Thursday. to edit that. No. Yes. <laughs> All right. What else, Robin? Well, a woman named Samantha Levine is not that impressed with Bernhard Carrick. Why? Uh, she says it remains to be seen whether his experience prepares him for such a big job. B5. What's the beef, sir? I don't think there's any question about uh, his his credentials or his ability to do the job. But the fact of the matter is, it's an enormous job. And what he's going to have to do is going to be unlike anything else he's ever done before. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. She doesn't know if he's up to it. I he saw him in Nobu the other night. He's up to it. She's an associate editor at U.S. News & World Report. If I was Bernie Carrick, the first thing I'd do is arrest that woman. <laughs> she must be up to something. Political right. prisoner. Hey, he's put a good her, guy. Put her in Guantanamo. <laughs> he's a hard worker, I know that. Oh, yeah, he loves to do his job. He loves to catch the bad guys. I don't trust hard workers. Did you see in the paper yesterday they announced that they're increasing the troops in um, Iraq? In preparation for the election, there are going to be 12,000 more troops right. on the ground there. And they're keeping guys who were supposed to be returning home there until after the election because of all the increased insurgent violence that's going on. So uh, oh. more troops are being um, sent over to Iraq. Well, I ain't going, I'll tell you that. No, you're that, not. Drew Carey asked me to go do a gig there last year. And I'm thinking, you didn't ask me when you had a hit show. Do your show. You're asking me to do Baghdad? Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. Yeah, th <laughs> thanks for taking me to Iraq. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, I can't be on TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I hope you said what? that to him. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I will. All right. Now that you told me what to say. 44% of uh, Americans are on drugs. These are prescription drugs. Americans are cramming their medicine chests with... Uh, more drugs to fight cholesterol, treat depression, and reduce inflammation, as well as, as other illnesses. Very much. we got to take my Xanax. Do you take that? Oh, I love that. Really? Oh. You know what it feels like? It must feel like just to be normal. That's what it feels like. <laughs> what a, like a person without anxiety, a normal person, just like walking around, whistling. Great. It's the greatest. Right. You never took it? No. You want one? You really take it? Yeah. Are you a depressed guy? Is that it? No, no. It's just uh, anti-anxiety. It helps me sleep. You have anxiety? Yeah. Well, only when I go out. Oh, so stay home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, there's nothing wrong no. with you. More than 40% of the population is taking at least one prescription drug, and then one out of every six people takes three or more. So you're one of those people? I am one. I, yeah, you're I in take the, the cholesterol stats. one, too. You do? I never have my cholesterol checked because I can't, I can't fast. But I'm assuming it's high. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I would assume it's high. Hey, yeah. that, this is the fattest I've ever been. I, I saw myself on Colin's show. We did that. It was the first time I had to lose weight on my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid to take tests, too. I, I just want to just keel over or something. You, know? you don't want to know when it's coming. Right. Yeah, I think you're close, Artie. <laughs> Thanks, man. <sighs> did we ever hear from Jenna Jameson, by the way? We no. need to get her kidneys checked. I haven't heard from her. There she is. <laughs> ah, that's, <laughs> that's porno for no, she's fine. <laughs> Jason Williams got some more bad news yesterday. Judges uh, who are looking over that case have given prosecutors another shot at him. They can uh, retry him on the uh, one count that jurors in the first trial wow. could not decide. He's working out, too. He's, he's back in shape again. Really? Yeah, he's ready to play. <laughs> Seriously. Sure. Yeah, no. yeah, well... It's Unfortunately, well, I... Well, he's going to be on the prison team, probably. Yeah. <laughs> the best guy at Sing Sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Colin Farrell is in Alexander. Some people say that's a really, really bad hair job. Oh, I heard that really sucks, hair yeah. job. <laughs> uh, is, what, is that his real hair in that movie? No, it's a terrible wig. Somebody wouldn't spring for a good uh, wig maker, I guess. Colin talks about the importance of the boot camp experience before making this film. Hey, the boot camp, while it was also a very important physical part of us 
And How many times a day do you take Xanax? Part of us. Oh, I, I don't take it every day. I take it like, if you take it every day, it wears out. It's like drinking. You know what I mean, Art? Yeah. It's like... <laughs> No, but it, it, you wouldn't. I wouldn't take it every day. Then I'd be addicted to it. How how often do you take it? Uh, like once every couple of days, or in the middle of the night if I can't sleep. It's and a it, great feeling, though. And the doctor uh, put you on that? Yeah, yeah. How do you get them? I just get them from my doctor. I mean, I I don't use them that much, so I kind of store them like a squirrel. How many oh. times a week do you take them? Uh, I take about a half a tab three times a week. Yeah, maybe I'll get on that. You got to try it. Just try it for the mellowness of it. I'm telling you. Really? Not, but you can't drink with it. I get oh, great. Get that. I get great you ones. Drink from, a little. But... I get great ones from my landscaper. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, have you ever like gone against the rules and and took it, taken a couple of drinks with it? Yeah. And See, what happens? Everyone does that. What happens though? Um, you just feel way better. <laughs> <laughs> it just well, why it get, waste it? It, it gets you higher. It's uh, it gets you groggier, really. Right. Well, that's not. It's not as good a the feeling. Greatest, the greatest feeling ever. I wouldn't recommend it. It could probably kill you. No, you shouldn't drink on any of that stuff. Well, because it slows down your heart too much. Oh I drank I drank on lithium once, and I almost my head almost exploded. <laughs> <laughs> you took lithium? Yeah. Oh, crazy. <laughs> and I had such a sweet tooth. Well, that's because he was locked up. Oh, yeah, about the... Uh, yeah. Where you, yeah. you told me about yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a court appointed. How'd you get alcohol if you were in, on lithium? In, in prison. In prison. Well, I know. Then when I got released, I had to stay on lithium. Oh. oh. And so then I got some alcohol outside of prison. Isn't that an antipsychotic? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was not. <laughs> 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 yes, it is, Dom. <laughs> For just a little while. <laughs> Here's Colin talking about uh, director Oliver Stone. He is an incredibly strong man. He's highly... He arm wrestled me every day on set. <laughs> incredibly that, strong man. Intelligent. He is an absolute animal on the set. I mean, he's just a bull of a man. I mean that... Wow. Easy there. It sounds wow. a little gay, doesn't it? He's really full of himself. <laughs> what a bull the... of a man. Alexander's oh, gay. a gay movie. Is it? Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> Jude Law is in uh, Closer, which is opening today, getting two and three stars in the paper. Here he is on the intensity of the flick. It's not like there's ever a day where you can kind of take it easy um, or ease into a scene because most of the scenes are incredibly intense very quickly and, as I said before, only really between um, two of the four characters. So if you're, if you're working, you're working and you're on a, in a big scene, probably a lot of dialogue. Are there any American actors you got no, in here? I was just thinking that. that. Don't you think just the accent makes us think they're good? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it true. probably is. It commands respect, yes. Julia Roberts is also in this Then movie. how do you explain Benny Hill? <laughs> he was great. You know what? That is a funny show. They're rerunning those on the BBC yeah. channel. That was a funny show. Really? Julia Roberts on working with Clive Owen in Closer, A4. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Clive is... Clive is <laughs> the most wonderful man that ever lived on this planet or Mars or Uranus. What could she possibly say about it? Clive is great, and he's so much fun. I laugh more and harder on the set with Clive. Which Clive? He is so funny, Clive. Uh, who is Clive? Who, yeah, who is Clive Owen? He's so funny, he makes me laugh. Gets me to the wow. point of laughter. And God knows that's important to make her laugh. <laughs> Thank God for him. He made her laugh. Kind of surprises me. I don't know why. Maybe just because... He's English and seems like he would be somehow... No one's ever a self-absorbed a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> They're always wonderful. Right, right. That's why I like working on movies. Everyone's wonderful. They make you laugh hard. Their urine cures, his, cures cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Drea DiMatteo, of course, has made the transition from The Sopranos to Joey. Good move. Here she explains <laughs> why she chose to play a character so similar to Adriana, B1. Here's the deal. I swore I would never play Adriana again unless the writing was incredible. Then it would turn into the fact that it was now comedy, which I'd never expected. And then the best writers, again, in comedy. And it's funny because on The Sopranos, the two best writers were, well, not only, they weren't the best. But All right. I can't wait for her transition from Joey to bartending. <laughs> <laughs> Here she talks about the chemistry between her and Matt LeBlanc. I don't know, the thing with the chemistry, even with The Sopranos, I mean, I was hired for one line, and because of, how good of, because of how good our chemistry was, Michael, it turned into something else. People thought we were really a couple. Um, All right, who cares? I'd like to meet the people who thought they were really a couple. <laughs> <laughs> and the five people you meet in heaven will be on TV this weekend. That's a good book. That is the Mitch Album book that you told us about before, yes. I read it, it was kind of... 
They've uh, made it into a TV movie. Ellen Burstyn is uh, part of it. Here she discusses the message of the story. B3. I think the movie makes a very important statement about the country. Well, of course you would think that. You're in it. (laughs) Ask someone who's not in it. I think it's a meaning, meaningless movie and has nothing to do with anything. It was horrible, actually. I think the movie sucks. <laughs> the book was pretty good, but this thing, horrible. <laughs> oh, Phony. my goodness. I mean, come on. <laughs> it was a paycheck, honey. Air Mitch, the author, talks about writing the screenplay before. They had asked me if I wanted to write Tuesdays with Maury, uh, the script, and I felt that I had just written the book and had lived the story. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> that was a personal story for me. You know, I just wrote the book. I don't want to write it. Wah, they want me to write a screenplay of my book. Oh. Wah. I, I just didn't want to write it all over again. It was kind of a painful story to tell. But when it came to this one, um, and they said, well, do you want to write the film? I said, you know, I, I think I would because... These characters came out of my head. They didn't exist before, and it's almost so you don't want. All right, stop it, bragging. It needs to be written. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Yeah. And I should do it. And finally this morning, a 15-year-old girl is suing actor Nick Nolte, claiming he allowed her to be raped in his Malibu home. The suit was filed yesterday, and it says that Nicholas Woodring, who's also named in the suit, gave the girl the date rape, rape drug GHB and had sex with her on January, in January of 2003. Woodring has been convicted of the rape. That happened in March. The suit claims Nolte regularly threw parties which minor children were allowed to attend and supplied with drugs and alcohol. Somebody wow. raped me for crying out loud. Wow. That's a pretty serious charge. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Old Nick. <laughs> One more thing here. It is Ozzy Osbourne's birthday. He's 56 years old today. He looks great. Yeah, Yay! I think he got a facelift. <laughs> yeah, he's too perfect. And uh, here's a little bit of Crazy Train to commemorate Ozzy. D2. I'm going to play this. All right, there it is. You want to close the show with Jeff Carl doing a song? Sure. I, I, All right, I, why not? I, 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 where is Jeff? Yeah, let's bring in Jeff. I want to thank Dom Herrera. Thank you very much. It's Great fun. having you here at the Brokerage Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow night in Belmore. Dom's going to be at the Laugh Factory in Manhattan on New Year's Eve. And to purchase Dom's comedy album, Greatest Hits, Volume 1, go to domherrera.com. Oh, what is he, so drunk he can't walk? Yeah. Oh, Jeff can't oh now my song's going to be all messed up. We have to wheel him in in a chair, but we don't have a wheelchair, so we wheel him in in a, an office chair. An office chair. <laughs> You're so drunk you can't walk. They willed me in, dude. All right. Boy, you're gone. I'm looking at your eyes. They're just gone. I'm in a nicer place. I'm in happy land. He was out there telling us how his... What? Make it easy. He's fighting for... We'll hold the microphone for you. Hold this. <laughs> All right. You know what? What song are you doing? Oh, come on now. What song are you doing? Um, I'm asking you the name. It's, um... Called Touch. Oh, I love this song. Touch something. <laughs> it's called, you don't know the name of the song you're going to Snap your fingers. Snap your fingers. Okay. I get a hold. I get a hold. Right, hold. Okay. You're going to hold the mic? Yes. All right. Now he's going to put it in his lap. Now it's in your lap. <laughs> I got it. When I need it, I know where it is. What? Keep it near your mouth. I know where it goes. Are you ready? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's singing Steely Dan. No, Ronnie Mills. Snap your fingers. Oh, come on. Oh, dear. Back to you. (laughs) On bended (laughs) knees. Snap your fingers. 
You're singing about snapping Bob fingers. And I and you can't. No. <laughs> he can't snap his fingers. And he says he'll come running. Give me some kind of <laughs> You can't even stand up. This song is false Just advertising. <laughs> or go. This is weird. Let me love you like the father. What? That you used to know. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> to the Creepy. key and let me in. To the same back door. Oh, what are you singing? Uh, I gotta get out of here. Why am I here? <laughs> when I lost it, now I got a broken heart to me. Right now in Syracuse, Rhino's doing the weather. But I don't <laughs> the I've got to find my way back in. So you just snap your fingers. And I'll mess my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come right in. I'll do one thing. No, it's not that bad. To get back again. It's not that good. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Nice job. For a big drunk. Hello, <laughs> you old Yeah, dog. I didn't think he'd be able to do it at all. Hardy, sing it. Snap your fingers <laughs> and my blister will burst. <laughs> When I lost it, yeah. now I can't yeah. I'm too bad. I'm too I don't care what the cost is. I got to find my way back in. So you just snap your fingers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'll throw them. But I'll come running. I'll do anything. Get back Sexy. again. Uh, yeah, I'm fit. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Let me see you snap your fingers. Let me see you come running. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jeff the Drunk Caro. <laughs> Jeff, I have a gift for you for that smashing song. You've won a Samsung Napster MP3 unit with one year of service, courtesy of Napster. Thank you, Howard. Discover and download over a million tracks. I'm like this. all out of here. Let me see you download. <laughs> Bye-bye. They're dragging him out now. <laughs> Could you imagine someone getting so drunk they have to be wheeled around? Yeah, can you imagine that, already? That is terrible. Yeah, that would be terrible. What if that happened to you? No. That'd be really embarrassing if it was on TV. <laughs> if it was beamed through an entire casino. How embarrassing. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm on there to talk about how uh, a, a certain television station and a certain DJ here in New York stole a, 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 a television idea from me and got it on television. Oh. No, what's going on is that some lame radio show that can't develop their own sort of cast of characters is... Just taking ours as usual. It's just taking, you know, just trying to be a part of what we do. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, you know. But you think, you think I should do that or I shouldn't? Do whatever you want, man. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I just think it's lame. Oh, then I won't do it. All right. You know what I mean? No, you do I'm what you okay. want. I'm serious. I just it's think... It's that night. It's that night. It ain't, you know. No, I, I hear you. It's just lame. Hey, I King, I got to go, brother. Hey. All did right. You, did, did, um, did Gary get my email? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw it. Oh, is this the proposal for uh, Ask That Nigger? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I should read the proposal because it's not really well written. Really? There's a million typos. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I somebody else wrote it for me. Did you mis- read it? A million misspellings, which is funny. And uh, he really he doesn't really describe the show any more than he has here. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, see, I didn't, I didn't send it personally. I didn't send it personally. Hey, there's a lot t- of people. There's a lot of people that call me. And want to be like, you know what I mean? Jason, wanna, where's all my man. Jason? Where's all my printouts, my notes for today? You know the stuff that I left over from last week. It's all gone. King, are you telling me you have a demented staff who's putting together? No, all this it's stuff? not a staff. But people just say, they, they just say I could do it. You know, I'll send it out for you. I'll email it for you. You know, I, I don't do that type of stuff. So I just tell somebody to do it. And they, I, you know, told them a little bit about the show. And I didn't really read it after they did it. I guess that's what I got to do. I, I should let my wife do it. 
You Hold don't on. really want the show to putting it in the hands of just anybody. I, I, you know what I mean? Here I it is. Just... I propose P U R. I got it. Come on. I, I what? I propose P U R P O S E. Oh, purpose. I purpose. <laughs> I purpose. It's supposed to be propose, yeah. but it's I propose. <laughs> ask that nigga. Show. I purpose yeah. ask that nigga. Alive, L A L I V E, not a live. A, a live call in talk show dealing with topics such as relationships, drug abuse, what to wear and not to, T O O, etc. I found it like that part. I don't no, know. I didn't tell him that part. No topic is off limits on the Ask That Nigga show. The show will play music mixed wit, phone calls. Is it W I T? Yeah. No, it, no. The, yeah. <laughs> did, did, why don't you proofread this stuff? They, <laughs> it will be. No, because they get it over the phone. And I just tell them, you know, just tell them to the email it from me. I, I should have told my wife to do it. It will be funny as hell, reflection, my one of a kind point of view. <laughs> reflection? Reflection, one of. Reflection. Reflection. <laughs> reflection, my one of a kind point of view. No holding back. 30 to 60 men of pure oh. laughs. <laughs> As we all know, I've been on the Howard Stern show for many years. Wow. I feel... See, see, now that's the, that, see, I didn't want to go into what I've done and how why I should be there. I told them that. I said, don't go into Just tell them about the show. I feel I can connect with a young urban to be an older suburban audience and right. somebody else in between who wants to listen. Wow. In due time, D-O, in due time, <laughs> everyone will be talking about Ask That Nigga Show. Wait, Signed, wait. King of All Blacks. You know he wrote this, too. Of course he did. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't write that. I didn't who, wrote f- I who wrote it for you, a second grader? <laughs> no, uh, a nigga. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, oh, um, God. But, but I, I just told him over the phone. I didn't you even gotta... see him. I know that's why. He's a friend of mine. You know what I mean? He's like 18 years old. Man. You know he rewrote this. Oh. I didn't write it. I'm telling you. I don't send email. It's, 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 the, the, the person that wrote the email, that's his name. That's not my name. I in due time, in due time, how do you spell that? In due time? Yeah. How do you spell the do? D-U-E. Well, there I you go. Huh? Well, dude, you got some guy writing for you. He sounds ridiculous. Well, you know I know how to spell. I went to good schools, man. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, he didn't go to good school. I, All right, well, I got to take a break. What would you do with a professor right, give me like another, that? Give me, a, give me another word to spell. <laughs> yeah, how do you, uh, well, you uh, propose. <laughs> P-U-R-P-O-S-E. See? What? I told you he wrote this. P U R propose on oh, purpose. Okay, okay, I got you. P R O P O S E. He wrote this. I, I know did he did. Not. Oh my goodness. Well, how could I? How could I? Now, what should I do now? What should, could I really do? Want to? I want to have hours. I, I, you know, I got a, little, a couple of people that have listened to. All right, don't worry about. it. I told you I'm gonna have you on. Yeah, so I don't have to write anything. No, that, don't write me ever not again. Again. All right, I gotta go. I love you, man. Love you too. Bye bye. I told him when we get to the other place, I'm going to give him a half hour show yeah, a week. Yeah, but he was supposed. To, well, I'm glad he wrote a purpose. <laughs> yeah, good luck when you purpose to your girlfriend. Yeah, there won't be a spelling portion of that show, will it? All right, listen, we got to take a break. Tommy Chong is coming in today, just out of prison. Uh, Mark Harrison, his radio show. We're going to hear uh, five minutes of that. His daughter's coming with him. I think so. Who knows? And uh, that's that. Then I got, oh, I got to play stage announcements next, too. All right. All right, we'll be back right after these words. Howard Stern. I may not be on the ticket, but I'm qualified. Qualified. Okay, Jesse. Qualified. All right. Qualified. We get the picture. Hold on. Qualified. And now a man who's overqualified, Howard Stern. Tonight on E! Mets pitcher Chris Benson's hot wife, Anna Benson. The interview everybody's talking about. Yeah, evidently. She's outspoken, outgoing, and busting out of her top. Anna Benson tonight on E! I don't want you to miss that. Hot, wet, <laughs> bitches. Also, uh, I'll get to Claws Fest stage announcements, because that's always good to hear, but Tommy Chong is here. Tommy just did some major jail time for selling bongs over the Internet. Which yeah. Is Oh. Absolutely outrageous. I was screaming about it on the radio when it happened. Such I, a horrible crime. People weren't safe. I uh, just can't believe what happened to this guy, Tommy Chong. He's appearing in something called the Marijuana Logs tomorrow through December 19th at the Actors Playhouse in Manhattan. That's a great show. But there I've he is. Seen it. There's Tommy right there. Oh, look, look at, at you, him. man. 
Yeah, you didn't. At least you look good. Jill did you good. Jill did you some good. <laughs> but I've seen the marijuana logs. It's really funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The marijuana locks is good. Oh, I loved it. All right. Well, Tommy, no, no one better than Tommy to be in that. Yeah, I'll go to see it again now that you're in it. Oh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's uh, Tommy's like my boyhood hero, man. Cheech and Chong ruled Love my those life. Love movies, yeah. Thank you. Ruled my friggin' life, man. Those albums, the movies. You're the king in jail, man. I got Am I? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. They got you playing all the time on Is the, that the right? television. Yeah. Are they allowed to do that? Yeah. Really? That's weird, man. You're allowed uh, to have a radio in jail? No, radio and, uh, oh, yeah. And radio, TV. For sure. TV, television. Are you, were you in one of those, like, nice facilities? Yeah. Oh, you were. Dormitories and... Uh, did they have, like, a line instead of a fence, or was there a real fence? Yeah, a little chalk line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> were you... Were, were you <laughs> yeah, yeah, chalk line. Don't, yeah. don't walk over that. Because they'll put you in real jail. Oh, yeah. Shoot, yeah. And, 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 you know, you get boundary trained. Yeah. You know, so you stand there. You Like, you knock the, a softball over the line. You're standing there and <laughs> waiting for the guard to come and get it for you. How many months did you do in jail? I did nine. Nine months. Well, I did life. eight months and then uh, a month and a halfway house. Uh -huh. were, you, were you incredibly, like, bitter during that? Like, like nine? Not at all. You're not? Not at all. I had one bad half hour. What do you mean? At night. Uh when I, when I was taken to jail, um, you know, my wife took me, and that was that was very hard. She was right. crying and, mm. you know, clinging to me. It was like a movie. And then uh, they pried her away. They said, okay, we got to take him. Then they handcuffed me and, and brought me into through the, you know, formally. The right. guy apologized, too. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. Chong, but we're going to have to cuff you. And they put me in handcuffs, and then they walked me through a door. It was like a symbolic thing. Then they unlocked the handcuffs, oh. and then I was never cuffed again. And then they uh, put me in a... In so a why room. do they have to do that? Just to humiliate you in front of your wife? No, it was like procedure. Okay. Like, procedure. You were, like, like what were you going to do? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're there. But that's the, the whole thing is humiliation. Right. Once you're there. And then the next step was in a room, you know, and, and now I'm in jail. And then they said, okay, well, you might as well get used to this. This is what's going to happen. you got to strip. I strip. Mm. And were you embarrassed? Lift your balls, bend how over. Many, really? Though, were you embarrassed? No. But no. how many guys are standing there while you're doing this? Uh, just a couple. Just the, hey, the guard. Look, it's Tommy Chong's balls. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what it was. That's, that's, that's are, what it are was. you pretty well hung so that you're not embarrassed to be nude? Uh, unfortunately, it was cold. <laughs> I, see, for me, it's the ultimate humiliation because I just don't have anything. That's why you don't commit crimes? No. <laughs> I would go to jail with no problem if someone would just fluff me up. <laughs> oh, well, that's what you need. But, but you never get fluffed in, in there. You know. I was so outraged that you, Tommy yeah. Chong, did nothing wrong. Nothing. You, were so, you had a bong business. Well, my son did. It wasn't even mine. Right. It was my son's, and I had my picture on it, you know. But what they did, they were very, very sneaky about it. Because when they busted my house, you know, they came in, it was like a movie, you know. Right. And then they said, uh, they kept saying, you're not under arrest. You're hmm. not under arrest. Like Alice in Wonderland. It know? was a search. I you're guess. not under arrest. And I said, then what are you doing here? Or, well, we'll tell you in a minute. And then after they searched, they took computers out of my house, and they took, they found cash. And they when were they looking found, for stuff. And when they found the cash, it was like, aha. They, they said, aha, it's, we got the cash. <laughs> cash then, from what? Yeah, then they said, from uh, from my touring. You know, when right. I was touring and selling T-shirts and that. Oh right, right, right. Nothing to do with bongs at all, but they took it. They took it. It was about $20,000. And then they, uh, but they asked me the one question that I'm so glad that I could say no do you have any weapons? Right. If they had found a gun, I'd still be in jail. Wow. Really? E even if I have a, a e even, permit why? or whatever. Uh, a, a, a weapon. You're, in, you're allowed to have a weapon in your not, house. Not if you're, not if you're, you're uh, committing a crime, any kind of crime. Oh, I see. Any crime. So, so there, I was down with people that were doing like 20 years in jail because they had a gun, you know, growing pot you know, on a farm mm -hmm. do you and have think, a gun for hunting rabbits and he got 20 years up because... Uh, do you the think government. they basically went there saying, hey, the guy's selling bongs, we don't like it, we'll go and do a whole search and if we find anything, we'll bust them on it. Oh, definitely. That was it. Definitely. That's why they kept saying you're not under arrest. Yeah, that's what they said. Because if they said I was under arrest and I'd shut up, Right. <laughs> but, yeah. But they said you're not under arrest, and so I'm talking. You know, I'm telling them, "Oh yeah, this is. I'm going to put you in a movie." So you're laying in bed one day, and people just come charging into the house. Yeah. Do they knock on the door first? Banged on the door. And then you opened it up, and everyone came rushing in. They came rushing in. And Helm after, helmets. 
guns and Ugh. running from room to room. And they busted you for selling bongs. Eventually. I got that right, right? Eventually. Eventually, Eventually yeah. One, one count of uh, uh, shipping uh, bongs across the state line. Not drugs, bongs. No drugs. They found pot. Right. You know, of course. They, 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 that's what they <laughs> and, said. And it is Tommy Chung's house. How much pot did you have in your house? They said about a pound. Nice. But, uh, I guess. But it was like all over the house because I'm not a big smoker, you know. You're not? No, no, not at all. Not anymore? Not at all. I never was. Oh, I didn't know that. No, even before. No, I, I couldn't, you know. I mean, you, you can't really act and be stoned all the time. Right. You know? First yeah. of all, you're not going to get the job, you know. So what was a pound of pot doing there? Well, I grew some on the roof. <laughs> uh, medical. <laughs> Medical? Yeah, yeah, medical putt. <laughs> what were you growing that for? Were you going into the pharmaceutical business? <laughs> no, I just, uh, I have friends, you know, uh -huh. that, that uh, I, I, I was giving it away, mostly to artists. Uh -huh. I got a lot of artist friends, you know, because yeah. you know, I got into art, you know. So they didn't bust you for growing pot? Not at all. No, they didn't even have it on their search warrant. Wow. So so the whole thing was bongs. And were you, like I heard in court, you were just like making jokes and stuff because you figured, they're not going to send me to jail for making bongs. <laughs> Exactly, and exactly. then and then the judge taught you a lesson. The judge, well, what they did, well, they 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 had it planned, you know. They let me believe that I wasn't going to go to jail, uh. right? Because the most anybody got for the, the whole bus was like uh, house arrest, right? So I was getting ready for house arrest, man. You know, I had my pool, I had everything. Cool, right, you, you got know. a nice house. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, you're like, hey, this is real punishment. <laughs> yeah. I'll stay home yeah. in my yeah. pool. Yeah, and I had my VCR. I got everything. You know, well, my, but Tommy, you're a guitar. wealthy man, right? Well, I'm okay. I mean, I, your films uh, uh, made something like two hundred million dollars. I mean, the Cheech and Chong phenomenon made tons of money. I mean, yeah, we the, did good. The first film you ever made gross 48 million what people don't realize it costs two million to make it was the it's considered the most profitable film ever made mm -hmm. yeah but you guys didn't have a great deal with the movie company did you we did okay yeah we have, we came out okay you know we went to court a few did times. you have points and all that stuff or yeah in a few oh, yeah, good. Uh, uh still smoking you know yeah. we own that it was supposed to be a concert movie and we made a movie of it so. you guys just are multi-millionaires you uh, you and uh cheech well cheech has been divorced so oh that's so not... he's, he's broke <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we but did you, okay. But you held on to some money. Yeah, yeah. So th the idea that you would even have to sell bongs is probably more a goof than anything, although the business did gross about a million and a half dollars a year, right? No, no. We were down a half a million. Oh, you were losing money. Oh, we lost money. Oh, great. We lost money. It was <laughs> my son's business. He would only sell the best bongs. Uh -huh. So they're hand-blown glass. Right. You know, and, and we had... Uh, 40 hippies at one time working for us, and that cost us money. Right. So you never made a profit with the bond business. <laughs> yeah, you hire a hippie, you got to find a house for him. You got to find a place, <laughs> place for him and his dogs. I know one of the bogs. One yeah. of the bogs was advertised that it, it, it was more than even you could handle, but it was for like real pot aficionados that yep. this was a, a super bong in a yep. sense you had invented. Yeah. Um, a super bong. Yeah. You one, invented it? Well, I... He was yeah. in on it. I mean, <laughs> technically, no, but... <laughs> so, so the idea, uh, to me, if I had to spend one day in prison mm -hmm. for having a bong business yeah. would make me mad. I mean, I mean insane, because I know that I would have done nothing wrong. Yeah. A bong is a... Isn't it a legal piece of equipment, a bong? Well, in, in, yeah, well, you know, in L.A., they have hookup cafes right which is a bong so you don't necessarily have to smoke pot in that no so did you ever no. say to your lawyer are you a good lawyer i mean why am i going to jail well i did but here's the thing they threatened uh the feds threatened to bring down my wife wow and my son oh and so you took the hit i took the hit of course i had to and they then, figured they'd just make it... like everybody else in jail you were the guy who was serving time for somebody else well no actually <laughs> you know i got to take responsibility it was it was tommy chung you know yeah but it wasn't even your business no no so how did they how did they pin that on you if it's not your business uh, my face on the bong and that. they they actually even told me you know i had a good shot of beating it but my son never Oh, and so oh, he would have went to jail. Right. My wife signed some checks. She would have went to jail. So was this arrest and conviction to scare the rest of us from buying bongs? Yeah. Is that it? I think it's to keep people from smoking pot. You know. I see. Because you know, once you can't have a bong to smoke it, you're going to quit. <laughs> yeah. It's a good. It's a good strategy. Oh yeah. I mean, That's there's right. no way you're going. to... Well, you've noticed how the sales have dropped. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, who, who's the guy who wanted you? Was it Ashcroft? Is that what you've said? 
uh, I imagine it was him. Or and there is a lady in in uh, in Pittsburgh, uh, Mary Je- Beth uh, Buchanan, mm-hmm. and she she was on the task force that you know busted uh, busted me. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. I don't do any of that stuff. But I'm I'm for the legalization of every drug on the planet. I mean, I don't care. Yeah. I don't even. I mean, if someone wants to do drugs, fine. Just mm-hmm. don't get in your car and kill me. You know, that's the that's the one stipulation I would put on that. I, the whole thing just freaked me out. I got on the air. I'm screaming, how can we let Tommy go to jail? But I guess there was nothing we could do. I mean, nothing. And nobody no. really seemed to care that much. Nobody did. Nobody, nobody cared. I thought there would be at least, you know, some kind of protest. There was a protest in Sacramento. Like five guys got together <laughs> and, and made a sign and hung it on an overpass that yeah. nobody could see. <laughs> I mean, there were tons of famous people yeah. who have had pro- like like Rush Limbaugh yeah. was, was caught red-handed getting these pills yeah. I, I don't really personally he still, care he still hasn't gone to trial why that. why is he not going to trial you, you those are that that's illegal I, a bong isn't illegal no no i still but don't it, understand the conviction yeah, well that's what we said at the very beginning yeah. it was like he was selling bongs how is that illegal i, I don't understand it well, I, you, you, it's called paraphernalia right and if you got caught like like right now, if if I'm around anybody, you know, that offers me a, a paraphernalia, technically, I could get uh, violated and go back to jail. But what about wow. people who sell papers? Same thing. Wow. Really? There was a, a, a paper company called Chills. Right. And because they had wire in the paper, it was considered paraphernalia. And the, the way the, re- the law reads is that according to a government witness. Mm-hmm. Whatever they the deem could be used as uh, smoking uh. pot. Could you get laid in jail? I mean, you, can your wife visit you? <laughs> no. No. No, no. No, no. no. Yeah, it's, I, got a, I got a million jail stories for you, man. <laughs> oh. Uh, You've got such a good a attitude, guy, man. Uh, what's his it. name? Uh, uh, Jordan Belfort. Do you know Jordan? No. Jordan, remember the movie uh, uh, Boiler Room? Yeah. Yeah. The, the hot shot uh, yeah. stock guy? Right. Him. He was, I was, he was my cellmate. Oh, he was really? in jail? Yeah. What was he in jail for? For, uh, you know, financial things, you know. <laughs> he, he, had, he had to pay back. You know, you know when you, when you, they, they give you like a sum of money, you have to pay the government back. Right. His payback was higher than anybody's ever been. A hundred million. <gasps> Wow. And million. does he have it? Yeah. Oh, geez. Wow. Well, then he, he <laughs> hey, good roommate. Fine. It was like, uh, what do you want, MasterCard, uh, <laughs> Visa? You and, yeah, so. And so. Anyway, uh, he was, he's a little guy. He's from New York. He's a great guy. He's, he's a genius. Right. He's funny. He's a, he's a young guy, about 42. And uh, we had the best time. He had a good he's, time. He's writing a book, you know, and so I was, I, I'd help him write a book. And he's helped me. And you tell me, he told me the best stories, man. You know, I mean, you talk about it. Uh, it, was, it was an education, Howard. I couldn't, you couldn't buy an education like I got. So you had a good time. I had a wonderful How's time. the food? Food was horrible. 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 Can people get you food? I mean, can uh, people? Yeah. yeah. I worked in the garden, and then we, we grew our own food. And uh-huh. then, then then we had to get very, very healthy, mm-hmm. you know. So so I lost a ton of weight. I, I hey, rested. Good. It. I was great. Yeah. And then, then I hooked up with American Indians. They have a sweat lodge. Oh, really? Right in the prison? In the prison. In the prison, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That sounds like like a great place to go. Sounds like a spa. I guess I could do four months. I don't know if I could do nine. No, you could do it. I could? You could do it, like, no problem at all. Wow. No problem at all. The biggest problem, really, uh, was I had one bad, like I said, I had one bad half hour. Right. And that was uh, the first night I was in. Because you're in a dormitory. You know, there's like 250 men in there. And they feed them beans. (laughs) It was, it was like a symphony. Do you go to, do, when you go to the can, you can't go in your cell, right? Is there a toilet? Oh, no, there's a big, uh, long uh, rows of... Uh, urinals? Uh, urinals, but with doors on. Because where I was, it was Taft Prison, and it was uh, rig- built for a women's prison. Oh, so they give you doors. So they had doors on the on the, uh, the toilets and the showers. That's nice. But the showers, were, it was funny. Cause you so could, you don't have to be naked in front of other guys? No. 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 And, and, and the showers, just uh, the guards, when they search you... But the showers, you could take 40, 50 minute showers. Oh, that's nice. You could stay there. Yeah. You know. Is there, and there's a gym you can work out in? Uh, no. No they, gym. They, uh, no, no weights allowed. Right. 
no weights, but they had chinning bars. They had a a, a, a quarter mile uh, walking track. Yeah. Can you bring your instruments? Soccer. Can you jam and all? There was there was guitars. Yeah, I played I played a guitar. In there. <laughs> I had a little. Doesn't little, sound that bad. I had a little room. It was the entrance to the pool hall where they played pool. Wow. And I'd sit in there because of the echo, and I'd, I'd sing and play in there. Nice. Sounds Dominic. like camp. Well, two things. First of all, I represented Nadine Belfort, who's Jordan's ex-wife. And they uh, gave the government $60 million. So yeah. he didn't walk away with anything. But more important is that actually your lawyer did a good job for you. Under the guidelines that now exist, you could have got 12 years. Yeah. Wow. wow. That now exists? Yes. Well, that when you were sentenced. For, for, for paraphernalia? You well, the paraphernalia, years. then you have to start adding up all the other factors, which include profit, your position in the crime scheme, meaning... Were you a director of it? Were you a participant of it? And then you were absolutely right about your child and your wife. Yeah, they would have went to jail. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, in defense of your lawyer, I don't even know him, but these. Oh, well, you must be a only. lawyer. No, he, yeah, Dominic's yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Dominic. Yeah, so Dominic. I did Nadine Belfort, and she was had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. And But Jordan's case, I know very well, and yeah. he really has nothing left. He gave the government about $60 million. Wow. It must be oh, major cooperation. <laughs> well, whatever. All right. Hey, thanks, Dominic. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have said what I said about Jordan. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Jamie. <laughs> Poor Jordan. Hey, how's it going, Howard? Hey. Hey, Tommy. Uh, yeah. I'd like to thank you for, for what you did and, and, and standing up for what you believe in. Um, it's, it's really crap that Bush had to take FBI agents and, and take them from fighting terror and putting them from busing people for paraphernalia including a school teacher who, uh, who who just did it to supplement her income and, and, and got thrown in jail and lost everything. Let's go to James. James, you're on the air. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. Hey, Tommy. Um, I just think it's a real rip that uh, there's a, I live in Connecticut. There's about 10 head shops, you know, in this state that do the same thing Tommy does, you know. And on top of that, there's probably 200 websites that are still up and running doing the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the industry... Uh, you know, what happened? They they closed us down, mm -hmm. right? But then now they're shipping them in from China. You know, uh, it's yeah. yeah. You see, all the bonds are being made in China. Yeah. It, because so the American industry has been destroyed. Well, the, it's it's <laughs> exactly. underground. We're losing more work to China. <laughs> I mean, it is amazing. I, I mean, I don't even know that many people who would use bonds. I mean, I guess there's a huge market for it. I'm I'm naive. Well, the, the, we were selling them to collectors that, that, you know, they would smoke out of a, you know, a pipe, but right. they would put them on their shelves and, and their collector items. Imagine how creepy that is. Like, ladies, you go on a date and show up to some guy's place and he's got a bong collection. Like, <laughs> you know, I still haven't walked into that apartment. Who are these guys? I wonder if I'll get out of here alive. Hey, but, but, <laughs> Here's my bong collection. The, the, Next to my Pam Anderson posters. The, the marijuana logs, you know, it's funny. Yeah. Hey, so what are you doing? Had to, You're well, doing a play. Get, well, I had to get a job, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I couldn't work, you know, uh, my nightclub act. You know, right. What do you mean you have to get a job? Is well, that you, part of you being dis dis yeah. dismissed? Yeah. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't work. And so, uh, so I, uh, I worked at a gym for a while, and then, and now th this job come up, you know, the marijuana logs. It's perfect yes, because absolutely perfect I'm acting. For you. Yes. I'm acting. So the marijuana logs are, acting. are Actors Playhouse in Manhattan. Yeah. And uh, you're there tomorrow through December 19th. Yeah. For more information, well, you can uh, order tickets at potshow.com. Yeah. And I'm going to go on tour in February. With, you with can tour. Show. Your probation officer has said that. I, I need the permission everywhere I go. I need permission. Wow. And I got to stay away from, you know, bad guys. Yeah. You know, you were devastated when Cheech and Chong broke up. I was. You were? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, wh I mean, wh wh what the hell was that all about? I mean, like, Cheech is now doing, like, kids. No, we're back. Oh, you are back? We're back. Oh, this you brought are. you back together? We're back. Yeah, we're back. We're, are you going to make a movie? Yeah, we're working on it. We're working on a movie. We were. We had uh, Larry Charles. He was going to direct it, but then uh, he he got tied up with Entourage, you right. know, the show. Mm -hmm. And so then Cheech and I, we we just, you know, just him and I, we got together. And are you doing shows together? Not yet, not yet. But I and I doubt if we will. Well, actually, my wife and I are still doing our, our stand up act. Yeah, but you were pissed at Cheech. I mean, I you, was really well. Yeah, actually, you didn't understand it. You guys were at the height. You were <laughs> you were making hundreds of millions of dollars. Why give that up? Well, you know, he wanted to hang with Geraldo Rivera. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, we're back, and we're we're so back, and and we hung, hang together. He cooks for me. Uh, we write. Uh, we're writing this great, great movie. You're gonna love really? it. Really. 
so funny. The That's one thing good, you can say, he did step up to the plate when mm-hmm. all of this he came did. down. He, he did. did. He did? Yeah. Did he oh, visit yeah. you in jail? Oh, yeah. He did? Yeah, yeah. They they refused him at first. You know, Why? Because, it was a bad influence? Well, you know, they were they, they, they make you jump through hoops. You know, you have to have, wear the right clothing. You have to send in your ID, picture ID, and all that. Right. I, he never sent his picture ID in. <laughs> but when, when they got it, then then they, they changed the rule. You know, for a while there... <laughs> I, I was taking pictures with everybody, you know. I was like the... the he was a celeb. Celeb. Right, right. And then they stopped me from taking pictures in the, in the visiting room with people. And then when Cheech came, you know, then they then they really stopped it. Because, uh, uh, how often did Cheech visit you in jail? Just one time. One time? Yeah. We were uh, a long way from L.A., so it wasn't... Had you guys not been speaking up until the bust? No. Actually, we hadn't. No, you hadn't, right? No. It was over. Like, you were pissed. Yeah. Cheech yeah. broke up the act. Yeah. You go to jail. Cheech then sees, hey, wait a second, maybe I could, yeah. maybe I could now finally talk to this guy. Well, he said <laughs> things. He yeah. came out and said things even before yeah. while the trial was going on. He and did. Everything. He said stuff in public about how ridiculous it was. He yeah. did. He did. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing was a goof, man. I mean, I, I, you know, but there's nine months of your life. You know, it's just insane. But it was well spent, Howard. Yeah, really. Yeah. And I learned some. The thing is, they tell you, you know, you're you're only allowed to bring in a, a, a religious book, you know. Right. Uh, when you go in there. Is that right? Yeah. That's this, all you're allowed? That's all you're allowed in, a, in your wedding ring, and that's it. So I, I, I brought my religious book in there, and I got into it. What would you bring in? I, it was a, a book by Joel Goldsmith. It's uh, mi- The Mystic Way, and I brought that in. It's an incredible book. You read that book for the whole nine months? That's like me. It takes me nine months you to get through a book. You only have one book? <laughs> one religious <laughs> book. One religious book. Wow. To, to bring in. Uh-huh. And then when you're there, you, you know, have a library you got, or something. You, you you got everything. Yeah, I started reading the Bible. Yeah, I yeah. did, I, and yeah. I'm not even in prison. That's great. Yeah, That's I started great. reading it. It was kind I, of I, I love it. It's good bubble mind stuff. If if you look at it from a stoner's point of view, man, yeah, it's funny. Everybody's stoned in it. <laughs> right in the first page, they say, you know, God is known as the Most High. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear that you and Cheech patch things up. Yeah. yeah. Glad yeah. to hear prison didn't make it bitter. On behalf of everyone who listens to this show, I know we got tons of mail. Everyone upset about Tommy going to prison. It was total BS, I thought. I, I don't understand people going to jail for drugs, let alone for bombs. Yeah, the yeah. things you might smoke drugs with. You know, I don't yeah. care. But, uh, but what can I tell you, man? It's a, it's a nutty world we're living in. Right now. But Tommy's out, and if you want to go see him, go celebrate the marijuana logs. Tomorrow through uh, December 19th at the Actors Playhouse in Manhattan, go see Tommy. And for more information or to order tickets, go to potshow.com. You saw the show, huh? Yeah, it's great. It's marijuana really logs. really funny. What's the people t- uh, talking about pot? You know what the vagina monologues are, I right? saw that. Right. Well, it's a three guys who sit on stage and tell their stories of what their lives are like. She's not coming here. <laughs> so what? It turns out she's only 17. She's not yeah. 18. But, um, okay, which what one... Gar- you- He's the one who sent us the garbage. Which one of you idiots said um, that she should put a gun in her mouth? That's what upset him. And he says he's not going to let her be part of that garbage. Oh, oh so he left her home after hearing well, that. No, no, she's, I think she's downstairs in the car. I said, no, oh, like they were just he's being silly. No one said put a gun in her mouth. I don't remember I saying don't that. Say, I, I said, who said that? He goes, one of those jerks. But I couldn't remember who uh, said it. Uh, I said if I were her, I couldn't stop doing heroin. <laughs> yeah, that might be what he's referring to. <laughs> I, 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 I know I said I'd kill myself if uh, that was my father. But I don't mean like she should go kill herself. I mean that I'd kill myself. I'm just right, she seems to be doing fine. Yeah, well, yeah, that's just you. Why if Mark Harris was my father, I'd kill myself. I'll right. still say it. <laughs> I would. It's not reflection. I would be hard, but she's, but she doesn't feel that way. I feel that way. Put down the razor blades, darling. So, what can I say to Mark to make him bring his daughter up? He, he, it's Mark's ten minutes or five minutes, we think, with his show. I mean, um, he can do whatever he wants. Does he want to blow this audition? Maybe he wants to get on and scream about that he would never bring his daughter on his radio show. But how do you do life with father without a daughter? I don't know. You want to ask him? Yeah. All right. Let him. Let him uh, real quick. But because I don't want to blow his thing, I want him to do it when he comes in. This is not his time yet. He loves Van Ass and Buttermilk Bass, the Mark Harris Radio Show. Always a controversy. Whoa. I think he gets jitters. He banged Martha Ray, and he is gay. The Mark Harris Radio Show. This is what happens to you. I think you get jittery. And then you get nervous and you start blowing your own chance. You talking about me? Yes. I'm not jittery. I'm not nervous. So but I am Rebecca's father. She's 17 years old. Yeah. So and the garbage that you and your show spew. How is it garbage? 
Well, he himself says heroin and uh, taking a shotgun oh, to your mouth. Oh, get it. He didn't thing, say shotgun yes, to your mouth. The only thing one could do as a father is keep your child happy, guide them through life, and safe. You and did put, that? Absolutely. I don't believe it. Do you do that? Of course. So, then what are you uh, knocking around with all this? The days of the shock jock is just through. Don't oh, really? So, yes. That's why I you, don't know. I, I seem to be doing pretty well. Well, what will you do on Sirius when you use the F word? I the will use it. The shock is gone. No one cares. No, we, we just, that's it. Listen, Mark, the yes. day that you have any comprehension of how to do radio the way I do, yeah. you will be called oh, a I'm genius. Not, I'm not arguing with you. Trust me, A, I'm not a shock no. jock. Okay. Number one, we talk about, I would say 99% of this show, there's nothing shocking. If honesty is shocking, then that's shocking to you. No, Secondly, with success, I'm not arguing. And with my success, when I go to satellite radio, yes. if someone calls in with foul language or if I want to pepper my language with foul language, it's like telling Chris Rock, why would you use the F word in your act? Once you use it, it's over. That's absurd. Chris Rock uses it very effectively. You so, don't, maybe you don't curse, but I do. Oh, okay, so cursing. I've had a clam up here for the, first of all, the stuff I did five years ago I can't do here anymore, let alone the stuff I did a year ago. So you feel going to satellite, which I wish you luck. Thank you. Uh, you feel that uh, cursing will be part of your venue. And Absolutely. Okay, and it doesn't take away from your lack of shocking. Now that there's nothing shocking anymore. Mark, when you watch The Sopranos... It's not about you, shocking. What it's in about, the world is this yeah, conversation you, all about? It's, about, about, Where is it's she? about being interesting. Where is your drape over her face? She doesn't want you to see her. Oh, okay. Well, Mark, when you watch The Sopranos, does that language take away from the show? I don't say it takes away from the show. But that's what you're saying. You're saying once Howard uses it, it takes away from the show. I don't. I think it adds to the show. No, I think uh, the way you've uh, done your Mark, show. Mark, Mark, listen to me. Yeah. Stop Who knows thinking. more? About, you're thinking too much. Who knows more <laughs> about radio too than much. me? That's it. Trust me, it takes away nothing from the show. It's going to be fifty thousand times funnier. And that's a promise. I wish you luck, and you can believe Oh, that. I don't need I don't, your luck. You don't? I guarantee you it's going to be huge. <laughs> and like, take your luck back. Take you your luck back. It. I don't Where want it. You need I mean, it more than we do. I don't want your luck. I don't think Mark <laughs> believes... The kind of luck you have, I don't yeah. need. No, well, okay, but I'm a happy person. <laughs> I don't believe in luck. I you believe don't? in being the best you can be. Yes. And believe me, that's what I do. Well, then I guess... And I'm I the... am reborn. Yeah. I am rejuvenated. Okay. I am, like, on fire like I've never been before. I see it all clearly. So watch out. I've seen the future. You've seen the future. Oh, I know the future. The future in this country is changing quickly. Forget the country. No, don't forget I the I see country. my future. Well, if I don't see the country's future. I see you my should future. See the country's future. I don't think and you see. Comes I don't have to airways. see the. I don't have to see the country's future to know that we're doomed. What? We're Do not you really doomed. think you're, you're doomed? doomed? We are not doomed. Absolutely not. The country that we live in and the war we fight, we should stand united. Well, well, of course, we what is that, but that's not what we're talking what about. We're well, talking, talking about no, censorship. Said, no, the country is doomed. Did you say? Uh, I'm talking about my career, censorship, the media. I'm talking right. about the future. If I didn't make this move, the future would be would be would be dying on the vine. Well, this country. But talking is not about dying. you want to talk about the war in Iraq? I didn't. That's want a different to, topic. But you should support and save that. Uh, you I should support. Let, let me tell you something, pal. Yeah. You don't know anything about war. And you don't you know do. anything. And you do. You're the one who's bringing up the war. You don't know anything about the war. No, you said on radio I'm a Bush supporter. I think everybody should support. Who said our they're president. a Bush supporter? I said you Mark. Said. I said Mark supports the president. I support the president too. That's a good thing. But I didn't vote for him. That's your prerogative. You're an American. But what am I going to do? Of course I support the president. That's a silly statement. Everyone okay, should support the president. What does that mean? Blindly go along with everything the president says? If that's what you're Let implying. Let me say this. No. You don't know anything about war. I don't know anything about war. But he does. Why? He doesn't he know? know anything more than you do. What do you mean he does? You think he knows? That you... they call for jihad, a religious war. Do you want it at our shores right, listen, listen, to me, listen to me. Listen to me. Save this for your radio show at 830 or thereabouts. I'm going to bring you in. You're going to have, I have you a see therapist. your set? Look, yes, that's thank your you. set. Yes. Do your radio show. Okay. You say you could take over this show when I leave? Fine. I'm I all for it. that. Okay. And it is safe to bring your daughter in. Uh, we wouldn't say anything. We're not going to say anything bad about your daughter. We, we don't, we don't uh, do that. Yeah, no one mentioned but, a shotgun, uh, Mark. What yeah, are we yeah. talking about? Well, well, whatever. Okay. That's your prerogative. If you want to bring your daughter in, fine. When you bring your daughter in, Mark, you can bring her in and you do it on the radio I don't show. care. It's his radio yeah, show. Yeah, true. Okay. If he wants to bring his daughter in, bring, you don't want to. It's your audition. Five minutes. Right. Get on there. Okay. Do your thing. Okay. Right now you're mixing it up. You're being very outrageous. Okay. You're being controversial. No, I'm not controversial. Uh, 
Not on this matter. You can talk about that on your show. Okay. Not on my show. Your show. Right. Gotcha. All right. If you want these jingles, you can use these jingles. It's up to you. Oh, the jingles are just He's the homo on the radio. <laughs> the Mark Harris Radio Show. Do you want to hey, use those? Hey, no, I really that. don't uh, particularly care. <laughs> Do you have but jingles? Viacom is making a logo channel that you know of, which yes. is wise. There is a gay community in this country, by and large, and they deserve equality. But well, who says no? Okay. So then if it's a homo You're not going to be on the Logo channel. Well, you don't know that. Oh, I do know. Ask Mr. Preston and find out. How why you did you know? tell Why did you tell Larry King's uh, replacement there, why did you say on the Larry King show that you're having a meeting with Viacom First about Logo? Meeting, you're meeting with Vinny. No, no, that that's not true. <clears throat> no, my agent has spoken to the powers to be there, and they're listening to this crap right now. You have an agent? Yeah. No, you don't. Yes, they do. Who's your agent? Mark Lickman, Shapiro Lickman, in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Mark Lickman. Okay. Lickman. Yeah, and, and what agency is he with? Interior Shapiro decorating. Lickman. Shapiro, Lickman. Shapiro Lickman. They've been around a uh, pretty long time. Lickman. Who yeah. else no, do they no, represent? No, no, no. I don't know all their Of uh, course, list. Lickman. Where are you, Robin? Why are you hiding behind a drape? Shapiro Blowman. Well, yes. what happened to Robin? Did she blow up 100 pounds? Why isn't she showing her face? Well, she looks better than ever. And it's a curtain, Marianne not from a drape. Brooklyn, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Howard. How are you? Uh, hi, Bob. I usually bash you. I never liked you, but I saw you on Larry King that night, and I don't think anybody was taking care of Martha Ray really the way you did. They showed all the tapes of you, you know, fixing her hair and bringing her to parties and stuff. And I think well, there was a money. There was money involved. Some people feel Mark uh, did it for the money. I did too, Harold. At the beginning, I thought it was for the money, but actually now I don't. She had seven husbands and an unusual life, so I think he fit right in. I still think it was for the money. Oh, thank you. I still think it was for Thanks, the money. Both of you. Uh, You're entitled to have an opinion just like you voted for Mr. Heinz Kerry. Ma Mark Mark uh, is a gay man. Excuse me, Marianne. You Mark, wouldn't understand what bisexuality is. Mark is a bisexual <laughs> man who I feel is more homo than hetero, and I believe it's that there's no way he was in love with Martha Ray. Really? Let's ask the question. Yes. I mean, how would I'm he... I'm being honest. I don't I, believe I, you were in love with her. I believe that you... I absolutely adored her. I, as a friend, I don't think you were sexually attracted to her. I don't. I didn't see the old woman that you keep talking about. She was Martha Ray, every inch the star. I wasn't talking... No, well, that's just it. I'm sorry, not you. Saw you. Her, I'm you talking saw about her, Howard. You saw her as a star. As Martha Ray, the one I grew up with when but, I watched television. And yes. you're in love with, like a lot of homosexual men, you're in love with an era gone by, and you like stardom, and you yes, like the, the old Hollywood. King. So yes. you got to be part of old Hollywood for a while with Martha Ray, that's and then not why I and the bonus her. at the end was money. But that's not why I married her. You, uh, would you have married any old bag? No, she was no. a rich old woman. She she said to me, "We have to uh, get rid of the conservatives," but she meant conservators. And her daughter was suing her before. No, so I, just, I only came listen, to her help. This is my feeling. Well, I believe you. You don't feeling. have to answer to me. I am answering because you don't you're have questioning. to. But you're wrong. That's Let my feeling. Let me ask one okay. other question. I want to know just how bi he is. Right. What would you say the split is? I'm going to tell 80, you the split. 20? No, 99, 1%. <laughs> well, how I'm going to say it's 100, 0. How many yeah. women have you slept with in I the last five years? Only two last year. If, I mean, I'm supposed so, to answer this. No, in the last five years, but, slept with, but this is a, a You slept stupid, with two women last this year? This is a stupid argument. Well, no, no. Mark, how many guys? Mark, crazy. swear yes. on the life of your children. One man last year. One man and two women? Yeah, one man for the past four years. And that's over. Maybe we should go by... Why is that over? It just couldn't continue as far as I was concerned. You're no longer in love with him? I never was in love. Oh. Okay. Good companionship, going places, you know. How many life. times did you do Martha, your wife? I Be honest. Have, I, I can't because we were married three and a half years. I didn't keep a scorecard. You did her once. No. It doesn't consummate. matter. It doesn't matter. We you had, did her more than once? We, yes. You're and saying we, you had... Sexual you intercourse with a stroke victim. It's not a question of sexual oh, intercourse. How yes, about it intimacy? Is. Okay, intimacy. I rose to the occasion. Is that what you're asking me? No. That's I it. I'm asking you sexual intercourse. I didn't How many jot times? them down. I, the times, the I'm going to tell you, once. Well, you're going to tell so me. So you could legally you consummate. There. Yes. No, in California, you do not have to legally consummate All right, marriage. that's zero times. Okay, okay. Uh, I didn't know that. That's fine. <laughs> zero. What? I asked my lawyer Lickman. He told me. Only no, one time. Gloria Mark. already that's called his, me. That's his agent. <laughs> I oh do not gosh, believe go. you ever made love to Martha Ray. I don't. I don't believe you're totally straight in your mind. Well, I'll tell you what. I am. Pity. Why? I don't want to be with a dude. 
Because well, I, I don't you. know that a dude would want to be with you. I'm not advocating a lot that of dudes. I know you want to. Act. I know you want to be with me. No. Oh, that's I'll a lie. You? Yeah. No. You would. You would. Why do you you'd think be down on your be... knees in three minutes? You're crazy. No, you'd be down on your knees in two. No. Do I hear one? Are you crazy? What is going on between the two? I don't understand this animosity. What's going on? You want to see my face? No, not your face. I'm trying. No. Well, didn't I tell you you'd go down first? Where is Robin? No, I will not. I'm behind the curtain. I know, but can somebody move the curtain? No. That's the gay Ray Charles. Look at my glasses. All right, look. Gay Charles. You're taking up a lot of valuable time. You should be preparing for your show. I'm going to go in the green room. All right. Thank you. And I hope. Uh, what are you going? What are the topics on your show? Well, given Mark, his, he claims he could take over this show. I said, I think it'll be a hoot. You really want to get up at this time of the morning? You don't really. Oh, want to he jump. would in a minute. I could get up at any time. <laughs> Not for Martha. <laughs> Show me the. Yes, backboard. even so. Can't believe he's going around saying he was in love with her. But uh, I always loved her. Well, and anyway. I remember her with love. <laughs> you weren't in love. It he loves depends. It. Were you in love? What do you call love? Million and a half dollars. <laughs> oh, what you got? Us. No, not true. Three million. My home is worth three million. So you I got, built it. So you got six million. Well, land value went up. No, I didn't get six but million. But what'd you build? What'd you build it with? What, where'd the money come from? She left me the lot. The right. house uh, fell in the earth. But you had to pay money to build the house. Of course. Where'd you get that from? From the from, settlement. From the settlement. Oh, okay. The, uh, Ask Lickman. The taxes. You got a ton you want, of dough. You, you guys want to pay my mortgage? Ugh. What was your favorite sexual position with Martha Ray? <laughs> Irrelevant. Facing the jewelry. Irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> the one where she's in the bedroom and he's out by the who pool. Are the, who are the two women <laughs> you made come here? Can you produce on your radio show yeah, the no. two women you made love to? No, they wouldn't come to talk to you. Of course not. They're embarrassed. <laughs> uh, yes, to talk to they're you. They're back Absolutely. in the clinic. No, they're embarrassed fact, to say they, they had, had made strokes. love to you. Many people want to know why I did so many of your shows. Go ahead. And what and do you I, say? I said you're a likable guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, who else is going to give you a, a shot? Of fun. As far as I Man can tell, Cow. Man Cow gave me a lot of shows. As a matter of fact, he asked. Where, so where is he now for you? He's in Chicago. No, he called the day I was leaving. Yeah, why do you think he, he gave said, you a show? Just a minute. He why said, do you think he gave you a show? I'll tell you why. Why? Because I have you on. They're all imitators. And let me tell you something. Yes. You're Go delusional. Ahead. I'm delusional. If you think any of these guys would have you on, if I didn't. Well. You may have started it, but oh, I am considered good radio. I, see, I, I am see, good radio. I, see, I don't leave dead air. I see. Yes. And that's why you pass gas. I see. To fill the air. I see. Everyone okay. was looking for you. How pathetic. No, no, not everybody was looking and for you. And let me tell me. you something. I'll give you your five minutes here. Yeah. You can do it. Okay. But I bet you'll be horrible. As you wish. All right. Okay. Now's your chance to, when you're it, with you me, when interrupt. you're on the air with me, I will not okay, interrupt. Okay, that's fine. When you're on the air with me, mm -hmm. it's magic. Yes. Soon as I, I take, agree with you. As soon as I take myself out of the equation, who knows what okay. we're going to get here? It's going to be a train wreck. Do you think I didn't have? Do you, do you think I didn't have other magical moments with Mancow? I don't know what you had with Mancow. Uh -huh. I, 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 God knows what the two of you do together. No, no. Nothing I mean, like if, that, if that's your if, 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 if that's your thing. No, 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 no. That's he, great. I wanted to say he sent you regards because he told me to tell you that. Yeah. Well, yeah. well I'm telling you. Let okay. me ask a question. Yes. Is, is, can, can I see your face? Has Mark is Mark done with this show? Basically, is that yeah, what I'm, he's saying? I'm that I, I, I don't think. No, I'll bring on Dr. Gilda. She's a fabulous therapist. No, but after, has a lot of books out. After today, will you come great, back on the show? If you wish. Because you seem sort of hostile. Oh, so do you? No, I'm not. We're not hostile. Oh well, I'm not hostile. You seem no, hostile to I, me. I, here's no. what I get out of this. You don't really respect Howard. You think oh, he's no, over. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I do You just said he was Howard. over when you I walked in. I said the days of shock jock is over. Well, yes. I'm not a shock jock. Right. Uh, well, then how would you describe yourself? I describe myself as a radio phenomenon, Wait. a guy who reinvented this industry. Yes, And the I, reason I, I might be shocking to you someone like you. You created it. I created it, yes. is right. And the reason it might be shocking. You're shock the original. I give you that. And if, and if it's shocking, it's only because of my honesty. Hey, could, you couldn't shock Mark. There is no way he has ever been shocked by watching this show. Yeah, trust me. Not unless you used ice cold water. Right. Whatever you're up to is way more <laughs> shocking than whatever I could say on the radio. Really? In my worst day. I see. What's okay. more shocking than that scarf? <laughs> Why don't you come over here so I can put it around your throat? Oh, stop it. Are you into that, really? <laughs> yes, only with you, Artie. Auto you mean, only with you. You mean the strategically placed scarf? Yeah, it looks yeah. wonderful. I like to tie yeah. knots in it. You I dress, like to tie you're dressed knot. per Very slow. Yours isn't long enough to knot. You're dressed perfectly for radio. <laughs> I think so, Vinny, too. go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, Mark, listen, man. Yes. Where's Rebecca right now? It's Vinny. 
She's in the limo. They probably took her to breakfast. Let her and come she's up. Mark, no, Mark, listen. No, no, no. This is not what we discussed. Vinny, relax, Vinny. No, she's not. Mark. Vinny, you parent your way and I'll parent mine. Was she disappointed that she couldn't come up here? As she was looking at me, I said, Rebecca, there you will sit. You will not go up to that. You know why? She's I better, sensationalize she's better on the radio than him. I will not. Mark, she can't come to the microphone. She probably is. She's better than you on the radio. She's I heard great, the tape. She's I will not be upstage. Girl. She's great. Mark, she's the whole show. I believe Kelly that. Osborne. Who's I believe Who's going to scream? I don't care. That's He's got his five minutes. If he wants to blow his not audition, blow Mark, blow this is not what we discussed. Vinny, never mind what we discussed. We dis Mark, this is your pilot. The show's called Life with Father. Hey, There's Vinny. no kid in the mix. Hey, Vinny, I've lived thus far without you. Shut up. Thus wow. Far. Mark, what are you turning on me for? Because you've said enough. You're not going to dictate what I'm going to do as a Mark, parent. I brought Did you, you to this point. I got you the shot. I put Good. myself out there for Relax. you. Relax. What? Your daughter is not coming on. You want to bring your son? Bring him on. Mark, your daughter was terrific. Thank you very much. I think so, too. So why don't you put her on the show? Because I am her father, and I do know what's best. Pardon We're not going to disrespect Mark, 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 we're not you... coming into this arena Are today. you virgin? <laughs> Are you virgin? <laughs> yes, I'm proud to say. Panties. He got freaked uh, out when My we daughters about... and I talk, okay? <laughs> Mark, yeah, when yeah, she's in there, Howard won't be talking. Vinny, the only person she has to fear Vinny. is you. Give it up, Vinny, because you could talk till you're deaf, dumb, and blind. No. Mark, why are you turning on me? I can't believe you're being this way. Because you got too much airtime. Shut him off. What? Are you going to be taking phone calls during your show? If you allow it. I yes. will, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So let me bring the therapist uh, with me. I have a great joke, man. A real joke, man. He's got a writer. Well, okay, a joke writer. writer. Dead What's writer. his name? Denny Donahue. He wrote for Cesar Romero. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're funny. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, Mark, why don't you go back and relax? Okay. Calm your nerves down. Yeah, yeah he's frazzled. Uh, Mark, call me. Okay. Well, we backed him into a gay corner, I think. <laughs> yeah, and you bend over. <laughs> oh, stop it. Well, you're in the corner now. Vinny, you can eat more than ravioli. <laughs> this is shocking. I'm stunned. I can't believe this. I take his phone calls every time he calls. I can't believe he's turning and on And vice versa. Mark, I think you should talk to my therapist. Mark, there's yes. no need to attack my weight. Let's just be well, I can't let's, see let's your weight. everybody. Why don't you stand up and show That's it off? That's out of line. The, no, what's out of line? All right, here's the shocking A bio news. on Lou Costello you could do. Mark Harris will be doing his own show for five minutes uninterrupted here. It's an audition. It's called Life with Father without his daughter. Right. Well. And the focus will be gay parenting. Oh, no. No, oh, no. that's not what we talked about. Right, that is in. what we spoke about, but my daughter needn't be here right now. Mark, you're, you're, you're We will dead. take the callers. Sounds like Mark's going to blow it again. Mark, Mark, this is the shot. Well, if you just relax and get off the phone, the shock won't... Why don't we have your mother on? She could do a show about how to raise a gay child. My mother is deceased. Oh, nuts. Dig her up and bring her in. Oh, very Mark. shocking, very surprising, very original. Thank you. Yes. All right. We'll but see how you do. I, you prove the point. Those we'll days see are how over. you do. Yes. But the day of being original is over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the days of being annoying are not. So All right, you may Vinny. Have a life. All right. Well, listen. I'll be listening, but I'm Fly stuck, Mark. Okay. I can't believe that you're way. turning on me. Yeah. He's angry. Today. Mark, what's the matter with you? Don't take his Nothing calls anymore. Wrong with me. I'm Vinny, on my period. Vinny, d d tell tell Mark you're not taking his calls anymore. You know, Mark, you might as well lose the number. No problem. Vinny. Every time I would drop what Vinny, I was doing to take your call. Except your draws. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Mark, is this an act? Is this part of your shock? No, gay I think jock? your phone call is. Shock gay jock. No, he's a, he's no. a shock gay yeah, jock. Shock, gay jock. <laughs> he's a no. gay shock jock. No, no, no. Mark, seriously, what's going on? There's nothing going on well, you, except why are you angry phone with me and everybody in the studio? Because you don't hang up. What? Because you don't hang up. What does that mean? I told you I will not bring my daughter into this arena. What are, Mark, the whole point of you being there, you pitched me a show called Life with Father. Yes, and you called me and said Howard thought it would be wonderful. It's, and you had a and pilot I, tape that had you and your daughter that was wonderful. And you know wonderful. what, Vinny? It already played. We listened to it in the car. Right. I don't, and I don't have to get off that. So my daughter is fine. I'm her father. I'm in control. She was She's not upset, by the tape? but you are. Yes, she, she was, wasn't offended. Mark's she was offended. offended Mark's by a lot offended. Of Mark's things. offended. Mark, come on. She is not 18 years old. I tell you, you say she well, was. You're going to put her on a radio show anyway. Yes, your radio show. And, yes, and it, it will be a little. So she was 18. There will her be in? a little decorum. Yeah. What? Okay. Mark, so you're not I'm, making any sense. He right? doesn't want to do it. It's I his want, show. It's, he can do whatever he wants. So who will be on the show? What do you care? Wait, Gilda. Denny, Donahue, and matter of fact, I also uh, fixed my daughter up on a date, and he's here. But I the date is here. The, the date, date is, is here. here. His right, father well, and I wait, graduated you, high school. Wait, your daughter's not all, but her boyfriend is? 
Yeah, that's how it worked out. Maybe Mark wants to be alone with the boyfriend. Not at all. His father and I uh, graduated high school. But don't you feel your daughter deserves to be up here for this big shot? I don't care what he does. I it's five her minutes. From the if likes he of hearing you. If what? he wants, if he wants to ruin his audition, yes. let him. Really? Yes. Hey, really Mark, can I deal. talk to your daughter? No, absolutely not. Can I talk to you off the can air? Michael Jackson, talk to your son. No, you can't talk. To Wait my a second. Well, how is Vince Where is Michael from? Jackson? Because he doesn't take no for an answer. Right now, I would protect my daughter from all of you. <laughs> including Benny. You're How do we get you behind the drape? How do we get protected from you? <laughs> Mark, you get a mirror? All right. Uh, you, you, is this the way you handle life? Why don't you life bring in my daughter? entourage? Wait a minute. Uh, Mark, is this wait. the way you handle life with your daughter? She has a strict curfew. Is Dude, that what you're wait talking a, about? No, no, no. You try to protect her from everything in life instead of protect. learning how to, to deal with things in life? No, she deals with the limo. Lot. She deals with a lot. All right. Yes, she, she does. You're cares? absolutely right. Does who she cares if he brings his daughter in? I want to hear the show. The He's show. acting as if we're dangerous. Does she live with you? Of course. Oh, full time? Yes. She does? Oh, oh my, yes. How did yes. that happen? That's so irresponsible. Really? Why? <laughs> Tell me why is it well, Because, you know, because you're loony. Well, you know, the mother uh, Loony enough gets... not to bring her up here. The mother no. always gets No, custom. she's fine. <laughs> she, she should be with me and away from you. Yes, indeed. Mark, Trust this me. whole conversation has been loony. You're acting very oh, strange. Yeah, what's going on, Mark? What's the matter with you? I, it's all loony and Robin's in hiding. No, no, no. I don't... Uh, Did something happen? going on. Did something happen last night between you and a homosexual lover? No. Are you, and, 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 no. Are you in pain? No, I'm fine. I'm right. standing here. You can see that. Everything's cool. Yeah, blue balls? No. Nope. you stand no. erect? I rise to every occasion, Vinny. Don't worry. What is it, Andy? Um, my God, Howard. Please, he's, an, he's an opportunist. A Republican what who's concerned who's concerned about the moral values of your show. Take a look at yourself, Mark. You're yeah. clearly you're clearly taking advantage of this whole situation. Which Howard's situation? giving you a break. Yeah. 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 This whole situation. Howard's giving you a break. Yeah. Why? God only knows. Yes. You're taking advantage of the entire situation. Who is this person? Where did it come from? He's, a, he's a listener. He's a listener. I'm a listener who's Where listening. Where are you listening to, from? To, the closet. To a clear, clearly an opportunist a good. trying to take advantage of this situation. And that's yes. what you've done in the oh, past. Oh, I am taking advantage. You, you took advantage I of I am with the American Airlines Advantage, advantage, advantage you're taking Program, advantage and I of take power. full advantage. Well, I'm a gay Republican. Oh, I don't want my please, daughter please. to hear the Hurst Stern Show. Why do you have that whining, screaming Mimi on the phone? Hi, Pitch Eric. You're on the air. Oh, hey, 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 could you imagine? If anybody is to have oh a radio show, that's the how it leads. Listen to this garbage. It's, Go it's ahead. Me. I, I will have a radio voice. show before you. No, oh, good. good. Yes, you Alice. Have a show. I don't, I'm lost for words. Yes, Alice. Hello? Yes, hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And right, what can I do for you? Um, what you can do for me is tell me, why don't you have Mark on more often? He is just so entertaining. He's been around the block time after time. He's got it all going on. I wait for him to appear, and I hear him very infrequently. What's the story? Well, you're going to hear the Mark Harris radio show coming up this half hour where he will have five minutes to audition to be my replacement when I leave right. for satellite. Well, can we give him, like, 12 minutes or 18 minutes, or what's with the five minutes? Well, because a lot of people can't handle him. Oh, um, but I can handle him. Just give him to me, baby. All Just right, we're going to have it. We're going to have it. And you know what? It's fabulous. I... Mark, I think you're great. There you. you go, Wherever Mark. you go, we'll follow you. You hearing me? Thank you. And Howard, All I right. Could, I could sort of answer that question. I, I wonder if Mark's been, like, not happy with us for a long time. Yeah, he's been avoiding us. Mark, it, you, you call me no, a lot less you, frequently than no. you used to to come on the show. Yes, but you know the truth. What, what is the truth? truth? My ex-wife has cancer, and you know that. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. No, Gary knows that. And so I, I just... Did you, you know, know that? You deal with situations yeah. when they're thrown upon you. Oh, so you're She busy. was only 50 years old, and she yeah. was diagnosed with this. And the way I handled it right away, first of all, with her, I changed my number, went in basically to seclusion through all the therapy that she needs. And then when we thought she could maybe make remission, she was hit with cervical cancer oh. besides the leukemia. Oh, now you're, now you're making everyone lymphoma. feel bad. No, no, I'm, he, you asked me a question, well. and so I fell all right, off let's the face go to, of the earth. Let's go to oh. Captain Jenks. Captain, yes. Hey, good morning. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Big all fan. right, how are you? Good. I'm just curious, are you, like... You know, even a little bit embarrassed about being a big faggot meat whistle that you are? Uh, no, are you embarrassed about being a little faggot or just a phone caller? I don't know. What are you embarrassed listen, about? Listen, Mark, sounds like yeah. the show is going to be great today. Uh, we're going to try. All right. Why don't you go back, relax? Okay. I'll get us into the commercials. Thank you. Come back. You do your show. Okay. Give it a shot. Okay. 
I don't care it. what However you do. However you want to do it. Okay. You want to do a show? Yeah. Do your show. You yeah. say you can handle I have good this? people here, yeah. If you got good people, do it. Okay. I'll give you five minutes. Let's hear a little Fine. bit of it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Mark Harris. Thank you. Wow. Just be glad he's not your dad. The Mark Harris Radio Show. <laughs> Some of us can't be glad that Man. he's not. Man. <laughs> <laughs> He's fired up today. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, it's going to be a good show, I think. Him and Denny Donahue and... <laughs> and uh, therapist. Gilda. Dr. Gilda. But, Dr. Gilda. My only point Dr. is, I mean, I don't care what he does either, but I feel sorry for his daughter. She's been a part of the show the whole time. And Poor that was dude, a big who shit. cares? Dude, she flew, and she flew the away. guy doesn't want his daughter here. I guess not. That's his, that's his thing. All right. Well, He's, it's upstairs. his show. It's his show. He's got a plan. Enough already. She's not going to be here. Yeah. I mean, who cares? Who's going to scream? The trademark scream. I don't know. I will scream for myself. <laughs> <laughs> are you virgin? Are you virgin? Where are your panties? <laughs> yes, Melrose. Howard, I love Mark Harris. Okay. And I stayed at his house. He's a wonderful father. <laughs> He's got several kids. Mark, I love you. What a ringing endorsement. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed you when you bent over. Well, whatever. Uh, I do have stage announcements from the Claws Fest yes, Friday night. Yes, yes. Hey, now. Although I, I, I'm tempted just to go to break so I can hear the Mark Harris show. I know. Aren't you anxious now? Yeah. La, 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 la. <clears throat> testing. One, two. <laughs> I'm yes. testing for proper modulation. Ah. <laughs> Is he going to do his breathing? <laughs> does his breathing exercise. <laughs> and if this doesn't pan out, I heard Julie Newmar's on life support. I'll rush right out. <laughs> Rick, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going, Howard? Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, uh, hey man, I am, I'm so freaking pissed, dude. I heard your uh, your your show on Friday. Let me tell you something. I got I got a chance to talk to you on election day, but uh, I, I just got back from Iraq in March. The thing is, <clears throat> what my whole thing is this: is that I rose my hand to defend the Constitution and the rights of everybody in this in this country. Okay, and the fact of the fact of the matter is, people stomping on your ass is just not cool because. Why am I defending this country for the rights and the, the freedom of speech and all this other stuff when we have our own in this in this country stopping all over it ourselves? It, it, it kind of, I kind of, it kind of seems worthless to me now. You know, and I'm not talking about just you; it's just like in general. All right, thank you for the call. All right, all right. Uh, yeah. Serviceman back and wondering what he's fighting for. He's right. Can't even say what you want to say. What? What are you going to do? <laughs> so there was Claws Fest Friday night. Yes. And that's the big concert the radio station throws. And our Christmas present to our listeners. Yeah. And oh. uh, I just like listening to the stage announcements. Oh, I have a funny story, by the way. I could tell now that uh, Tom asked me to wait on. Mm -hmm. You know, when uh, um, Velvet Revolver came out, they have a background behind them. That says the F word, mm -hmm. and Tom put the squash on it. And they oh, were really? very upset. He says no profanity at, at our class fest. Why? He just didn't. He he thinks that you know, there's clients there and there's young kids there, and he doesn't think there should be profanity there. Yeah, but then the DJs in the announcements curse like crazy. Screaming, yeah, the F word all over the place. So funny too because it, it, we're in this make believe society where we're all pretending that it's something other than what it is. This F word, if you think about it. It's so ridiculous. It's there, just a word. Everyone uses it, and it's a word. I, I mean, so let them hang up 50 of those signs. Well, you know, I had a funny... It, it's meaningless. I had a funny conversation with Tom because he talked about something that happened at DFP where he got a lot of complaints. So I said, Tom, define a lot. Yeah. And he said five. And he's becoming I, like the FCC. And I said, Tom... What did they complain about? Someone said the F word? No, I think somebody was smoking a bong on stage. It was Cypress Hill brought out a giant bong. Right. Okay. Okay, so I said... There, what does Jones Beach hold? 14,000 people? So five people complained. I said, that's sort of a minimal number. Yeah. In fact, it seems to me like most of the crowd liked it. And But he's going to respond to the five people. Anyway, so when you make stage announcements, I see. I, I heard some of yours. It's uh, very good. You didn't yell, and you didn't say the F word, and you didn't go for the cheap stuff. But... Uh, Cabby went right out with the F. Oh, that's what Cabby said to me before. He says, I just go and I say F, 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 F. Check, check, check. What's up, New Jersey? No, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Yo! I'm fat. I'm not Santa Claus. I am in red and white. 
and I don't pay my effing taxes. Yeah, kiss. <laughs> I'm fat. Who else is fat? Jersey. I think they're cheering at first because they not they don't even realize who's up there. They just hear, "Hey, Jersey, what's up?" Right. <laughs> Right, they're cheering for Jersey. Then when they hear I'm fat, they go, uh oh. <laughs> We're in trouble. Hey, is that Cabby? I'm fat. I have toe fungus. <laughs> and I don't pay my taxes. <laughs> Happy Quads Fest, mother. <laughs> How about Chevelle, huh? Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. Quite a lineup we have this year, as you know. This next band just put out a record. It's called Getting Away With Murder. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, right. You, know, you can only do that if you're OJ. Because cause Scott Peterson, he found that out, right? <laughs> OJ. <laughs> he's, he's, he's doing material now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Right? I'm still fat, right? And and comedy at that decibel level is really yeah. good. And then you're waiting for the punchline. Okay, there's a premise, Scott Peterson, and then there's nothing happening. Right. <laughs> right? Scott Peterson, give it up for Papa F Roach! <laughs> Papa F and Roach. Papa F Roach! You get that F word going. And Tom does give a lecture to all the jocks not to use the F word. I know, but everybody goes out and uses it anyway. And it, I don't know why you can't hang up a sign that has the F word on it. Because even in the middle of the corn set, Jonathan Davis just let out a string <laughs> of them. And, you know, it was it was beautiful. Julie Might Slater. Well hang it up. Julie Slater went into the high decibel range. Oh, did she? Yeah. A lot of F-words. She word. was contacting uh, small animals. She's, yeah, she sounded doing, a lot. Doing dogs jumping up on stage. <laughs> she sounds a lot like my friend's wife. Hi, you guys. Dylan, yo! <laughs> How you guys effing doing, yo? <laughs> Julie's up. She must go to high schools and hang out. And yeah, she got all the lingo. I might not know to do the yo at the end. Right. Yo. Oh, she said yo. Yeah. Effing doing, yo. That's the move. How about Chevelle? Right? Unbelievable. How you guys doing, yo? 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 Someone effing raped me, yo. <laughs> I said he raped me. I stink like a pig. Somebody raped me for crying out loud. <laughs> I've got body odor. I'm fat. I want oh, my goodness, baby. Papa Rock. Press four. I'm Julie Slater from K Rock. What the f My name is Brad, maybe. <laughs> See, she just threw the F word in there. She goes, I'm Julie Slater. What the F? Yeah, what the she I feel like blowing my mind up. She's not making any sense. I'm Julie F and Slater. Bitch. Merry f Christmas. Merry F and Christmas. What is this? Have you guys been good little boys and girls? <laughs> they don't sound like they've been very hey, good. Hey, Brad, I think they're saying take your top off. I keep hearing take your top off. Take your top off. Does anyone think oh, Julie's top is see-through? So do it. I want the power on, god damn it. <laughs> Everyone's angry. Somebody I'm, rape me for crying out loud. I'm wearing effing shoes. <laughs> god damn it, I think like who, a rotten egg. Who else has socks on? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta get all pissed off. I feel like smacking myself, god damn it. Uh, to... Wendy would be great if her power was off. <laughs> Relate to them on any like any level. Like, who else breathes air here? I want the power on, god damn it! Because it's not really see-through. Sure, it was see-through. No. She's got a black bra. Problem is, most jocks don't have an act. They go up on stage and there's really nothing to say. Yeah. Most of them announce records. It's they should hard. really be doing that. Yeah, it's it's hard because it's loud there, and you know. It's two for Tuesday. I'm going nuts, baby. Hey, it's 58 degrees and sunny. <laughs> On, apparently. Are you ready for the next band? Are you ready? Little stage bander. Somebody rape me for crying out loud. These two have a good chemistry. <laughs> I, don't I don't know who, they're, who that's with. They should with do it. all their stage announcements together. Yeah, they're like Abbott and Costello. Ready <laughs> for the next band. Julie, I'm effing ready. I don't know if they're ready for the next band. Can we hear you guys scream? Yeah. All right, you know, like, that's why I have trouble going. <laughs> to these shows.
I don't like all that audience participation. I have to scream to get the next band. Right. <laughs> they don't sound like they're ready. Honey, I've been standing here for an hour waiting between setups. I'm I think exhausted. I'm ready. Exhausted. Give ex me the <laughs> band. <laughs> Give, bring me the goddamn band. <laughs> Another great Claus Fest. Please welcome these lovely guys with delicious accents. Who yes. is it, Brad? Is it's it Fred Ferdinand? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Franz Ferdinand. Oh, <laughs> it's King Ferdinand of Spain. <laughs> King Ferdinand of Spain is here. <laughs> Hello, people of America. <laughs> I am King Ferdinand of Spain. <laughs> Julie should come out there and just go, I just swallowed effing poison. <laughs> I'm going to be dead in five minutes. My <laughs> <laughs> whole world. <laughs> you, you did pretty good, actually. I, I, I didn't hear the whole thing, but uh, at least you didn't yell. It's, it's just, but these are the, you know, it's a nightmare to, to go up on stage and try to do this stuff. I get embarrassed when I first start listening to yours because it's like, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> it is. It's horrible. After you say yes, you go, why did I say yes? There's nowhere to go. Now, this is nice. Well, that's nice. Good evening! Peoples of Earth. <laughs> Woo! Hello, New Jersey! All right, I'll give you that. <laughs> you got to do the New Jersey. Got to say Jersey, yeah. <laughs> that always works for Springsteen. Hello, New Jersey. I see, though, you didn't yell. That's good. <laughs> all this light is on, and now I can't see a thing. Complaining. But I wanted to welcome you all to the Continental Arena. There you go. There's some applause. So far, you've said Jersey, Continental Arena. <laughs> and now I'm going to say Claus Fest. <laughs> <laughs> Should have said the F word. You got the year right? You do the year? I wouldn't even know why I was there. It really is tough to figure out what to say. Yeah, right? It is. I would say, I just want to say, I have nothing to say. Right. <laughs> you guys are well, effing great. Right. basically what you say when there is nothing to say. So far you've said Continental Arena, Claus Fest 2004. New Jersey. Everything I could have read right off the ticket. <laughs> Marijuana. <laughs> O.J. Scott Peterson. <laughs> oh, wait. Gabby's going to do his classic O.J. Scott Peterson bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for. I should have given the date. It's December. <laughs> it's 9.54. <laughs> and I want to thank you guys for all the support that you've given to the Howard Stern Show. See, now I got chills. That's nice. I do. I got chills. Nice. Is anybody else getting a chill? It was amazing. It really was. Yeah. It makes me feel good, this being our final year on the radio yeah. here. I just got goosebumps. I did. <laughs> it's really, it's beautiful. A lot of love. Very nice. A lot it of love was, in the room. It was really incredible. <laughs> That's right. Howard, Howard, Howard. That's right. Long may he rule. Yeah. Hey, honey, thank you. Now you got something to say. Well, then, now I get behind that. <laughs> this isn't on the ticket, at least. Uh -oh. You'll be able to see me on my own television uh -oh. show. Oh, that's no place to plug, honey. <laughs> what are you out there doing? This was, uh, you know what? I would never have said that, but Rob Cross said that to me just as I was going on. He goes, oh, don't forget to plug your TV show. And I was like, I should do that? And I was like, okay. Don't listen to him. I was like, well, I've never listened to a program director before, and look at the mess he got me into. Uh -oh. Boo. <laughs> oh, they're booing you. Ooh.
Hey, I, I don't blame them. Commercial. <laughs> They're booing. I'm not Wilson. booing me because of that commercial. But I'll always be from the Howard Stern Show. Hey, a lot of emotion in this. I know how to get them back. You're taking us on a roller coaster. <laughs> we love you. We hate you. We love you. All right, all right. Enough of that. Get back to St. Continental Arena in Jersey. <laughs> get back to something important. Let's get on the New Jersey Turnpike! <laughs> you know what we came here to do, right? Smoke bongs? Smoke weed! Gang rape people? <laughs> Did we come here to rock? No. Came here to hear Cabby. Did we come here to kick ass? Uh-oh, you're getting the decibel level up. <laughs> Beetlejuice got thrown out of Claws Fest. Uh, did That's the rumor. In? That's the rumor. Hey, Howard? Yeah. Hold on. I got to come in and tell you this. Hey, Nathan. What's hey, up? Hey, how are you? Did Beetlejuice get thrown out of Claws Fest? Yeah, they, they turned him away they, uh, because of what happened. The show on Friday and uh, Sean's antics, they said they, didn't, they weren't letting him in. Aww. Aww. I yeah. heard that, yeah, they weren't even given tickets or something. I don't think you could get it. Here's what happened. Yeah, he was going was... to buy tickets, and they, they wouldn't even allow him to, to buy tickets. Oh, this is terrible. Okay. Originally, they were given tickets. Then they were taken away because of some stuff that went on here. And then um, uh, Beetlejuice's picture was circulated to all the ticket guys to not let him in. Oh, oh. See, I don't like that. Well. I don't know if you know everything that happened. Do you know the whole story of what went on in the halls here? Yeah, I heard. I heard bits and pieces that there was a misunderstanding. A lot of hurt feelings. I'm sorry to hear that. Because that's my little buddy, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Well, I think Beetle's caught in the middle. Yeah, that ain't right. Beetle should have been there. I don't care what anyone says. Unfortunately, Beetle doesn't travel alone. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, we got to get to the Mark Harris show next. So let me do a commercial break. Is and Mark I, ready? Yeah, and I did find out that um, it's going to be Mark, Dr. Gilda, his joke writer, and then at one point in, he's going to bring in Rebecca, his daughter's boyfriend, and Rebecca's going to call in. I see. So we got a good show. All right, I can work the phones for Mark if he wants me to. You'll be his engineer? I'll be his engineer if he wants. Yeah, I think you should say, you know, Mark Line 1 is, you know, do that whole thing for me. Mark Line 1. I'll try and sound gay so I fit into the... <laughs> right, because you are doing the... All right. What we're going to do, because I'm leaving... My dad's gay show. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm leaving in a year, Mark Harris has made it clear that he feels he should be my replacement. <laughs> and I thought there would be nothing more humorous than to listen to five minutes of uninterrupted Mark Harris show. This is what he thinks America is ready for. Yes. This is what he believes is the future of radio. Yeah. And, and hey, let's give him a shot. We'll be back right he after this. Yes. New music. Okay, Magic Bell, you're on the air. Go ahead. Then the Mark Harris Radio Show. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Howard. Hey, These no. guys in Syracuse, are, man, they're, they're, they're just chopping the heck out of you. Every time you say satellite, every time you say move. Well, what can I do? Listen, everyone's got to decide what they want on their air. I'm just going to knock out the show, do what I have to do. I'm sorry that this is what it's come down to. The announcements they're running are absolutely ludicrous, make no sense if you analyze them. They act like they're not, like they're a competition on here or something. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't understand it. Um, uh, I did have a conversation with uh, the guy who runs the whole company, and he said that uh, he was going to stop all this antagonism, but uh, evidently he's not. It takes a while for that. Are you still going to come up here? I, I will come up to Syracuse, yeah. What? I don't know yet. i gotta, I got to figure out my last year. I, I, think, uh, I think now, in light of uh, the, uh, the attempts made to tarnish my reputation, uh, I should come up there and say a few words. So uh, I'm going to plan out my last year very carefully. I'll tell you what I do. I live in between Syracuse and Albany, so I switched over to the edge in Albany. All right. Well, and there the, you go. The, the show is ten times better. Okay. Well, whatever. I, I'm sorry to hear that they're doing that. I'll, I'll, have, more, I'll have an update for you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Hey, hey Howard. My son's a YouTube fan. You think he's the only one? Put who on? I said my son is a big YouTube fan. You think he's the only one? 
The iPod. iPod. Uh, okay, all right. You've won the special edition iPod U2 with autographs of each U2 band member engraved on it and up to 12 hours of battery life. For wow, Mac and PC, which, which, for Christmas. Thanks, which iPod is on your wish list? Hold on. Thanks. Damn, I should have taken one of those for myself and given it to my daughter. I had to go buy one. <clears throat> I didn't know we were giving those away. Great Christmas gift. Um, all right, look, I got the whole thing set up here. Let me let me get in the mood for this. It's time for WHMO. <laughs> That's right. The Mark Harris Radio Show. Mark claims that if I was to go off the air, which I am in a year, he would be an excellent replacement. I said, you've got five minutes. You can do anything you want. Take a look at the... We've set up a whole radio station for Mark. Even the microphones have cucumbers and tomatoes. With uh, Actually, uh, you see the microphones, Robin? Yes, I just saw them. They're beautiful. Very colorful set. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to uh, interrupt. Now, Mark, just real quick, before you start your show, do you want me to work the telephones for you at any point do you want to take phone calls i want to take phone calls i appreciate you doing it all right now what i'll do is uh, should i interrupt and say mark does a call for you online too or or should i just keep quiet i agree you should keep quiet but all right. you should just say there's a caller well how can i well where are you calling from you could ask you'd find out and then announce it just like they do on larry king all right so, what, so you, from Idaho. are you going to say to me howard uh, please get me some yes, phone calls yes, exactly that's what you're going to yes, do yes I'll right. pitch you receive. All right, let me let me get everyone into <laughs> this. It. Let me get everyone into this. At that point, with a little yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's something happening here. Uh, what it is ain't exactly clear. Uh, There's a man with a uh, uh, over there uh, telling me. I think that's a good theme song, no? But that's up to Mark. I don't know. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn it over now to Mark Harris and his radio show. Here you go, Mark. Hi, my fellow Americans and anyone else who's listening. I am Mark S. Harris and... Rebecca S. Harris. Welcome to... Life with Father. How's the life? When you scream, Rebecca, life is just a... Well, as you can hear, me and my teenage Rebecca are going to talk about life with father. So please call in. At this very moment, Rebecca's not here, so we're going to do the Mark Harris Show with Dennis Donahue. Dennis, say hello to the listening audience. How are you? I like this uh, little apparatus you got here for me. Thank you. Very good setup. And our guest today is Dr. Gilda. Say hello, doctor. Hi, everybody. How are you? A relationship therapist. What book do you have out now? Oh, for your daughter and for other teenagers, Teen Talk with Dr. Gilda, A Girl's Guide to Dating. Okay. What's the secret to your success? To my success? Yeah. Hmm. Just be yourself, be honest, and communicate, communicate, communicate. Don't hide under the covers. So you're a relationship doctor? I'm Dr. a relationship Gilda? doctor, yeah. And uh, how does uh, your husband feel about all that? I don't have a husband anymore. Anymore? You were married, though? Yeah. That's one less relationship. You were married, and what happened? Did he die? No, I killed him. Oh. Well, well, so, all right, so you... well he didn't die a natural death. Oh, no. What happened? Mm -hmm. What happened? Nothing. Nothing. It fizzled out just the way a lot of relationships fizzle out. Mm -hmm. So you're a relationship doctor, but your relationship has failed? No, not at all. My relationship ended when it was appropriate to end. Were and you married? On. Yeah. But marriage is you forever. You just asked that. Didn't you hear that? Marriage is forever. In some people's language. So you're not considering it a failed marriage? I yet? don't. No, I don't believe there were any failures. You see, this is what's wrong with America. You got well, wait, wait, a bisexual wait, 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 guy raising kids. How yeah. many kids have you fathered I now? I have four. Four kids. Four daughters. The relationship doctor yeah. has a failed marriage. Dr. Phil wait, and Oprah wait, wait, are teaching us about wait, wait, Let him talk. Let wait. him talk. No, no, no. Give no, him no, enough no. rope to hang I himself. Don't, I don't believe there are any failures. There are only lessons in what to do next. So it's next chapter. And so we go on from one thing to next. Oh, I and agree there with no, that. But there's no next in marriage. You put a ring on and you say, you know, to have it to hold till death do you part. It's not till it fizzles out. Calm down. There's no marriage. Exactly. There's no marriage band on your hands. Of course not. 
I'm sp- no, uh, so it's better have, to end a marriage than fight for the rest of your so life. Wait a minute, so you're in no situation to be able to look at somebody else's situation. But I'm not telling people how to run their life. My oh, job yeah, is to observe and report. you were just telling me how to run report. my life. I didn't tell you how to run. I'm this saying my not, job is to observe and report. This is not report. the nature of your show, right? No, we're going to take calls. Okay. Okay, let's take our first caller, please, Howard. Who do you have? You have Rod Stiffington on the phone, Mr. Mark. Stiffington. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm fine. How's your name? Good, good. This is Rod Stiffington. I met you at Gerbil Jam in 98. Wait, Remember that? One of the phony phone calls. No, oh, I'm serious. Course. Here we go. We were doing okay. atomic sit-ups uh, in the parking lot. Remember? A real caller, or this is just a mock-up situation? Oh, you sure are Thank a brown noser, Mark. Literally. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. That's one for Howard. All right, Mark, you have Wendy the retard on six. Like I need this. Are you on Zoloft or what? What is she going to give us? A dosage? Oh, Oh, you my goodness. Oh, oh, please hang <laughs> up. <laughs> Howard, give it up. Go ahead. Next. Do we have a that human being out there? Give it you. up. We need I humans. Stop. You Get rid of this woman. Oh. Okay. Oh, She's not I'm on gonna... Zoloft. I made a mistake. No, baby, come up okay. There and Can you All right. go to the next caller? <laughs> Shuli, you're on the air with Mark Harris. Hey, good morning, Mark. I good morning. What's uh, your name? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. With this opportunity. What's your name? I have two questions for you. One, uh... About you being so protective of your daughter, are you worried that might lead her to a reckless lifestyle down the road? No, that is not it at all. You are a parent, and you keep your daughter in a safe environment, and she doesn't have to have bad feelings. And I thought uh, this you was think not... growing up in a bisexual house is a safe environment? Yes. Well, What's I got wrong? another question. It's a follow-up. Wait a minute, Dennis. That's a stupid remark. A parent is a parent is a parent. Responsibility. And you're not there yet. So don't be a little <laughs> well, smart. Well, wait a minute. I have a lot to say about Go this. Go ahead. Dennis, Let's listen to the Dennis, doctor. Dennis is sitting here... And talking, talking himself about, out of a job. <laughs> Go ahead. Talking about everybody's life, whereas he doesn't have any of this life experience. He's only now, 27. You know what, Mark, I have even been on this show, on Howard Stern, commenting on your own lifestyle and naming you, as a matter of fact, trisexual because you'll try anything. And very often, you're out there in an effort to secure a better place for yourself. You have Daniel on line three. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take Daniel. Actually, marrying Martha Ray really secured a better place for himself. In, it in certainly the, did yeah. in a lot of ways. In tabloid yeah. history, but Martha was in a, a wonderful In a lot woman. of ways. House, house Privately, it was a great, it was a in great a lot of ways. house but, I built. But if you were to understand <laughs> Mark's history, Can you we would take understand the he loves old Hollywood. Yes. And, he loves old and ladies. He's, and he's a tremendous No, I you love your mother independently. <laughs> okay, let me hear the caller. Hi. Daniel? Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm 14 years old. And I'm having some, like, gay feelings. Call. Yeah, it's a phony and phone I want, call. Like, you have Joe on line six. Joe, the schmo from Idaho. Hello. Hi. I, I have a really serious relation, relationship problem. And it starts off with listening to this show because it's just so bad. But I'm well, why, don't, why don't you I just like, hang up and don't listen? It's the end of the story. It's very simple. You have Mike on line nine. Take the mic. Yes, hello, Mark. Yeah, Mike. Uh, you're fabulous, Mark. I seen you at the Huntington Townhouse years ago, five, six years ago. I was wondering, what have happened to the entertainer of the millennium? The millennium. Well, things have changed since the millennium, as everyone knows. But I'll get my cabaret act together again. You have Vinny on line two. Vinny Mark, who? I'm so disappointed in show. What you the know, this is like a piece of crap just going around and around like you're stepping it. Mark, yeah. you lost control of your own show. Why is this guy, Dennis, talking all the time? I didn't lose control. That's a very You're good question. You're in your place. You're totally with Mark. Now, Dennis, is Dennis, is this? Dennis Mark, has Mark. to figure it out. Don't Mark, worry about it. Mark, you're making me look bad. You sold? You uh, sold? Uh, hang up on Vinny. This Mark, is ridiculous. Mark, please. The reason please. you're there is because is go I went to Howard and, and said yeah. you were going to do a show yeah. about a gay guy raising his daughter. Okay. A show called Life with Father. You got this guy ask, next to you. You know what? Why don't you ask me a question, Vinny? I agree with you, Vinny. This is a horrible show. Oh, well, then hang up and don't listen. You could have done better. Vinny, so is this, this is how you're eating up time. All Who's right. Well, we've eaten up five minutes. We've and, heard the oh, mark. You okay. Yes, you did. Thank you handled you, five minutes. I kept quiet Thank during you. it. you. did. You're great. That's, That's today on the Mark Harris show. Right. Let me see how the people liked it. Okay, Why not? Bring in uh, uh, Brett, Rebecca's date. You're kidding. This is your daughter's date. Yeah, she met him this week. You right? didn't even introduce him. Well, I'd ask you to if you don't mind. All right, bring him in. I'll Brett, come on in. All right, Bill, how did you like Mark's show? Do you feel that this is an appropriate replacement for me? Uh, no, I think he's fabulous, Howard. You I like don't him? think he'd be a replacement for you because your hypocritical crowd does not go for what me and Mark believe in. The patriotic gayness in America is the way it's to go, Mark. 
Well, it's not a question of way to go. It's what I personally feel. Right. In this Mark, country Mark, for everybody, Mark. and your remarks are not welcomed on that note. Well, Mark, you seem to have uh, created controversy I here today. People to. people are, uh, are, are calling in in droves. <laughs> They don't believe what's going on. They don't believe on. what they've heard. They oh, don't Brett, believe it. Meet Howard Stern. All right. Now, Brett, you are Mark's future son-in-law. Is that what's going on? You never know. Not legal yet. I don't want to know. She's uh, only 17. All right. How old are you? 23. And are you having <laughs> sex with Mark's daughter? Not yet. But I want to get to that Bel Air mansion quick. Couldn't right. you believe it? <laughs> He's 23 yeah. and she's 17. His father and how I graduated does, high school. How does the protective father feel about that? Chaperone? Oh, Rebecca's a great girl. I mean, wait a second. What are you doing? You just had fixing one date with her, Brett? What are you doing? 23 year old. No, it's I all a matter of that. coincidence. I'll explain. Basically, Mark came in. I went out with Rebecca Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. I wanted to do something, and I found out she was 17. Kind of spoiled some plans. You know, no right. these. Really Blink twice if you got the second base. <laughs> that, well, he's trying to be funny. Don't worry. No. Forced comedy is not my issue. All right, so you have had, you have had no sex with Mark's daughter? No. Have you kissed her? No. Did you uh, digitize her? How did oh you not digitize her? Yeah, Dennis, don't stretch. No, it was very nice. Really? We, took her, yeah. we went to see uh, the Mark, I, I'm shocked by the this, this shock show you do. R what shock? I'm getting, uh, digitized. Are you, are you in shock? <laughs> oh, good. Let me know <laughs> well, when you feel a spark. My question is, the, the protective dad, why are you fixing your daughter up with a 23-year-old? Rebecca, Mark's daughter. Well, I'll answer here. you, Robin, now that we're on your show. There's not a problem here. Uh, Rebecca's on the phone? Yes. Rebecca, good morning. Oh, good. Good morning. Hi, How Rebecca. Hi, Hi Rebecca. Well, I guess your dad didn't want to let you up here because he's so protective, but he lets you go out with a 23-year-old. Uh, yeah. Yeah, see? Oh, I was very respectful. I, I'm sure you were. By the way, Mark, now that you've um, done it, uh, do you see that your daughter could have been here? Could have, yes. Maybe we'll make another date. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. I, don't no. Think, I don't think that's happening. I, 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 I want, I want to family. tell everybody that I lobbied to have him bring his daughter up here, and he refused. Well, let me tell you something. I feel... Mark had a shot here that I I gave, I've given no one else but Mark. He missed a big opportunity, in my opinion. Yes. I think the show would have been a lot stronger with your daughter, but that's up to you. You're the host of the right. show. That's what well, we were my, all waiting to hear. I understand, but I have to know that my daughter is uh, happy, comfortable, and safe. And what we, we heard coming in on the limo, she was not. Rebecca, is that true? Um, I didn't really want to go up there. The show is kind of wild at the beginning so i just figured i'd do a call-in okay fine fair enough so right. hey mark did what he had to do i think the show would have been stronger i think uh, on, on a scale of one to ten i'm going to give this show a three it was a little bit unfocused Thank you. uh I'll all right you, no let me just interrupt rebecca happens to be she's wonderful i mean she could definitely fill out a radio and help out i feel morning i feel the show needs a lot of practice well maybe you'll produce it no, Does she I'm, have I'm a, not, uh, I got my own problem. Right. <laughs> 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 I'm sitting here and produce the Mark Harris Show. But okay. Mark, you had your shot. Yes, and I appreciate it, Howard. You've always been good to me. I have. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I, I love when you come in. That. And uh, Mark's daughter, you would have been safe here. I never would have done anything disrespectful. Yes, Mark is a poor judge of character. That. Yeah, I, 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 have I trusted that. And after when he he got back into the green room, I said, Mark, I think it's a mistake, and you ought to have your daughter here. Look, I've done millions of hours of television, and I've seen you, and I've been here before, and I really trusted that. I have daughters. I certainly yes, would have understood. Because, and that's what, one of the things that I said. You have three daughters of your own, and I don't believe that anything would have... Absolutely not. I, and Mark should have known that. Ken, you're on the air. Yeah, what's up, Howard? What's up? I'm your board op over in uh, San Diego, 1037 The Planet. Yes. Hey, man, that is like the worst five minutes of radio I've ever heard. There you go. You'll know by the ratings we never cut anything out of your show. Right. But I'm, I'm thinking about cutting out that last five minutes. <laughs> might oh, have please, to. feel free to do <laughs> you so. You might have to bleep that. Let's go to Mr. Tape. Mr. Tape, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, big-time fan. Hey, now. Hey, I got a question for Mark. Yes. Yeah, hey, Mark, do your farts... Just tell your father to bend over and enjoy yourself. Well, he did before, and now, I... I figured that's kidney. where it's coming from. Jerry Why don't Springer you... is not my name. I love your comebacks. Why don't you tell your father to bend over and enjoy right, yourself? because he was very descriptive. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's good banter. I like that with the callers. Yeah, that I like. Yeah. The stuff with the callers is pretty good. Yeah, really? Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. And it stinks to me. All right, let's go to Frosty. Frosty, you're on the air. Frosty. Yeah, Howard, this homo makes me want to drive Frosty. into a pool. All right, Mark, you're Chilling show. call. That's a great quote. Wants to drive into a wall. He <laughs> Chilling. Let's go to Anthony. Anthony, you're on the air. Yo, Howard, this, this, this is horrible radio, man. Yeah, you sound it. Uh, but you know what? Yeah. You know what? I think I'm 23. I'll date his 17-year-old daughter, you know? Not I, as long as I'm breathing. Will you at I least would, digitize her? <laughs> oh, I, would, I would love to digitize a 
seven. Okay, I think you could hang up on this one. We Let's go to going. Brian. Hey, Howard, what's up? Hey. Yo, this guy's been down to Brown Town more than once in the what? last year. Oh, Absolutely. He's been one. down the old dirt trail. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Mike. Fess it's up. A, it's Come on, Mike. Mark, hey, Howard, you've been down the old dirt trail. Come on, Mike. That's Come on. not a focus. Hey, Howard. Yes. Really He's got some zippers on the back of his pants for, for some... You know, really, the, I mean, you think that's fun. Your yes, pajamas Frank. have the yeah. little flap like yeah. Dennis the Menace? Yes, then Frank. If you're going to be on the radio, you're going to have to put oh, yeah, up with a lot put of up this. The crap, hey, yeah. listen, man. This guy is a schmuck. You got to yeah. get him off the radio. He's driving... He is way too high. I'm your new religion. Get down on your knees and pray. Rusty Pecker, you're on the air. <gasps> yes, I got a question for Mr. Harris. I'm the publisher for Modern Penis Magazine. I'd yes. like to do a layout with you, well, Mr. Harris. Well, ask your mother and give her a dildo. Tom Freston, you're on the air. CEO of Viacom. Good morning. I just want to say the show was fabulous with Dr. Gilda. Yes. And uh, we want to interview her and perhaps put a show together for her. <laughs> right. But and absolutely not she that. She believes that. Absolutely right. not that salad tossing faggot. Oh, she geez. believes that. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Gilda, bring right. your husband. Yes, uh, Baba Boo. Right. Can I be a phone caller? Yes. Hey, Mark, I want to ask you a question. How come. You didn't want to bring your daughter up here because you were afraid that Howard would insult her, and then your writer does all the does all this nasty stuff about her. He doesn't know what he's doing. No, but you brought him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have no understand. idea what I'm doing. He's, he's the one that's bringing up. All, <laughs> he's bringing up all this nasty stuff about your daughter that we wouldn't have brought he up. He didn't bring up nasty. Yes, stuff. he did. No, he's asking no, no, no. this guy all the things he did tell no. her. No, I think his point of view was actually uh, that I'm a bisexual man and I'm parent. No, he's asking your daughter's boyfriend things he does to her. And you well, so obviously, uh, he and, came and, uh, clean and nothing. Uh, Gary, quite done. frankly, I'm a little disappointed in the answers. Yeah, <laughs> I'm disappointed in your lack of humor. When she's 18, we'll come back and talk. Why is it funny when he does it, but it's not funny when Howard does it? Uh, you're being the critic. Well, you're just saying he's funny. Well, when he does his act, the Carolines or otherwise. No, but is he funny, funny here today talking about your daughter? No. Yes, Christy, you're on the air. Hello. Yes. Hi. I have a good replacement for you. Me. Well, maybe we'll give you five minutes. Are you Let's 17? <laughs> Actually, I have a website, and I have 300 people who come to my website a day just to read about what I have to say. So give me a big medium, such as a radio, and be all like? over it. And you could have 600 people. Go ahead, John. Hey, uh, Mark, this is your show today, hey? Well, go to my website, www.akamarkharris.com. Hey, Mark, I was yes. wondering, could yeah. I get a prize because I called your show? No. Come on, you big faggot. No, big I gym. wouldn't give you a prize. You big faggot named Jim. You're so stupid. So stupid. Hey, I'm wondering, did you <laughs> really? Have a, you know, you love that one, right? Lack of intelligence. Hey, you know what? You know, really, you know what must you know? be incest in this family. I'm a big faggot named Jim. Really? Hey, I'm a big faggot named Jim. Oh, listen to Artie. Hey, Jim, you're is a big Artie faggot named Jim. chewing while he's talking? Are you saying anything? What did Artie do wrong? I'm not saying anything. You gotta be funny, Artie, like this. Are you a big faggot named Jim? That's the caller, Mark. Oh, pity. All right, Mark. Well, congratulations thank on your you. first show on WHMO. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Gilda, thank you. And, of course, Dennis, thank you. And, of course, your uh, daughter's boyfriend, thank you. Brett, right? Oh, that's right. All right. Not and uh, thank yet. and thank you to Rebecca. We'll be back right after these words. And if you want the Mark Harris Show, write to Sumner Redstone at Viacom. <laughs> <laughs> you can plug my website. Hold your breath until you get a response. <laughs> Dr. Gill, do you got anything going on uh, that you should be plugging? I have a couple of things, but I'm not saying anything yet. What about your I'm book? Working, oh, I'm well, I Plug have my, my, teen, my teen book is Teen Talk with Dr. Gilda, A Girl's Guide to Dating. My other book is Doing Phenomenally Well, Don't Bet on the Prince. And I'm working on a television show right now. So All right, there you go. All right. Nice things are All happening. Right. Oh, and uh, Dennis? Dennis, yeah, Dennis. go ahead, Dennis. New Year's Eve, I'll be at the Seven Angels Theater in Waterbury, Connecticut, two shows, 6.30 and 9.30. All right, and Mark, where will you be New Year's Eve? In a bathtub full of milk? <laughs> Buttermilk with vodka. www.akamarkharris.com. If there's any underage girls who want to date Brett out there, give us a call. We'll see if we can hook them up. All right, thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you, Brett. You. Thank you, everybody. And thank we'll be you. back right after these words. Howie Stern is the man. <laughs> Let's make some noise. Let's make some noise for Chevelle. That's Ben Harvey. Oh, that's Ben. Well, I've never met, I don't think. He said hello to me at Claus Fest. Two, three, four. Test one, two, three. Let's make some noise for Papa Roach. Let's make some noise for Franz Ferdinand. Let's make some... <laughs> Boo, Franz Ferdinand. Let's make 
some noise for Jimmy Eat World. Let's make some noise for Corn. Let's make some noise for Velvet Revolver. My name is Ben Harvey from K Rock. Let's give a warm welcome back to Mr. Chris Booker. Let's give a warm welcome to Cabby back from jail. And the boobalicious Julie Slater. Well, you see, he's got some energy, this guy. Hey. Yeah, well, uh, he was a little, uh, he was feeling no pain when I saw him. Boobalicious. Let's make some noise for noise. Yeah. Boobalicious. He looked like he'd had a couple of cocktails. Er. It's Hell Booker. of a warm-up right there. Help is Booker trying to be all cool. Yeah, Booker's the cool one. Yeah, yeah. Booker's above it all. Oh, man, I don't want to interview these bands. What do you say? What do you say? I'm Booker. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm Booker. You know, he was complaining backstage because he had to interview Velvet Revolver. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, I got to oh, interview I, the hottest band on earth. Wah. I hate interviewing bands. What am I supposed to say? Wah. <laughs> wah. <laughs> I got to make a stage announcement to people in Jersey. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> wah. <laughs> of a warm-up. Listen, thank you for listening to our little radio station. We appreciate it. Wait a minute. Julie, do you have something you want to share? Show your Show your Everybody spends a lot of time trying to get Julie undressed. Yeah. Yeah, just, just flash, for Christ's sake. Your You just get him go. I dated J Lo's sister. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't he still? I had a dream about J Lo last night. But are they broken up? You said I dated. Yeah, they're not together anymore. You're kidding. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. You didn't tell him. Booker lost out on that Lopez oh, no. family connection. That's why I don't think he's on entertainment tonight anymore. <laughs> oh, he's not on that either? No. Because he can't bring in the J Lo interview. I saw him on the T V Guide channel. Yeah, he's got a gig there. I think Guadalupe put her foot down and said, look, I don't want that gringo in my family. No more Booker. Watch with the booger. He hasn't bought me one car. Yeah, he's no Ben Affleck. <laughs> and the whole time you've been dating him. He doesn't buy me gifts. <laughs> he give me no money. Yeah, they're not together anymore. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, big breakup. Sad. Yeah. I thought they were a nice couple. They were. They were, and I thought one of your favorite couples. I seem to have inherited Booker, though, in the divorce, because <laughs> Linda, I don't hear from anymore. So you've lost the J-Lo franchise, too? Yeah. I, I don't have a connection to J-Lo. <laughs> yeah, you need that connection to j -Lo. Not that it did me any good, because I never met J-Lo, because they certainly kept the worlds apart. And, like, you couldn't talk to... It, it actually wasn't even fun when Booker was dating Linda, because you couldn't even bring up J-Lo. Did they ever throw a party or no. anything where you might have bumped into her? Well, they probably did, but didn't invite me. Booker doesn't... Booker's one of those guys that will always call to check out what you're up to uh -huh. and get in on it, but he'll never call you and go, hey, there's something cool going on. Why don't you come join us? Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, the whole time he was going out with her, when there was something cool going on, like, you know, J-Lo's in town, you know, let's go meet her. Right. Forget it. So it didn't do me any good. And Linda, like, you couldn't even talk to her about J-Lo. Because then it was like, well, you want to be friends with J-Lo, not me. Uh -huh. So everyone's all sensitive. But like, hey, come on, I put in my time. I spent the year with you now. Let me see J-Lo. You invited them everywhere. Yep. Well, come on. When am I going to get to see the J-Lo? How about a little reward? Yeah. Let's Let us meet J-Lo and Ben Affleck. Let's and see that ass. Mark Antony. I'm sure they had to do some kind of partying or socializing sure. where they invited people They did all the time. Places. All the time. Never you. Nope. Do you think maybe J-Lo said something? No. Nope. I just think you? that Booger is that way. Or was he not allowed to have any of his friends in any of the gatherings? I don't know. Did he get, not get to do that? I don't know. Well, there some... was a whole thing with, like, they have their friends in J-Lo. Hey, who, you know, who even cares? That's that I wanted to be J-Lo, but it was kind of funny to me. Right. That, like, all that J-Lo connection, and we never got to do anything. Not, didn't even get close. Well, something yeah. tells me Robin's right. I don't think Booker had a lot of leverage there. I don't think he could dictate who, yeah, then what good who is hung it? out. <laughs> <laughs> boo. Boo. Friggin' boo. Friggin' boo. Listen, boo. thanks for listening. Thanks for coming out tonight. We, uh, we have one more band that we'd like to... Uh... I let Booger meet Stamos. I, you know, like I'm, I let all these guys meet all the famous types. Yeah, you don't segregate your friends. No, and I invite them to everything. You then, should do but now to... I don't invite anybody to anything anymore because nobody invites me to anything. <laughs> I decided, why am I the sap? 
Well, he probably had a couple of cool invitations to events. Sure. Yeah. You know. But not. But but I don't get invited. Um, showcase for you tonight. But um, <laughs> never heard of Velvet Revolver before. Um, but thank you for coming out. We appreciate it very much. Cabby, give him the noise. What the f is up, New Jersey? Now it's the end of the night, so Cabby has lost his voice. Cabby, be an idiot. <laughs> What's up, New Jersey? <laughs> Come on, was this not a kick ass show so far? He can't even yell anymore. He's done. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> he's out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> he blew it all in the beginning. I can't, New Jersey. We told you to save your yelling for Velvet Revolver. <laughs> or what the f? You blew all your yelling on Papa Come Roach. On corn, huh? Biatch. Dickies. Listen, it's the holidays. Don't forget to give to the homeless. And I got a special, special holiday message for you. Dickies. Pay your taxes. <laughs> Pay your taxes. They don't even know what he's talking about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Velvet Revolver's coming out next. Merry Christmas. Dickies. Making all those tax jokes. Meanwhile, he's probably going to end up in jail. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's what got him in trouble in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's living his last days of freedom. Yeah. Big rebel. <laughs> well, he thinks everybody's, he's so famous, everybody's in on the joke, too. He's like, pay your taxes. He's like, what are you talking about? Aren't you living every moment of the cabbie saga? <laughs> hey, Mike. Yo. What's up? Hey, I'm calling about the Tillman thing. What about it? I want to know if he's as outraged as I am about the fact that uh, somebody in his own killed him. Well, what? Uh, no, that, that there, there are people who die under friendly fire all the time. That, right, that, right. Uh, what, oh, what's I, you, Howard. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, what's, hey, now. Hey, now. But well, what's annoying is the cover-up. Exactly. Yeah, how the government spins things. Exactly. I think I think the really biggest thing that we can do as men is to not send any of our boys over there to be, you know, to be humiliated and to be dishonored this way. I mean, we were making such a big thing about how he gave up all this money to become an American, and to, or not to become American, but to go over there and be patriot, patriotic. And then all of a sudden, the way he died is so unhonorable that we cover it up and, dis, and disrespect him. It's number absolutely... one, the way he died is not dishonorable. No, it isn't. I mean, uh, number, two, me... number two, Pat Tillman walked away from a $3.5 million football contract to go fight in Afghanistan. He's truly... The biggest, a... biggest hero of our of our of our time a I real agree. american hero and it's a real shame that he died under friendly fire in afghanistan it's, but, it's, but the real shame is our government our government well, is that's the to... shame that's the shame and if you watch 60 minutes last night what's another big shame is 50 year olds being drafted Did oh you yeah see them? i was gonna say before the God. dylan thing that 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 report was crazy they're gonna there's gonna be a draft i told you that before uh, the election because yeah. we don't have enough troops that's a sure sign that they don't have enough able-bodied people to fight the war. So what's happened is the guys who were basically out of the military, they're on the reserve, guys 48 years old, 50-year-old woman, they're forcing them to go over to Iraq. And, uh, you know, I, I try to say this to Mark Harris, but he was in a gay rage. You know, <laughs> all these guys who scream about how you must support the war. If you're going to support the war in Iraq, you should be over there fighting it. Mark is willing to pat the butt of every guy who gets on the boat to yeah. go over. There's no reason why he can't serve. That is his support. No reason why he's not over there. Good job. Go ahead. Go. Yeah. It's 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 an easy decision to make when you don't have to go fight. Well, no, it's not a matter of that. You know, I'm, I've been willing to stick my neck out any time. It's just that I, don't, I, I just can't believe a government... I can't believe it because I, I live in America and I see what happens every day. Well, but it's it, not right. They should never cut. You know, one of the things I learned from Richard Nixon's experience in the White House, one of the things I learned, obviously a lot of people didn't, is that you never lie. You can't right. lie. you got to come clean right away and say, hey, Mr. Tillman died in friendly fire. And not only lie, but, you know, create a whole fantasy story yeah. around it. Yeah. It's it's I, not right I, and, it's, uh, and it dishonors everyone. Thank you, Mike. All right. We got the news for you now. We're going to... Uh, sad actually. Really sad. Oh, that, sad. that Tillman story is just heartbreaking. Yeah, it does even bust your balls more when you know the guy had a three and a half million dollar contract. He was a really good player. Yeah. Hey. In his prime. And the thought of friendly fire makes me nuts. But I imagine that happens more than we know. 
Well, it has to. I mean, you've got several different lines, everybody firing at those guys. Obviously, sometimes you're going to have some of your people stuck in between. Yeah. And that's what happened to him. They were trying to get out of some situation, and he was on Howard, that last line. I'm, I have a question I want to ask you. Can you help me uh, give me some money for a webcam? What? Uh, I was wondering if you could give me some money for a webcam. Hey, Wendy. Yes? Let me get this straight. You want you want to broadcast over the web with a web camera? Yes. If I give you money, though, you got to put it on my website. That's what I'm going to do. Not your website. My website. Your website. That's what I was going to do. Damn, I'd, I'd want to see that Dude. on the web. You want to watch Wendy any time of the day you want? Immediately. Yeah, like you, yeah you go on howardstern.com. <laughs> it's like a re retard camera. And you just keep the, cam do you keep the camera on all the time in your room? Yes, I will. And your mom says it's okay? Yeah. Like you're gonna be naked and stuff. Yep. <laughs> you, uh, well, I mean, how many cameras are you gonna get? You're not gonna put one in the shower. <laughs> My retard is naked. <laughs> yes, maybe I will, Robin. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even want you to be naked. <laughs> I have a I, I won't be naked. I'll just uh, be on your website, you know, so you can see me and so you can see what I do. And you'll do sexy poses. Yes. Not only do we, we, we don't want you naked, we, we want you to wear as many articles of clothing as you could get. <laughs> I can do that for you, Artie. <laughs> All, right. All right, so let me get this straight. I get you a camera, you're going to stick it on your computer, and then we can watch you, watch you on howardstern.com. Yes. All right, I'll do it. All right. Let me, give me a week. All right. Get you hooked up. All right. Later. Later. Now, I'm sure somebody put her I up with that for some other on, reason. God damn it! You promise you won't eat that camera? Oh, she's gone. My retard ate her camera! You know, somebody put her up to that because they want to broadcast. Hey, Lee. Hey, how you doing, guys? Boy, I tell you, the phone connections today aren't that great. Can you hear me now? A little better, but not great. Howard? Yeah. There you go. Man, I was a little skeptical about buying that Sirius radio, but that's what they're going to replace you with, man. I just threw my regular radio out the window. I'm going leaving work early today. <laughs> going to go buy Sirius. <laughs> there you go, Lee. Thank you. That's, that's just horrible. Well, let me turn to Dr. Gilda. Dr. Gilda, what do you think? Let me tell you what a mouth. Hmm. Dr. Gilda. No, what do you owe your success? What do you owe your success? <laughs> and what do you owe your success? <laughs> How could you be successful? She's on the Mark Harris show. Come on. Where's a... Uh... I lost my tape of the Mark Harris show, I guess. I love that. Hmm. Nothing going right today. Thank God you're not a teenage drama queen. I My like ex-wife called me a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are too. I am? In what way? Tell me. You overreact. You dwell on things. You Throw things out scream. Of and... I scream? What do you mean? Rebecca! Does that at least bring the point across? No. What point? Well, whatever I'm so reacting. <laughs> oh, it just makes me laugh to tell you the truth. Really? Whenever I'm so reacting... Do is. I get you very angry? You do. I at do. At times, yes, you do. Uh, could you give me an example of when, when you that don't happens? let me go out when I want, even though you're getting a little better at that? You don't. I have the most ridiculous curfew ever for a 17 year old. Really? My and dad. My we have the same. Curfew. Don't you yeah. think that your uh, respective fathers really are very cautious because we love you? I mean, we're going to be 18 pretty soon. You can't just throw us in the world and be like, hey, you know. There but it Rebecca, is. Rebecca, I'm not just throwing you Well, in the I world. understand that, but throwing I'm not. Throwing you on radio, maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to have a 10 o'clock curfew for, you know, when I'm 18. That's, Ooh, that's crazy. crazy. No. I'll, I'll be out with kind DJ. Of like... <laughs> oh, did you ever hear some of my songs? <laughs> it's horrible. No, I actually, I haven't. Wow. I'd listen to that. See, I like it. How do they go come from the curfew talk to his song? Because everything's about him. Dad, I don't like my curfew. Have you ever heard my songs? 
<laughs> I didn't get the connection there. Rebecca. Rebecca. I mean, There's a reason my best friend hasn't heard your music yet. <laughs> you never heard my songs? I've never heard There's songs. There's nothing normal about him. A poor girl. Rebecca. It's the only thing she's known. Thank goodness. <laughs> she Her has dad. nothing to compare it to. That's my dad. <laughs> Yeah, that's like everybody else's dad. I'm embarrassed by my dad, so I can't imagine what it's like to have Mark as a dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I used to get embarrassed when my father would come to a Little League game after work with some sheetrock on him from work. And <laughs> if it was Mark Harris in that yellow scarf. Everything my dad does embarrasses me. <laughs> well, he was telling me that he had it all set up and they were wearing matching outfits. No. See, it would have been wonderful. Rebecca. Imagine your father showing up and something you have to do with that <laughs> scarf and those glasses. Well, well just about your, your you color coordinating with your father. Let's take a pause, and I want you to listen to this Michael Jackson song. Okay. <laughs> oh, Michael, oh, Michael, don't bother boys. <laughs> boys. Oh, Michael, oh, Michael, they're not your toys. You made some... Ay, ay, ay. Poor kids. And I suppose she's around when he's composing, so yeah. she hears this all the time. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's not enough psychiatrists in the world to straighten that whole situation out. <laughs> you need a team. Yeah. <sighs> team of, like, German. <laughs> yeah, like, actual... They need to dig up Freud. Yeah. <laughs> pump him full of life. Exactly. And, <laughs> what? You've got your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do some news. It's time for Robin in the News. Big breaths in the morning. Oh, wait a second. Here's Brad with an announcement. Brad? Who's Brad? Yes, Brad. Brad and Syracuse, we're about to lose you. It's uh, almost 10 o'clock, and they kill you every day now. Yeah, five more minutes Horrible. in Syracuse. By the way, Syracuse, coming up, a $3 million giveaway. <laughs> oh, no. no. You're not going to Oh, you should. No. That would be awesome. I'm not going to do that. F95X. This is horrible. But I am going to read the email. And what email? There's a lot of email. And then oh, I'm gonna I play a, I'm gonna play a song for Syracuse. Oh, I love you, man. Thank All you. All right, love you too. Talk to you later, Howard. Sorry we can't be with you, but our our parents have decided that we can't talk. Uh we'll be back. All right, I'll see, see you, you tomorrow. When you're back. See, Bye. see you in the morning. Definitely. Bye. <laughs> That's so funny to me. I'm gonna cut everyone off. I wonder what great music they go to. They go to the Rhino show. Noise in bed when <laughs> chewing yeah. on some snacks and tickling front and back. Right. So. Some guy wrote me a note says he works. He used to work with Rhino. Oh yeah. Says uh, he didn't like him. He was a douchebag. Wow. He would always tell me made up stories about how him and Howard would hang out off the air and that he would give Howard good ideas for his show. What? After I smacked his ass in the ratings, he called me and started crying. I have audio tape of this if you guys don't believe me. I have really? to hear it. And, uh... Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to read the rest of this. You know what? I don't have to sink to that level. I don't have to sink. I'm going to take the high road. Don't okay? sink, yeah. I'm not. I'm going to take the high road. If you want me to read it, I'll sink. And <laughs> You're ready. Yeah. Whoa. Hey, guys, uh, this is an email. What about the China doll video? When am I going to see that thing? Oh. I got to get it. I go, no, you don't. Is that for sale? Yeah. I don't know where you get it, but I saw a copy of it. I saw a promotional copy. Promotion. It's pretty funny. Howard, when you told Benji to shut up the other day, and you almost threw Jeff the drunk out, it seems like you are you are tired of putting up with the crap you have for 25 years, and now that you've made the move, you're sounding exciting and rejuvenated. I can't wait for you to move. You're going to be on fire. Fire. Because <laughs> a guy who thinks Montel Williams' ex-wife is hot. She is. I saw that picture. I've already entered her into my spank bank. That's hot. <laughs> that little Jew boy she's with is so damn lucky to have such a hot older woman with big, beautiful breasts. God, she's hot. That's hot. Where can we see more pictures of Montel Williams' ex-wife? <laughs> and when can we see her on E? The Jewish kid That's she was hot. with seemed black, didn't he? Yeah. He might be black. I think he's black. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Uh, did, the, did you ever find out from Jenna Jameson if she has cancer? Was the psychic right? Well, I'll tell you what. We did call Jenna. We wanted to get her on the air, and then publicist said she's unavailable. No, oh. what you think that could mean she's having a, a health problem? No, she said she said that she's unavailable this week. Oh, okay. So she's having some stuff done, but that she might try to call towards the end of the week. Okay. All right. Um. Jeff, uh, Jeff in the porno scene on Friday was freaking hilarious. I've never laughed so hard in my life. Bravo. <laughs> Some people thought it sunk. Uh, Jeff the drunk is a disturbing and mean drunk. Mean drunks are not funny. Keep his stupid ass off your show. Uh, Howard, when the porno girls were in with Jeff the drunk, it was impossible to follow. The two, seg the two segments had to be cut at least 25 times. It was impossible to follow. My head is going to explode. Somebody rape me. Howard, this is a fat black here. This is a fat, this is fat black here. I'm 22, I'm fat, and my women is having a baby that I didn't want. You are the only person who gets me, though, my boring, effed up life. I can't wait for you to go to Sirius and take over the airwaves. Thanks for making me laugh and not wanting to blow my brains out. Someone who's got incredibly bad grammar and spelling. Jeff the Drunk was amazing. Play that every day, that song he sang. Wow. That song he sang to you, Robin. They like the song. Yeah. Everybody loved Nicole Bass and her sex call. Fred was the best. This morning driving to work, I'm going to hit a pole laughing so hard at Fred being Nicole <laughs> with the telephone sex. For all you do, Fred, this one's for you. So there you go. Hey, Howard, you hook-nosed bastard. Les Moonves' chick is an Asian, not an Oriental, you racist prick. <laughs> I didn't even know. Sorry. I don't, I don't get that. I didn't, when did Oriental and Asian become a, an insult? I uh, actually was uh, schooled on that one by um, a reporter from WPIX like 10 years ago. She told me Asians are people and Oriental are things. Like You could say it's an Oriental rug or it's Oriental food, but you can't call Chinese people <laughs> Who Oriental. Who figured that out? Yeah, and they didn't tell anybody. Hey, do you want to um, – I don't want to harp on the subject, but Syracuse, do you want to – like you know how you just mentioned satellite radio and you want to hear how they play it up there? Yeah. It's really funny. They just edit out the actual words in the middle of your sentence. Ninety-nine percent of the show, there's nothing shocking. If honesty is shocking, then that's shocking to you. No, Secondly, with success, I'm not. And with my success, when I go to, uh. <laughs> let alone the stuff I did a year ago. Man. So you feel going to? I wish you luck. Thank you. Uh, you feel that uh, cursing will be part of your venue. And Absolutely. Okay. And it doesn't take away from your laugh. Now that there's nothing shocking anymore. You got to laugh, man. That, that is just, I mean, funny. That's but hey, that's fine with me. They're, Do that. They're going to just make people turn the radio off. I, it's it's insanity. Oh it's like a bad Saturday Night Live sketch. Yeah. It's insanity. Well, hey, what can I tell you? Do what you want. Do what you want. It does not bother me. I'm not talking about radio because I'm trying to sell radios. I'm talking about it because it's going on and people are curious about it. They're calling but, more attention to it by right. believing and, it. And I got it's a so question. Hot, it's so yeah. dumb. They're taking the show off at 10 o'clock. Right. They're editing the show to the point where it's unlistenable. So when the next ratings book comes out and the ratings have gone down because people... Who cares? No, how did, how did they get you? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Did they and, then they, and then they can charge less for their commercials. Right. So did they spite you? Yeah. I guess somehow in their minds they have. You, I would love to interview someone about that. Because I can't imagine putting up with that for long. No. It's crazy. Well, maybe we should save them the trouble. Why don't we, if someone just goes, hey, I just got radio and it is great. <laughs> Hey, Mike. Mike. Yes, hey now. Hey now. Oh, my. I just want you to know I just bought a serious radio. No, don't say that. Hey now. Oh, my. You just got bleeped. You just oh. got bleeped. Go. I, oh, just, I, I just got... I just got a hey now. <laughs> yeah. Very, very excited. Best thing I ever did. I love it. You're the greatest. And now, on top of you, I get all my football games. There you go. And Thank I want to go, Artie. I did a three-team teaser on Raiders. I tried to bother Jack Taylor to get by them all night. There you go. That's a good Sunday. Can I ask how uh, can I ask Audi a quick question? Sure. Uh, Seahawks and Cowboys, seven. What do you like? <laughs> ah, Seahawks. Seahawks, one and seven? Yeah. 42 and a half over under. Over. I love you, man. 
Bye. Hey, Howard, big fan. Can I get one of those iPods? Okay. Uh, I don't have any left. I just looked. Hello. I would have given you one, but I don't have any. Hey, I love you, man. I love you, too. Hot, Bye. wet bitches. Right. All right, Robin, let's do some news for everybody but Syracuse, Providence, and other markets. All right. We won't mention our move to... Yeah. Joe Piscopo has some regrets. I'm seeing in the paper today that he says he wants to change the way Italian-Americans are portrayed in movies and on TV, and now he is embarrassed by some of these stereotypical characters he has played. What, what is he talking about? <laughs> he's, that's what embarrasses him? At all the stuff he's done? Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> he played Frank Sinatra as a mafioso, attended a panel discussion at uh, Seton Hall University in New Jersey at which participants complained that prejudice against Italians is uh, tacitly accepted in pop culture. Are, are Italians really uh, sort of treated badly? No. I, I, do I, I don't know about this. Yeah, I mean, tell a black person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, you're kidding me. Italians are upset that you about you guys what? are having a lot of trouble. I you take crap. I'm not upset about it. I mean, I always thought the mafia connection was kind of cool. It makes you a little afraid to mess with a guy who's got an Italian last name. But also, you don't think every Italian's in the mob, do no. you? No. First of all, Robin, there's no such thing as the mafia. <laughs> okay? You know, it's funny. I went to a movie once, and as I was walking in, there were a bunch of uh, one of those Italian groups was protesting. It was like a bad spoof of The Godfather, where mm -hmm. they make fun of Italians. And the guy was, he goes, you shouldn't go into this theater. How can you go in there? I said, what's your favorite movie of all time? He goes, The Godfather. I go, then how can you protest this? I've never been offended by anything as an Italian, especially when you see what goes on with other cultures. He should apologize for that song he made, the Kimberly song. <laughs> well, you know what this is all about, right? He's, he wants he, to run for governor. Right. right. He's trying to fix himself up for that run. Governor Piscopo. <laughs> you know what? I thought Governor Schwarzenegger was crazy, so you never know. Governor Piscopo. <laughs> I'll burn inside for you every day. I don't know what to do. How to have her. I don't her. know what to say. He's burning inside. You know I need you, girl. Well, he did. This yeah. <laughs> oh, I need you. Whoa. Wow. Kimberly. Yeah. Kimberly. Kimberly. How does the governor explain? Kimberly. What? Going out That's with a babysitter? Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. She was hot. <laughs> she went out with his hot babysitter. Oh, yeah, she was hot. You're only 16, but you can drive a car. I don't understand. Oh, your daddy don't see. No, he don't see you. I don't understand what your daddy... I don't understand what your daddy don't see. <laughs> what he do see is an old man coming to take out his young daughter. So what if I'm 43? <laughs> He's like 43 years old. <laughs> I'm talking that about is. rape, that's statutory. You're a woman, I'm a man, Kim, and take my hand. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. He's doing for a wow. Singing about his hot girlfriend. I'm going to Sydney! <laughs> Wendy's in this song. All right. Whatever. Well, he did uh, think about running for governor a little while ago, and now he says um, he does see a problem with the portrayal of Italian Americans in film. And he says he's now working on a movie that portrays an Italian-American family from North Jersey, but they've run into difficulties because they are not gangster-related. Hey, Bill. Howard. Yeah. Bill in Syracuse. As of right now, Bubba, you're still on the air. Uh-oh. Oh, what happened? I'm hearing some news for the first time in a week, and it sounds great. Well, I liked it better when they took us off. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> well, I didn't. You're I right? know, but I just thought it was great. Yeah. Way to ruin the joke. Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> probably, to... Actually, probably your next commercial break. That's probably when they'll cut oh, it. Oh, they're waiting for the appropriate time. Then we won't take a commercial break. <laughs> yeah, just keep going. All right, I tell you what, I'll keep you on hold. I'll check in with you every couple of minutes to see if we're still on. Okay. All right, hold on. Oh, what I'm seeing here is Joe's movie is having trouble getting made because it's not gangster related. Oh, yeah, okay. There it's you. having trouble getting made because it's a Joe Piscopo movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, Artie, that was wrong to point that out. <laughs> 
Well, I'm saying that no one's making the Artie Lang movie. I mean, it's not easy to get a movie made. Did you hear about uh, Adina Menzel and the threats she has gotten? She is the star of the Broadway show Wicked, and she's married to actor Tay Diggs. She's white, he's black. And apparently she got three letters in the past uh, week or so which threaten the theater they're performing in and threaten her husband's life because uh, whoever the author is is upset that she's married to a black man. Well, let me just say I'm sorry for one of the letters at least. Oh, stop it. Um, they did say she went on and performed yesterday, and it was one of her best performances ever. They're calling her a gutsy Broadway performer for going on. She entered the theater under heavy security. They said the letters came from three different locations. Hmm. Somebody said, oh, I think that's horrible who was at the theater. They thought that we had gotten past that in this country. But apparently we haven't. During the election in Alabama, I think it was, uh, there was a bill on the um, ballot to strike down the language about segregation in Alabama. You know, it was a state law that you had segregated toilets and segregated education. And there was a bill to get that language out of the state constitution, and it lost. It was <laughs> voted down. People like that language. Reminds them of happier times, I guess. <laughs> yeah, by 1,850 votes. Can you it imagine? Fa- it, it failed. They need to vote on that? Yeah, they got They have to. That's the way it works. You have to vote it out if it was voted in. So, uh, so far they haven't been able to do it. So the segregationist language that isn't enforced is still there. Yeah. How's gay marriage doing there? <laughs> I'm sure that's doing great. Don't think that's happening at all. Tomorrow, Joe Perry of Aerosmith will be here. Ooh, how nice. Yeah, he's going to stop by say hi to us. Good for him. And uh, also Mr. Gay Universe contestants will be here. Mr. Late- Gay. Mr. Gay Universe uh, later this week. I'm surprised that you're into that. <laughs> yeah, we're going to check out what's going on there. <laughs> we're open-minded. Yeah, why not? We'd like to meet some gay Mr. Gay Universe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the winner right there. <laughs> I was looking at this in the paper today. It's very difficult to be a politician. Mayor Bloomberg, who just got back from Croatia, where he was over, you know, going there to uh, try to influence the Olympic Committee to bring the Olympics to New York in 2012. He got off a plane and went right to a black Baptist church up in Harlem because he wants to be reelected, And they're, you know, giving him credit today because he sat through the entire service. He didn't just come to talk to the people and leave like most politicians do. He got there at 1045 and stayed for the whole thing. So that's one of the things you have to do. Then he left there and went to an IHOP and had breakfast. Wow. So. Guy really wants it. He's a good, good mayor. And yeah. He's a billion, multi-billionaire, and he... He's willing to go sit through all that stuff. He's willing to do anything to yeah. get the job. Interesting man. Yeah. There's a guy who just won $149 million in one of those big lottery jackpots. And it was right after he had declared bankruptcy. He was a parking lot attendant who I guess was really down on his luck. Uh, about to declare bankruptcy, bought a lottery ticket, and he actually won $149 million. But they're now saying he is more miserable since winning this money a few weeks ago. Wah, wah, wah. His whole it's not life has it, fallen fun. apart. He was happier being bankrupt. Oh, come on. No, yeah. he wasn't. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He's living in a in a hotel suite. And they say he has, he's living there with a nephew or a cousin or something, and he drinks about five or six beers a day, and they smoke like chimneys, and he very rarely comes out. He's bothered by the press that have been hounding him. Oh, Sounds like a great life. His wife just left him, and nope. I suppose she's due for half. Yeah, she's taking <laughs> half, but so what? He'll have 30 million bucks? Yeah. Like, I think they said after taxes and everything, he'll be left with a $60 million fortune. Yeah. Give her the 30 that he's going to have to pony up, and then, uh, hey, go live your life. Go have a nice time. Live on the interest. Drink Actually, it looks like yeah. it's 29.5. So, like, 30 is what he'll get. 
Oh, you mean 149 boils down to 30? I don't believe so. Yes, that's what it says here. Wah, wah, my 30 billion won't fit in my wallet. <laughs> wah, I got no wife and I'm living in a hotel suite. Wah. No, actually, you're right. It's yeah. ha- the half would be 30. Right. I mean, that's okay. like, the, if you say tomorrow you can have 30 million bucks, no wife, and you're drinking in a hotel suite all day. Great. I'll take it. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's real horrible. Where do I sign up? They're all saying he's miserable. First of all, my first bit of advice is get out of the $349 a day suite. Yeah, what's he doing Yeah, there? go to the Mandarin Oriental. What are you doing? Right. And don't, but, I mean, don't squander a penny of this thing. You got $30 million. Go get yourself a nice place to live. Not too crazy. Two million place in Boca. Two million dollar place. And go live. And go have a nice life. Find a nice girlfriend. Yeah, buy something. Uh. Yeah, I don't know why he's so depressed. Take a couple of elocution lessons or something. Learn how to class yourself up now. Sounds like he needs to take some Xanax. Get his pull himself together. Right, I mean, dude. Life's a lark. Got oh, it made. Get a whore. Yeah, you did win the lotto. Hmm. <laughs> wah wah wah. <laughs> Anything else, Robin? Yes. You know, when I read stories like this, I I think to myself, for this, you had children. A popular high school honor student has been charged in the fatal bludgeoning of her mother. Investigators say she wrote of her twisted hatred for her mom on her vicious website blog. Mm. She was an A student and a star athlete, and nobody would have guessed that she was harboring these horrible thoughts about her mother. But, wah, wah, wah. Uh, she managed to uh, convince two of her ex-boyfriends that she was being abused terribly by her mom, and they bludgeoned her to death. And for a while, she was trying to keep quiet about it and just sitting and writing on her computer, but finally she confessed. Nice. And so uh, I guess she'll be going off to jail. I know. There you was know, a survey. Rid, her mo- rid of her mom. There was a survey done among uh, parents. Uh-huh. And they said, uh, do you really enjoy being with your children or do you like having children? And they said, uh, this was shocking to me, the majority of parents said they do not enjoy their children. In fact, I think it was only women that were uh, part of this survey. That's right. And they were not real enthusiastic about the kids. Because you reap what you sow. You know, I mean, it's like... Whatever mistakes you've made, they'll show up in spades in those kids. <laughs> you think so? Uh, yo, I know so. Yeah. I mean, I know, you know, I know parents who have totally screwed it up, and they just can't stand being around their kids. Unlike me, the perfect parent. So nothing, nothing objectionable. I love my children. angels. That's right. <laughs> Got to take a break. We'll come back. We'll finish the news for you right after. Oh, let me see if we're still on in Syracuse. We still there? Howard. Yeah. They just caught you right now because... Uh, just now, you said you're going to break. Right. They just caught you now, uh. and you're off now. Ah. Uh. All so, right. Well, all right. You got I knew to... you'd make it to the break, but that's what they're doing. So what we got to do is get that break in before 10 and then run right on through. Okay, pal. I got it. All right. Thanks, Howard. Thank you, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. We'll be back right after this. Yeah. They're still writing about it and talking about it. it. Did, yeah. True. The people are going to calling the Met Clubhouse a potential circus this year. <laughs> yeah, a lot of guys want to. Yes, a lot of guys want to join the Mets just so they can get on that lineup. Oh my of, God, yeah. Yeah, you know, guys who are going to have sex with uh, Anna Benson. Well, you know, Chris is really in a pickle because all of his teammates would now turn him in. Yep. Oh, I'd report him. I- I'd do it even if he wasn't cheating. I'd report. <laughs> and I don't know how to tell you this, but Chris was with a woman in Milwaukee. Hey, Scott. Hey, Howard. Um, I'm up in Syracuse. I wish my fellow listeners could hear this, but uh, on the 95X website, on the Rhino page, at the bottom right-hand corner, there's an actual link to buy certain equipment to listen to a certain type of radio. Oh, really? Which, That's odd. Yeah, it's very odd. I don't know if management missed it or they're keep. I don't know, but it's just really strange. Hmm. Talk about, you know, being a hypocrite. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but, how come he's putting me down for going to Sirius, and then there's a link to to it on its web on his webpage? Right. It's not to the to the Sirius site, but it's to a retail site to buy the equipment to listen to it. Yeah, yeah. because they're just getting pissed off because I'm leaving. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. No one, no, one, no one knows what to do about that. Hey, Ricky, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. How you doing? Hey. Howard, uh, how is it that when you... Hello? Ricky? Mm. I wonder what happened there. I don't know. I think he hung up on himself. <laughs> Ricky's being silent. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Wow. Hey, uh, 
Bob, what's happening? Hello? I guess it's not Bob. But anyway, what's happening? Hey, how you going? How you doing? This is Joe in Philadelphia. Hey, Joe. Hello, hello. I just wanted you to know that the show is still really great down here. They're not cutting it up at all. I listen every day, and I'm going to listen until and, until I can't anymore, and i got to go buy a serious radio. All right, Joe. Thanks, man. Hey, you think I could get an iPod for my for my daughter? I'd be happy to give you one. I just don't have any more. Oh. Ran out. Thanks, man. Good I gave, luck. I gave them all out. I'm not really good at uh, supply management. I get something to give away, and I just give it away. Yeah, it's not held throughout the show. Yeah. I'll have some other stuff to give away. But that happened to be a particularly good prize. Uh, what else is in the news, Robin? Uh, the... Um People who are investigating Michael Jackson for child molestation charges did a, an exhaustive search once again of his house almost a year after charges were filed against him and asked for a swab of his cheek. They got some DNA material. Let me tell you, what a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I guess they must have some kind of DNA evidence they want to link him to oh. that would put him... Um, with the child who's accusing him of molesting. The police swabbed my cheeks, <laughs> buttocks. Oh. <laughs> what a Penis. job. I can't imagine. Who was the guy mm. who got to do that job? Oh, oh, here he comes. Watch out, boys, he'll pinch your butt. Oh, oh, here he comes. He's a man gobbler. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It's man gobbler. A man gobbler. Yeah. <laughs> the, new hit, the new hit single. They say that the Iraqi elections are still going to go off as planned in the month of January. Here is Iraqi interim foreign minister um, Zabari, who tells the BBC that his country will be ready for its elections next month, even though uh, violence is mounting. A4. Zabari. Zabari. We are not underestimating the security uh, threats to the electorate. To the whatever. Mm. Yes. Here's a sailor who <laughs> is stationed in San Diego, and he says he will disobey orders and resign today from the U.S. Navy. Petty Officer Pablo pa Parades says that uh, he is taking a stand because he thinks the war in Iraq is wrong. A5. I'm going to show up in civilian clothes, refusing to wear a uniform, hand in my ID card, let the person on watch know that I resign, that I quit, which is not something we can do. But uh, I'm pretty much going to play the eyes and see what they do about it. Oh, I know what they're going to do about it. They're going to throw you in jail. Hey, Jenks. Hey, good morning, Howard. Hey, when you call the Syracuse station, um, like they they transfer you directly over to a recording that they play if you ask if they if you ask about the show. Oh, really? Yeah, I taped it. Here it is. One message. Message one. Good morning, Seattle so Broadcasting. Yeah, I'm still here on Howard. Are you, are you guys going to start playing Howard? I'm going, please. I'm 95X General Manager, Darren Smith. Allow me to share our thoughts on the Howard Stern Show. We're sorry that he's leaving broadcast radio, but that's his decision. Now it just seems like he's spending too much time each morning trying to sell people satellite radio and subscriptions. So we decided to start the music each morning at 10 a.m. The 95X Air staff did not make this decision. They and I hope you'll continue to listen and support 95S as you have for 27 years. All right. If you'd still like to comment, please leave your name and your phone number and your comment. Thank you for calling. That's it. Oh, it's so silly. Yeah, like they really care what comment you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe your comment will influence. That's horrible. I, I mean, mm. I mean, why can't this all just be, like, done really, like... like Classy. Like, um, like, like when NBC ends Friends or when... when uh, I don't know. I don't know why it's got to be stunning. That's, but that's radio. I got to tell you, radio has never really risen to the level of its media partners. It's not on a class level with newspapers or TV or alternate forms of media. Well, I'm packing my bags. I'm headed out to Syracuse for a little while. Are you? Yeah, we're going to get things straightened out over there. Oh yeah, yeah. What are you? Doing? What are you up to? Uh oh, Jags. Well, you know, prank phone calls. I'm just going to make sure that the fans all rise up and demand to hear the show after 10. Because you're talking, you still have a year left. Those poor people over there aren't going to get the news every day. 
Uh, well, I, going there, how are you going to get that done? Well, you know, rally the fans together and, you know, protest. I think Jenks is saying he's holding rallies in yeah. Syracuse. I'm not too old to do that yet. You carpetbagger. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. Is, uh, He'll end up mayor of Syracuse. Jenks is initiating shock and awe. There, there are a bunch of meat whistles up there. Depriving the fans of the show. Nobody See, it's good when you have no job. You can do whatever you want. Hey, look at him. He's going to Syracuse. Yeah. Just don't don't miss a trivia night, Jenks. No, I won't. I have to be back every Wednesday night to do trivia text next. <laughs> Thanks, All right, trip. Jenks, give us a report from the field. Will do. All right, there you go, Captain Jenks, taking a, a, a listener's uh, stance. And yes. Going up to Syracuse to help the people there. Even though he can still get the show. He's <laughs> going up to Syracuse. <laughs> Stop the revolution. Stop the revolution. Where can the fans see Jenks? They have no idea where to get a hold of him. <laughs> oh, he'll find them. Yeah, Jenks <laughs> finds him. He can sit at home and make crank, uh, crank phone calls. <laughs> Jeez. He's changing his base of operation. And hey, maybe his luck will change up in Syracuse. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> With his gas station appear, uh, experience, I'm sure he can get a job there. Plenty of gas stations in Syracuse? Yeah. Syracuse, be on the lookout for a three-foot-tall man. <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? Just talked about one man who's trying to get out of the military, but gays are trying to stay in the military. The uh, don't ask, don't tell policy is being challenged in court. Twelve GIs have been booted for admitting that they are gay, no. and that case is going to the Supreme Court. Here is Stephen Rawls, who is a spokesperson for Service Members Legal Defense Network. He says that the uh, don't ask, don't tell policy is wrong. D3. The suit is predicated on four constitutional challenges. And alleges that the military... Did you know this guy was gay? <laughs> well, he's the lawyer of oh, the, the lawyer. spokesperson for okay. this group. Military's don't ask, don't tell policy <laughs> violates service members' rights to free speech, equal protection, due process, and privacy. Let me tell you what a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> due process. <laughs> so uh, the courts will be taking up that argument. Mm. Also in the news, um, there's an intelligence reform bill that's in uh, Congress. It's uh, the result of the 9-11 Commission and 9-11 families are very anxious to see this bill pass, but it has been stalemated to some extent. Senator John McCain says that has more to do with politics and committee chairman losing power. D2. Despite the rhetoric, this is all about power, which has got to do with money here in Washington. Whoever controls the budget controls the power, and that's what this is all about. A lot of people I know believe he'll be uh, the next president after Bush, John McCain. Really? Yeah, a lot of people think that. Sean, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Hey. I'm from the Syracuse area, but you're coming in really good up uh, on the Rochester station, 94.1, so I just want to tell your listeners. Oh, good. There you go. So if you can't hear us in uh, Syracuse, tune Try over Rochester. to the Rochester station. Thank you. 94.1. F Rhino. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Jeff. Hey. Hey. Hey now, Howard. Hey now. Uh... Hey, when Jenks is done with Syracuse, you can send him out here to York. Maybe he can show me the ropes. Yeah, York would be another market run by Citadel. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they kept you on till the last commercial today. But usually, what they do is like, if you take a break, like quarter of or ten of ten, they'll come back from that, and they have like a tape of you saying uh, uh, well, we didn't get to everything today, but there's always tomorrow. Well, and that's nice. Just go into music. Glad they're using my pre-tape stuff for to, to, against me. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're creating their own show. <laughs> hey, I what's, can't wait uh, to get... what's playing on your station? And in... uh, they just had Ozzy last time I checked. I can't listen to that. Once you're off, I just turn it off now. All right. Thank but you. We need you to bring the trucks around here. We'll make that a party, man. Yeah, Let's I know. I'm working on that. I'm talking to some people about that. Oh, that'd be super. All right, later. Hey, take care. What else is in the uh, news, Robin? Still talking about that intelligence bill. Here is Beverly Ackert. Her husband was killed in the attacks, and she has chilling words for Congress if they fail to pass the commission's intelligence reforms. B-5. I think that there's one group that be very much in favor of having this bill postponed yet another year, and, and the name of that group is Al-Qaeda. So there you go.
ago, they will continue debating that issue on Capitol Hill. Last night, uh, Kennedy, the Kennedy Center honored a number of people, including Elton John, John Williams, Warren Beatty, Ozzie Davis, and uh, Ruby D, and a couple of other people. Here, uh, Robert Downey Jr. got a lot of attention because the president is... Um, always in attendance at these Kennedy Center honors and of course you know how he feels about uh, gays and gay marriage so there he is having to sit at a play at a function where they're honoring Elton John and here's what Robert Downey Jr. had to say when talking about Elton John. See one. Elton, you have shown me a new way to walk down the winding road that is life, my life and yours too. Hmm. Well, where's the part about uh, the other first lady. Oh, oh. That's what that was supposed to be. No, no, I don't hear it. Oh, all right. Anyway, he said something about we're here to honor the other first lady, and uh, people thought that was a little inappropriate oh, in oh. front of the president. Oh, you know what? This president's partied plenty up until the age of 40. I think he's, <laughs> I think he's pretty familiar with that. I, I I really familiar with what? Gay with, people? With, with gay people, outrageousness, cocaine, marijuana, whatever. I don't know. I think he's seen it all. I don't think this is a guy who was... Uh, I don't think he's seen many gay people. <laughs> no, I bet you he has. <laughs> Down in Texas where he was partying, I don't know. Um, here's a little bit of the Kennedy Center Honors um, festivities. Billy Joel, who has teamed up with Elton John on a number of tours, sang Elton's Benny and the Jets. See too. I like when Billy does his songs. I like that, though. He's doing a good job. Kid yeah. Rock is... Uh, I just want Billy to sing Billy songs. Can cool. be heard on uh, Saturday, night, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. <laughs> Faye Dunaway <laughs> recalls working with Warren Beatty on uh, Bonnie and Clyde, C4. Hey, boy. What you doing with my mama's car? So I must have... Uh... Lock her up. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! That was a great movie. Uh, done something right because Warren decided to take a chance on me. And with that one act, Warren... You gave me my career. You created a monster. Yeah. You made everyone in Hollywood miserable <laughs> with that one act. Director uh, Steven Spielberg thanked composer John Williams for creating the great music for his film uh, films Star Wars, Jaws, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and E.T. He's earned his high place in our cultural landscape. And, John, you're the greatest thing that has ever happened to my... Who's the greatest thing? John Williams. Yeah. The composer. My career, and for that, I want to thank you. Everyone's thanking everyone. And here's Sean Puffy Combs, who uh, took the stage to thank Ozzy Davis and Ruby D. Ruby and Ozzy, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> Old. I promise you, you will be. Um, in page six today, they say that Britney Spears is upset with her dad. He uh, finally got out of rehab, and he's opened a smoothie restaurant. And apparently he told backers that uh, his famous daughter would be attending the shop three times a week in order to encourage business. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, so just yeah. a little bit upset with him. And you know what? She should show up and help the dude out. <laughs> Three times a week. What the hell? You're Britney Spears' dad, he's not trying to sponge off you. He's just trying to open up a smoothie shop. Let the guy Why? sell some smoothies. Why should she have to show up three times a week? He works there. Yeah, but it's her dad. Come on, help the guy out. He's, he's going around on Britney Spears' father like, yeah, get out of here. Kick him in the ass. <laughs> wow. I got to show up at my dad's smoothie shop. Wow. <laughs> I see her in the Inquirer every week drinking smoothies and eating ice cream. She might as well show up there and get something to eat. 
Usually it's milkshakes. Maybe she doesn't like smoothies. No. <laughs> Billy Crystal is on Broadway getting four stars in the post today as it's, a review. It's not funny. It's, it, it's not fun. Well, he's good. He's doing his stand-up act. Yes, he's doing a stand-up act. I'm just telling you that it's happened and he's getting good reviews. Man, hey, Broadway. He's doing his stand-up act on he's Broadway. He's on Broadway. He's a funny guy, though. I give him that. His stand-up is funny. Yeah, I'd actually like to see that. It sounds good. I would, too, but I don't want to get made fun of from the stage. <laughs> you think he'll make fun of you? I don't know. I, think I, kind of go, I want him out of here. <laughs> that would oh, be funny. I see Howard's in there. It's not fun. It's not funny. Imagine you get kicked out of a Broadway show. Yeah. <laughs> it's not funny. It's, it, it's not fun. <sighs> yeah, those ushers come down and get you out of your seat, wrestle you out of your yeah. seat. We, I don't want him here. <laughs> those little old ladies. Everybody stand up for Dan. They're coming here. <laughs> All right, anything else? The Nanny Reunion uh, will be aired on, I think it's Lifetime Television tonight. Yeah, the Nanny on, Reunion. Yeah, with Fran Drescher and the whole cast of The Nanny. That's got to be the lowest rated show of the week, right? <laughs> the Nanny Reunion. <laughs> Is there, is there a clamoring for that? I don't know. I just saw it was the there. The Nanny and... Reunion. I thought I'd tell everybody because obviously somebody thought that was a good idea. Hey, let's bring that back. <laughs> and at the box office this weekend, Nicolas Cage's National Treasure was number one at the box office for the third weekend in a row. Is that any good? I don't know anything about that. I haven't that. seen it. Hmm. Hey, uh, Raleigh. What's up, Howard? Hey, man. I was just wondering if Robin had heard through the news about the DJ up here in Cleveland almost killed himself by shoving his tongue on a bug zapper. No. No kidding. Well, it's just the extreme things these guys got to do to compete with you, I guess. Was he a morning guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, on uh, 92.3 up here, uh, Rover's uh, partner, Dieter. Rover and Dieter. Well, the Rover and Dieter show. show. Hey, we're going to get his listeners. We're going to bug zap ourselves. Well, I guess he did the 60 hertz shuffle for about 10 seconds, then he went unconscious. Wow. <laughs> this jockeys really do amaze me. That's why the industry gets no respect. It's like, you know, we'll do anything to get a listener, even bug zap ourselves. Well, now they're trying to reprimand the guy, the the, the main guy, his, his show, Rover. They're trying to reprimand him for putting him up to it. I don't think he held a gun to his head. Right. Well, I mean, it, later today, I'm going to be run over by a truck. <laughs> just because I, I'm so desperate for an audience, I don't know what to do. Hey, thanks, bro. All right. Later. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I'll be out in the street. I'm going to die now. Mark Harris should have zapped himself during his five minutes. <laughs> yeah, Mark doesn't realize the vicious um, medium he's getting into. We'll do anything for a listener, including Let kill me ourselves. Tell you, what a mouth. Anything else? I was just going to tell you that uh, National Treasures made $110 million in three weeks. That's pretty amazing. Wow. And uh, SpongeBob SquarePants has done very well, too. It's um, amazing what these uh, movies can make. The Polar Express has made $96.4 million. The Incredibles is $226 million. And SpongeBob SquarePants has made $68.4 million. So, Ooh. All these kids' movies, boy, can really bring in the dough. Yeah. Nice. That's what's happening. Thank you, Robin. Tonight on E-Mets picture, Chris Benson's hot wife, Anna Benson. Check it out with her big boobs. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mark Harris, for the Mark Harris Show. Also, thank you, Tommy Chong, who's going to be doing the marijuana logs tomorrow. Through December 19th at the Actors Playhouse in Manhattan. For more information, potshow.com. See you tomorrow. Hot sauce, yeah. A lot of guys have hot sauce. You know, Aerosmith has, uh, like, quietly become one of the most successful bands of all time. Don't you think? I mean, they're just, they've been around forever, hit after hit. And, and what's even more amazing is that they were popular... You know, like in the 70s, yeah. then kind of went away and then came back to have even bigger success. Yeah, completely reinvented themselves and had so many big hits. Yeah, they're good. Well, now they're mainstream. They appear in commercials. Yeah, like I know. They're like the Super Bowl uh, band with Britney Spears. Some guy wrote me a letter and said, when, when Joe's here, ask him why he's such a sellout. And he took Dream On, one of their best songs, and sold it to a car company and, you know, F. Aerosmith, F. Joe, F. This, <laughs> and and I thought about it. I was like, well, let me see this guy's point of view. But I now now call me um, naive, but I don't see how 
that damages the song to put it in a car commercial. Honestly, I don't. I mean, I think that advertising people used to play my parents' songs when I was a kid on TV commercials because that's what they related to. Right. And now that we're sort of the generation in charge, they play a lot of these classic hits. Yeah, Led Zeppelin, Aerosmith. Me and Fred have It doesn't this, ruin the song for me. Does it ruin it for you? Well, me and Fred have had this conversation a couple times it about, does? about the Who. The Who, like, yeah. a couple of songs here. Who is? <laughs> there was, like, a, the Who had, like, a couple of songs, like, maybe on a Chevy truck commercial, right? But then... Nissan. For, for, right, but forget it. Then they were on, like, every commercial. You heard a Who song. And then now they're the theme to CSI and CSI Miami. And yeah. Now, why doesn't that bother me, and why does it bother you, Fred? Because I was such a Who fan. It was, like, one of the first records I ever bought was the Who. They were about rock and roll. They were about rebellion. Now it's about conformity yeah, I guess making it, cash. You know what the biggest one for me was? But uh, wasn't it always about making cash? I mean, these guys chose us as a profession. Yeah, and but it wasn't so blatantly obvious. Now it's like, you know, Let My Love Open the Door, which is a great Pete Townsend song. It's yeah. like, you know, the song for Target. You know what hurt? I don't mind a couple of times, but you know what hurt? It doesn't what, bother me. I guess I'm what, not that passionate about music. killed me at the last CBS Upfronts, The Who played live for, like, Les Moonves and the cast of Yes, Dear. That bothered you. That that bugged me. Yeah, that Pete Townsend was was playing. Really, it Bob doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't make a, a real big difference to me. I, I can I'm, still enjoy a song. Not that I'm shattered by it. And I, I saw the Who live recently. I loved them, but it's a little annoying that they got to play a corporate gig for these people and really. But don't you become think puppets? You know, the song being on CSI brings that song to a whole new generation that yeah, would never it, discover it. it. But well, it totally takes it in a direction that was never intended when it was written originally. I mean, who so what, are though? you? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't and I don't care about the new generation. Let them listen to the crap they yeah, they let them put on let them put on a Britney Spears. Exactly. Me. Let them listen. Who are to you meant nothing to me as a song. I mean, who 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 are you? Uh, if it's, who 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 boo who who who? Wow wow wow. I mean, who cares? I mean, it's a song. See, it's I'm on a, TV. It brings it, their music to a lot of different people. I'm fact, a really the way big, I feel about it is nobody would be listening to this music if it wasn't I, on TV see, but commercials. Let it die. I don't care. I don't care if they yeah. listen to it at all. I want to listen to it by myself. Right. And, and that's a funny thing. You talk about the new generation. Jason, who works for us, I guess Jason's what, 27 or 28? He said yeah. like 10 years ago, he heard Happy Jack on a car commercial. Right. And you know what it was? He looked it up, and that's how he discovered The Who. Yeah. Oh, now he who that. cares if Jason discovers The Who? I don't care. Who, I want to listen to The Who care. care. The Who care. Yeah, the Who don't care. care. They're yes, they do. No, they care Pete because Townsend their cares. music is important to them. Well, Pete Townsend gets paid. Right. I got to tell you something. I get a kick out of the fact that uh, our radio show spans, like, you know, the parents and the kids' generation. It's like... It, it does, actually. You're right. You're yeah. not, it's kind of cool. But you still have credibility. It's coming out of your mouth to right. their ears. It's right. not, like, once removed. They're not taking your words and using it to sell soap. I'm sure the fact that That's you... True. I'm sure the fact that you talk... Howard, you talk about the Beatles a lot. There's 19-year-olds who still listen to this show who... That's the only way they've ever heard of the Beatles sometimes. Well, like across the universe and songs like that. It doesn't you know? bother me if a Who song appears in commercial because now radio and uh, so much of our, our, our the way we listen to music is so corporately controlled that it's almost yeah. impossible to hear music in a lot of different places. So if a band can get in a commercial, I mean, Warren Zevon was played on Joan of Arcadia the other night. Right. Now, you could say that might have been a bad use, but it was an but emotional wanna, scene and people get turned on to his music. That's also a dramatic part of the thing when when it's reduced to just being like 60 seconds for Burger King right. you know, that sucks. deal also happened probably after Warren Zevon was dead who's ever in charge of no. the music now uh, these guys got used to huge amounts of cash rolling actually, in and then it dried up they need to make money no you're right I mean, you think that's if it's for the money I'd be shocked because I figured those guys are worth a fortune they lo you know what How people get used to living the way they lived and having the money come in the way they, they support huge companies and organizations they need money how much do you think Pete Townsend is worth conservatively I personally gotta, he, he doesn't need it he wrote every I would say song. he's worth Minimally a hundred million dollars. Okay, I say yeah, right. You're but right. He Maybe more. Keep yeah. that hundred million in the bank. He still has a whole staff he needs to pay. Oh, okay. Please. I have a castle. <laughs> but, but you know what? It, it is interesting because I forgot I had this. This. Incident. I want to move on, but uh, you'll have the last word. <laughs> I had this incident myself. My son, my ten-year-old son, comes to me the other day and he sings me a song and he goes, "Do you know this song?" And it's the immigrant song by Led Zeppelin. Right. Right. Now, how the hell does he know that song? He saw it in a commercial. 
He remembered the words. We downloaded, you know, I have the Led Zeppelin stuff. Now he's got like 20 Led Zeppelin songs on his computer. He's discovered the band. Right. So no harm, no foul. I think it's a great way to introduce people to music. I say let them listen to Usher and all the other crap, (laughs) and I want to sit in a dark room and listen to my music. All right, there you go. You have the final word then. I thought Baba Booey would. This I love. Do you agree with this? Yes, I agree with this. This all all right. I want to give you an update on a couple of things. First of all... Um, I I dedicated a song to my audience uh, a few moments ago uh, because I said it is the beginning of the end. And uh, up in Syracuse and on all the Citadel stations, the show is so heavily edited now. Uh, We have a guy up in Syracuse who just immediately sends us our show. When I was talking earlier, when that guy called up in the 6 o'clock hour, here's what the show sounded like in Syracuse. You ready? This is absolutely insane. Listen to this. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, man. I'm just curious. Um, are you worried at all that when you go into 2006 and you leave Brady (laughs) now that they'll be around? Well, no, I'm not worried about that. I think the company... Because you have more money than they do. Last year, they're losing money. The fourth quarter results, you're telling me something that I don't have. You asked me my feeling on... (laughs) Oh, my God. I think it will be around a year from now, and I'm giving you my answer. That's it. I don't have any more. Oh, okay. That's what the show sounds like in Syracuse. It almost sounds like (laughs) electrical interference, like you're going under an overpass or something, and you can't get your radio signal. I'm sure a lot of people are confused by that. that. That's that's absolutely unlistenable. Absolutely. What are they doing? Don't know. They're chasing people away. Okay, uh, Paris Hilton won an award uh, just the other night. This was on TV. VH1 has an award show. The, she won an award? She won an award for best slogan. The slogan being, that's hot. That's hot. sister since we're little kids so i can't believe i'm winning an award for it but that's hot thank you there you go now i was shocked i said it's over i said yeah i said well what are the other nominees (laughs) and i was sure 100 percent sure that seacrest out (laughs) would at least be a nominee i hope it was not seacrest is so out he didn't even make the list seacrest out was not on the list (laughs) secret off out um, and uh, the other nominees were Trump saying, you're fired. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Chappelle saying, uh, I'm Rick James's bitch or something like that. I don't know that bit. but I'm Rick James. I'm Rick bitch. James. Yeah, it's probably what it is. I'm Rick James' bitch or something. I'm Rick James. Bitch. Something like that. Yeah. Right. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger saying, economic girly man. Yeah. And uh, I thought Vivica A. Fox would have uh, at least been nominated for saying, you know what the saying is. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Tell me, you're nominated for Breakthrough Artist of Breakthrough the Year. Artist. What does that mean to you? It means a lot to me, man, because, you know, I ain't been nominated for that many awards. You know right. what I'm so hopefully I walk home with this one. You know, it's going to be the first of many many years to come for you because I think you're dropping it like it's hot. We're I'm looking forward like to hot. you uh, in the future. I, I love listening to this. She used Drop It Like It's Hot in every interview. It's great. I'm, I'm glad to be here, man, and source man with a lot of people. This is Chingy. Give me love. Right. And, um, you know, I, I'm enjoying it, but I'm staying focused and not fall off because, I'm, you know, I got another year, too. I'm going to do this and uh, come out with my head on my shoulder. All right. Well, you keep dropping it like it's hot. Y'all stay right there because we got so much coming at you. Vivia. Oh, she's so annoying. Isn't oh, she? Oh, I just want to smack her. <laughs> Here's a little flip. You nominated for no. male so- Uh... Yeah, little, little flip. Little of the year. Wait a minute, and single of the year. What, what you feeling? Come on, what you feeling, man? Well, actually, it's four. I got four nominations. Oh, oh, wait. Yeah, oh, yeah. Excuse got, us, four. I, I got four this year. I just hope I win one. I'm, I'm just glad I'm here. You know. Right, you want to walk home with a trophy tonight? <laughs> yeah, I wish you the best. I take four. Just, right, because your single's dropping it like it's hot, baby. <laughs> She'll be nominated next year. Now, Trick Daddy, she says it twice to him. So, we hear you performing tonight. What can we look forward to in your performance, brother? You know, I got the live band. I'm doing something different, man. You know, I had the, the, the musicians right around the corner, my boy. So, we're going to put it down for the thugs, you know. That's what I'm talking about. 
I know she knows better. <laughs> I, I, I know she's just trying real hard. Here she drops it like it's hot twice in a conversation with David Banner and Busy B. So listen, I mean, y'all represent new school and old school. Tell me what the Source Awards means to you. Representing new school and old school. Nice. Just really the evolution of rap music. You know what I'm saying? We, we look at rap. You know, when when Busy was out there, right. too, when David Banner was out there, rap is a grown woman now. She's doing That's very, right. very she's well. Right. 30 years, oh, right? Exactly. right? She's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Dropping so, it like it's hot, right? Exactly. So it's just like right. uh, <laughs> the things that she's done for all our life. Because I know it's a blessing for me to be up here representing Mississippi. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And you represent positive energy, too. Yeah, no doubt. Now, you, my man. All right. You've been around for a long time. You're a pioneer. Now, right. tell us what does this mean to you? This, 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 this means everything to me. It's because I'm representing all my old school pioneers like Hurt, Flash, you know what I'm saying? Man, we started this a long time ago. We never thought it'd get Drop this big. First piece that you know came what I'm saying? Out first. Uh, on your hip, hop, shoe hop, the bop, through the hip, hip, hop, hop, and you don't stop. And uh, with that, see, my boy's dropped it like it's hot. That's right. <laughs> yeah, see, see. <laughs> hip, 